Welcome, Hand Feeding Boot Camp participants. I am so glad that you are all here and you've taken this amazing first step into having a different level of engagement with your dog. There are so many reasons why we hand feed, but what we're gonna focus on in this boot camp is cultivating engagement with our dog, building that focus, that relevancy, and making ourselves much more important to our dogs. Um, when you become the source of the food, you become much more valuable to your dog. So I'm excited to see the progress that everybody has, and I'm even more excited to be here with you every single day teaching you these lessons with the one and only, the Mac Daddy of all Mac Daddies, the napper of all naps. Anyway, welcome everyone that's here. You are in good hands with your mini pack leaders. They're wonderful dog trainers and wonderful human beings. So from the wilds of Kansas, straight to your home, we're gonna get started very soon. People of the Hand Feeding Boot Camp. I have assigned your teams. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay. I am going to be, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make groups, okay? I want to set some guidelines for you. Your groups that I put you in are your mini packs, right? So this is the way that I've organized them. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Jerry, read the paper. Isabel is leading Team Callie because... Callie loves me so much, boom, that we have to have a whole team just for them. I don't wanna wear that. We have to have a whole team just for California, so that's great. So there's, right now, there's seven people on that team. So you guys will notice that that's happening to you, A, if you live in California, or B, if all of a sudden you're in a group on Marco Polo that says Team Callie. So. Um, and you should get, just get a notification on Marco Polo about that. Now, the boundaries for the group, just don't say anything yet, okay? Just wait for Isabel. Wait for your group leader. Because what happens is everybody can respond in there, okay? So only send videos that you are asked for, um, and I will be specific about that when I teach class, okay? Next, T, Tatiana. She goes by T. Um, East Coast. Okay, okay. There's a little chunk of y'all. Washington, D.C. down. She's gonna cover you guys. She lives in North Carolina. Oh, and by the way, Isabel lives in Long Beach. She's a Californian. I didn't like put you as somebody from like Missouri or something, because that would be funny. Um, so there's eight people in the East Coast team right now. Tiffany lives in Hawaii. And so she's going to help out with the Southwest and she's also going to take the international people. So that'll be really exciting. There's seven people on that team. Christina from Brooklyn. She's got the New England team. And there's nine people on that team right now. Desi is in Massachusetts, but she is, I believe, from California. And she's got a very West Coast, very cool vibe. So she's gonna take over the Pacific Northwest team and all you awesome people in BC, you are included in that. Cause I'm pretty sure that is still part of that. I don't know, I don't know. Just kidding, I love BC. And I'm like one of my number one vacation spots, Vancouver Island, here I come. Next, Tilly from my home state of Georgia. She's gonna be running Team South, and we're gonna go ahead and include the Texans in there. Now, I know that's not technically the South. Go Texas, Lone Star State. But for all intents and purposes, you need to be with Tilly, and she's great. And then last but not least, Amanda. Amanda from Chicago has got the Midwest, and she is a little dreamboat, and everybody from the Midwest, and you know other places too will love her. But Tilly and Amanda, you guys have the biggest teams. Tilly, you have 10. Amanda, you have 11. We may still get some more people, but that's the way it's set now. And I am incredibly competitive. So I'm excited to see which, which team, which cream rises to the top. I'm so excited. 
Okay, I'm gonna start making those now. Um, probably in the next, around 11.30. I have something I'm gonna do right now and then I'm gonna get on this. So look for your teams. Remember, don't say anything yet. I know you're super excited. Don't say anything yet. And I will be here tomorrow, probably around 10 a.m. Please do not get your pants in a bunch if I'm not here at the exact time every day. In the world of Marco Polo, time does not exist. So don't worry. The reason that I might do that is because if I come here at 10 o'clock every day, that only serves the people that can be here at 10 o'clock. So if I bump around a little bit and do different times, it gives everyone an opportunity to maybe catch me when they're live, or when I'm live, excuse me, and you guys drop the emojis. I love the emojis. Drop the emojis, let me know you're participating, all of that's, it's fine. It doesn't distract me to see little emojis up at the top. I like it. What else can I think of that you might need to know right now? Oh, um, if you don't have a tripod, it could be helpful that you get one. You can literally go to Walmart and get a tripod for your phone for under $15. It does not need to be fancy. It does not need to be do yourself a favor and get one or overnight it on Amazon. Just... I don't have one in here. I don't, it's, a, it's out there, but I have a billion different ones. They're all different sizes. I like the little bendy legged ones. Um, that's going to help you so, 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 so much. Um, oh, also, I think a really good thing for everyone to do, you do not have to, I would like for you to consider it. Just so we have a really great start, super excited dog. If you consider, if you feed dinner, not feeding dinner the night before, and let's just withhold that one meal. We're not doing any damage. Nobody's going to get hurt. This is just the same as if your dog were to have surgery or something like that. You need to withhold that food to make sure that they didn't vomit or something like that. It's just the same. It's not a big deal. And then that morning, your dog is going to be really eager to eat, really into you, super excited about it. I would suggest that for people whose dogs maybe aren't as excited about their food. If your dog is already super excited about their food, you probably don't need to do that. They're, they're gonna play along just fine. But learning about food engagement through food is not just this natural thing that happens, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about and go over. I don't want you guys to be discouraged if your dog doesn't seem naturally motivated towards food, um, that's okay. Because this is a skill that you can learn and then there's other boot camps that we're gonna have where maybe we do engagement with a toy or something like that. So don't worry, be excited, think positive thoughts. This is not for you to fix your dog, okay? It would be delusional for you to think that we're gonna do this, this stuff for one week and then, oh, boom, I got an Enzo. Like, that's not what we're doing. What we're doing is helping you understand a concept just like dribbling a basketball, just like passing a basketball, just like shooting a basketball. You have to learn the fundamentals of it, and then it's up to you how much you practice that and incorporate that in your life, right? If you want to be next level, you want to be up here, girl, you better get out there, girl and guy. You better get out there every day. If you don't want to do that, that's okay. Let's help you set some expectations with that. So that's what your trainers will help you do. I'm super excited. Oh my God, I could talk forever. I just love all of you. Okay, if you have four dogs, I'm super pumped that you are doing this. You need to know that. I'm very happy about that. But the goal here is for you to select a dog, a dog out of your four dogs. You work with that dog in the trainer, okay? So typically that's going to be your most difficult dog. And then what you learn with that dog, you can absolutely apply to your other dogs. But for the sake of everyone here, if you down, or if you if you put a bunch of like four or five dogs into the group class, we're all just bringing one dog. So I'm happy that you're here. It's fine. All four dogs are welcome. But don't send videos of the other. Just practice with them, and then pick your one dog that you're going to go on this journey with this week. Okay. The other reason that that's helpful is so you can see progress. I don't want you changing dogs. I don't want one time it's this dog and one time, I want you to be able to see from beginning to end. This was this dog, this is this journey that we're going on this week. And then again, 
all of that translates to the other dogs that you have. So just so we're clear about that one thing. Um, I'm glad everybody's here. I'm glad you didn't have a problem finding it. I hope that you are excited about your groups. I know that I am. Okay, bye. It's happening. Um, everybody give me a thumbs up if you can hear me or someone give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, which would be wonderful. Do you know somebody found it? Okay. Look like I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know what to say. We're going to find out how well this mic works. There's a plane flying over. I am outside but I want you guys to be inside. The reason I'm doing this is because the lighting is excellent out here and the background is not distracting and I've got shade, really good natural light. So I'm gonna instruct you when it's time for us to think about going outside. It ain't right now, Bobo, okay? Now, the only time it would be, this is just a couple like, just before we get started, guys, would be like, if you guys are already, if you have been a client of mine, please go outside. <laughs> Unless you're like purposely starting over. There's several of my clients here, which I think is awesome. Like, I love that you guys are just here to um, participate and be a part of the group again. Um, and hopefully that says something to everybody else about how cool it is to be here. So anyway, trying to stall while the plane flies over, I swear. <laughs> anyway, I'm happy that you guys are here. It's going to be pretty light today, um, but I do want to try to marry a couple things together for people. Um, so the reason that I'm, that's the reason I asked you for to have your slip lead. Um, he's circling my house right now, so I'm, we're just going to hope that the mic is great. <laughs> and I think it is. I think I picked a good one. So, okay, hand feeding is a mystery. And I know that it is. Thank you for the thumbs up, guys. Um, I know that it is. I know that for many of us, myself included, and many of the trainers here, we've all said things like, I don't want to have to carry food all the time. I don't want to. <laughs> you know, all the things that people say about, well, I don't want to do that. And well, well then he's never going to do it if I don't have food. We, you guys, we all, we all feel that way. And we have all felt that way. I think that really what it is, sorry, there's something on my screen. Oh, I'm smaller. I think that really what it is is just a really gross misunderstanding of what hand feeding does, okay? People are like, well, my dog doesn't resource guard. That's cool. Okay. I mean, it does prevent against resource guarding, but do you know why? So I can tell you, and then we'll just move past that. It prevents resource guarding for the reason that we want to hand feed. Because here I am. We're gonna get into we're gonna get into how cool this is later. Matali Salvi from India, thank you so much. She's not here, but now you guys know who she is. So this is my dog bowl. Let's just pretend, okay? And I, I and here I come. Here I come. It's feeding time, Prince. Come down off your throne into the, into the glorious eating hall where I have prepared you a meal that you have not worked for and you've been lazily laying on the couch all day. Also, you're riddled with anxiety and marginally reactive. But, but please, please come so that I may serve you. And then you place the bowl down and then you're like, no. You have to wait. Now you can eat it. And then your dog sits there and eats, I don't know, 45 minutes worth of training. To me, it's like you might as well just like put money on the bed and burn it. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, cool. Why don't you just throw that down the garbage disposal? Inside of that bowl is the key for many dogs. Not all, some dogs are incredibly toy driven. Your high drive dogs are gonna be like that, your mouths and stuff. Inside of this bowl is the key to your dog giving an F about you. And if it doesn't, and you're not doing this, 
Mystery solved. You're welcome. Mm, 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 mm. You're welcome. And I'm not kidding. And it was just that easy. Isn't that fun? Okay, that's it. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so in here, we're not going to use that bowl anymore. We're not going to do that. Okay, that's for lazy people. We're not going to do that. Just kidding. Sometimes I, sometimes I, you don't hand feed every meal. It's not like this forever. But until you cultivate this skill, you can't just expect your dog to be like, oh, I'm supposed to be focusing on you out here. There's all this stuff going on. There's planes going by. A rooster, a rooster just crowed. There's bunnies about. There's probably a cat over there. There's all this stuff outside. And your dog has to learn how to focus on you the same as a child has to learn how to focus on a teacher, right? Or on you as a parent. It, it's not, there is no trick here. There is no like, oh, I'm gonna go to Jerry and she's gonna tell me this thing because she's such a good dog trainer. And then I'm gonna be like, dun, 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 with my dog. That is delusional. Okay, so let's just learn this and then we'll have the skill to build and build and build and build and build and build and build. And build. This is basically a breakdown of what we would do in a larger package, okay? So I wanna be clear about that, right? This is something that we go way more in depth to in depth in in a four week package. This is just to help you guys understand like, what are we doing here? What is hand feeding? How can this help me? How can I get started? What if I don't have $500? What if I, what do I? It's okay. It's okay. This is for everyone. Remember I said there's clients here. There's clients that have been through packages. There's teenagers here. There's people from all over the Philippines, Sweden, the UK. There's people from Vancouver. Well, there's a lot of people from Canada, but specifically BC. There's people from everywhere, all here to learn this concept, okay? So let's think of it like that. It's a concept that we get and then we build on it. It's not this thing we go and attain. Let me pay the money, bleep, blorp, bleep, and then I'm gonna, it's, no. Like, again, delusional. That's not what we're doing. Okay, so that's the goal is to just get you guys to like step into the dip into the pool you just want to dip your toes in that's what we're here to do okay you're not diving into the deep end don't freak out so for today we're gonna have this this a little bit of this a little bit of this yeah hopefully you have a dog that would be helpful and also we're gonna have a notebook and a pencil I'm not going to change the way that I talk. You need to keep up, okay? So here's the way I do it. I'm gonna say a whole bunch of things, okay? Write them down. Some of them you'll care about, some of them you won't. That's life, cool. You know, take what you need, leave the rest. Write it down. Because I say bomb ass profound things right in the middle of me doing a five and a six and a seven and an eight and I can't control any of it and I'm not gonna try to. So just take notes, you can go back and look at what was important and what I was just doing that was just me being bizarre. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce what I'm gonna do. This is, this is how it goes all the time. I'm gonna introduce what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna come back and say, okay, now remember this, 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 this. And I'm gonna say, this is how I want you to submit it to your group. Blah, 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 blah. So don't freak out. You're going to get answers to all your questions. I promise. I've been doing this a while now and I've made tons of so many mistakes that I have learned from <laughs> so that you guys don't have to go through any of that stuff. So, okay. If you have a slip lead, you know what? I'm going to start our little intro video. So that was just, you know, fun facts, a little bit of dancing. It's time to get serious. Okay, I'm not gonna bring Enzo out here yet because I want you guys to pay attention to me. If you have a slip lead, here it is. We're not gonna worry too much today about how do I put it on right? What do I, oh my God, my internet's messing up. How do I put it on right? What do I do? Oh my gosh, I can't, the, it, don't worry about that, okay? Hold on you guys, just a second. I'm having some technical difficulties. Okay, sorry about that. So don't worry about your 
like if it's like this or this, don't worry about that. Today, we're just gonna worry about a big loop, okay? So, as we introduce the concept of your dog eating food out of your hand, we're also gonna introduce the slip lead, okay? The cool thing that you should know about this method that I'm teaching you is this how you introduce all tools, all things. You do it slowly. You don't shove your child, boom, into the kindergarten classroom because that would be psychotic and unfeeling and you're not like that. You wouldn't do that. So don't do that to your dog. Don't walk up to your dog and put a leash on it and then just start walking. Like, I think that that would be unpleasant, don't you? So we're gonna introduce things slowly, okay? Today, we're not gonna work on eye contact. We're gonna get to that, don't worry. But we're gonna do double duty here, remember? Introducing food and introducing tool. We're gonna take that opportunity to do that. We're never gonna just boom wrangle. It's not a cow. It's not a, it's not a steer. Could I? Yes, I could, and from a horse probably, but we'll get there later. We're not gonna wrangle our dog. We're gonna invite our dog to consent we're gonna invite, oh, he wants to come out. We're gonna invite our dog to consent with us. Come on, sweetie, oh my God, everybody's waiting for you. Hey, best friend, hi. Look, he's so happy. Okay, we're gonna consent. And look, you just, I mean, look at that timing. Look at the timing. So instead of me wrangling, come here, sweetie. Right here, I'm gonna ask him. Oh, he's gonna come into it. Oh, those are new cookies and you don't like them, okay. I tried to sneak new cookies in. Do you see how he even kind of tried to go around? That's okay, that's okay for the first time. You can just come close to it, yes. And I'm gonna mark that mm, proximity, sorry, I couldn't think of the word, as he gets closer and closer and closer and closer. I'm gonna mark where he is with the yes. And I know you guys hear that a lot. The yes is a marker word. What is a marker word? I'm, I'm gonna keep it real simple for you folks. Yes, that's the behavior I want. Do that. It's that simple, okay? Timing is important, okay? Timing is important. Because you don't want to be like, yes. And the dog's not even over here. What are you doing that for? You know, like he doesn't know. I'm going to get the cookies that you like. Come here. Okay. So I'm going to ask him to come close. Yes. Good boy. Oh, that's nice. It's not scary. That's not scary at all. Okay. It's a process. Go through it slowly. Yes. Good boy. See, he came through. I marked that and I immediately paid him. There we go. That's better. Yes, good boy. Keep it casual. Don't be doing a bunch of talking to your dog. Don't be fidgeting around, right? You guys, every single one of those things is a tally mark of stimuli. Check, 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 check. The plane flying over, the, the wasp flying around, me moving my hands around everywhere. The talking to somebody walking through the room. Uh-uh. Here's what it is. Yes. Yes, good boy. Keep that on, I'm gonna give another. Oh, that's a good feeling, we like that feeling. That's nice, not a big deal, good boy. Positive experience. Good boy, I'm an, oh, I dropped one. Now he can look around on the floor, that's wonderful. He's using his nose, he's looking down. Uh-oh, did you see what I did? I went like this. Don't do that. Consent, yes, good boy. Good boy. Gonna take that off, good boy. It's 
Super simple, right? That little exercise right there, you guys, being quiet, concentrating on what you're doing, working on your timing, you're conditioning a tool. This is like getting a tattoo, okay? This is like getting a tattoo. This is it. Choose wisely. Pick your pony and stick with it, okay? It's gonna be there. Don't make the experience of it fucking terrible. And then your dog, when I pull this out, Enzo's like, mm, 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 mm. we're doing something fun. Yes, boom. I at least know I'm getting snackies. That's the vibe that you want. You don't want it to be riddled with this anxiety and stuff. So just a tip for people that are struggling on walks, reactivity, all those kinds of things. And you're like here because you're like, okay, hopefully this helps. Oh, it will. Oh, it will. It's probably going to be the key to everything. But know this. Skipping steps is cheating. And you will pay for that in the end. So do not take this here and skip the steps and go out there and do stuff. It will not work. I'm telling you right now, it will not work. People that are a little bit further along and you guys are doing okay on walks and you think that this will add that little extra element, it's the time for you to be disciplined, okay? Discipline, discipline, discipline. Because the extra element, yes, is this, but it's not a magical key or wand. You know, it's just the component that you plug in, okay? It has to stay plugged in. If you unplug it, right? So Enzo's five. He's not reactive. Uh, he's real chill. That's learned behavior. It's not, he's learned, ha, I love you. He's learned how to be calm. It's learned. Okay. So this isn't like, oh, I'm going to do this. And my dog's going to be like, Enzo, I want to set realistic expectations for you. Okay. But this skill, getting your lead conditioned and working with it as a technician and not as a dog owner that has a leash that puts it on a dog. This is a, this is a disciplined tool. This thing is like, but you gotta work with it, right? So I just wanna introduce it, but I wanna show you how to do it right, so that's what we did today. We're also just seeing if your dog's like just gonna eat out of your hand, right, okay? Because some dogs are like, won't, won't. And if your dog's like that, okay. Um, a, we're not going to give meals in bowls this week. We're not going to do that. If your dog's big, I understand that that's a lot of food to hand feed. So you can do this scatter feeding. Enzo, you can do scatter feeding. <laughs> For some of it, I'll take a handful of food and throw it out in the yard. The rest of it, I want you to think about doing enrichment, okay? So hand feeding is part of the way that your dog um, interacts maybe would be the right word with food, but it also can um, eat food by you scatter feeding stuff, which is good because it puts a dog's head down and makes them use their nose and just be in an environment versus engaging with the environment, which is incredibly triggering for a lot of dogs. So your backyard is a great place to do that. I don't want you to go out in your front yard like this and scatter feed your dog out in the front yard that it's not used to being in, that it's not, remember, this is a process. So we're gonna start with little baby steps and we're gonna move on through that process, okay? So I'll be right back and we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you a couple Okay, tips. so remember to keep your sessions short. Oh, I'm losing pipers. <laughs> keep your sessions short. Sorry. Um, most dogs that aren't really used to a lot of training benefit from, you know, 10 to 15 minute sessions of things. Um, remember to keep your verbals down. Remember what your yes word is for. It marks the behavior that you're looking for. So if you have a dog that is not used to the slip lead, you need to mark closer, 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 closer behaviors that will be a process okay don't get don't let yourself overanalyze markers 
it is a part of dog training that you will improve as you grow. I mess them up all the time, okay? Don't be hard on yourself about it. Just try it and your pack leader will give you feedback on whether or not you're doing it right, okay? So don't worry about that. Um, make sure that the distractions are low, remember that. The kids do not need to be running around in the background. They don't need to be asking mom questions. I will shut the door right in their face. If they, I, you can give me 15 minutes to spend this time here. It will get done. So unless you're dying, shut the door. Okay, or call 911. Okay, that's what we do. Um, okay, I think that that's it for tips. If you don't have a slip lead, that's okay. Um, we can work on that with a regular leash. Let me just hold those right there. We can work on that with a regular lead. Oh, I can't do it with the slip lead. Regular leashes, you guys, you can literally make into, oh yeah, I can by doing this, okay? Like, just make a loop out of a leash. Don't be, you know, come on now. We're from, we're from the country out here. Remember to keep your loop big so that your pup can stick their head through. And nobody wants to stick their head through a small hole. That's weird. Okay, your groups. Let's talk about that for just a second. Here's the way I want you to submit your videos. I want you to show just what I was showing there. Remember when I stepped back and I said, just like this, just like this, go back to the part of where I said that, just like this, and then I did the things, boom, 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 and then I was done. That's what I want. If you have a question, make sure that you ask it at the beginning or at the end. Okay, just so you're not stopping in the middle to ask a question or whatever, um, but I want you to ask them if you have them. So every, depending on how many people are in the group, your group leader should have a video from every one of you each day, okay? I'm asking for one video today, so they should have how many other people are in their group. When your group leader gives feedback, they are not going to give feedback to every single one of you in depth that way. They're going to do it like address every one of you for what they saw. They're going to talk about something that they liked, something that they want you to work on, and then they're going to demo the collective things that people were doing wrong, okay? I don't want them demoing 10 things and four times it was the same thing. So um, just be aware of that. They will speak to you each individually and then they will demo things that you all collectively needed to work on or that you weren't quite getting right. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. If you have questions, please do not directly message me. There are literally a thousand people in my Marco Polo. This is the app I run my business off of. I want you to be able to get answers to your questions and I am not the one to do that right now. Okay, so if you have a direct question, just email get help now if it's pertaining to something technical excuse me if it's pertaining to something technical email get help now at tulsapackathletics.com because chelsea checks those all of the time and you will get immediate help from a person who actually has answers if you have a question about training ask your trainer again at the beginning or the end make sure you keep your comments and your questions brief because there's a lot of people in here, okay? So I wanna be efficient. I want them to be able to keep pace and get through everyone so we can keep moving and keep working. I'm super excited about what we're gonna do. Um, and I am hoping that most people have a slip lead, but again, if you don't, that's okay. Um, your pack leader will help you work with what you have, so don't freak out about that. <sighs> oh my God, babies, it's happening. I'm going to go to the river this week. It's going to be great. <laughs> okay. Well, Enzo is ready for his bike ride and he is lingering. And I can tell you just a little fun fact about hand feeding. Um, I have been riding my bike with Enzo for a long time. And I had this issue where people would slow down on my road. I live in a very isolated neighborhood way out in the country. And the only people that are out here are the people that live here. Well, people would slow down to say hi to me and he would start to go towards the car to be like sniff and see who they were. He's barking at Tony. And to see who they were. 
and it was driving me crazy because I could tell my family not to do that, but I couldn't really be like, neighbor, I'd really appreciate it if you would not stop and say hi to me and interact with me. Like, it just wouldn't have been appropriate. Like, they weren't asking to touch my dog. Like, they just wanted to say hi. So what I started doing was um, a touch drill that we're going to learn later this week. And I would have him come directly back to the bike as soon as I saw a car touch. And then he would get his snacky for that. And then I would scatter when the vehicle went by. And I learned that from Denise. For whatever reason, it's just hard for my dog to not, I don't know if that's protection for myself, for him, um, if it's curiosity. I don't know because I don't put my dog in situations to find out. It's not going to happen. So that's just like a little, and, and it's been working so well. And his consistency is so much better than if I had just a long line on him, which is probably what I would have maybe done before. Um, so it's just like, if you don't see it now, you need to know that what you're seeing when you watch dog trainers, that's hand feeding. That's cultivation of focus. That's getting your dog to learn to look at your face and give a shit about you, right? That's what we're doing. So don't lose sight of the ultimate thing, okay? Because that is, that's this skill builds onto things like you riding your bike with your dog off, potentially, not for everybody, but you riding your bike with your dog off leash and you being able to recall your dog back to you when cars come. That's a safety issue. That's a courtesy to your neighbor's issue. That's that is high level dog ownership. When you have that kind of awareness and practical skill set, you really can move through anywhere with your dog. So that's just really what I'm trying to give you guys the foundation of here, okay? So keep hope alive. Cue disco music. Also, Southwest International, you guys got Coco Garcia in your group. The, the Coco Garcia in your group. Go follow her YouTube channel immediately, directly right now, and then bask in the magical glow that's gonna happen from the mojo of her discipline that you're gonna have just from her watching you. Okay, good morning, good morning. Everyone give me someone give me a thumbs up if the mic's on and you can hear me party people dun, dun. tag team music okay good i'm gonna do that every time until somebody thumbs up me it's straight up 90s hits okay he's already annoyed everybody did like i was like you guys i was like sobbing like a like sobbing watching your guys's videos like a crazy person do you understand what's happening like it doesn't matter i, I you're gonna you're gonna feel it you're gonna feel the vibe mm, okay so like the 10 year old me is like running through a field of flowers to stand on an olympic platform to get a gold medal in like whatever it was that I wanted to do when I, that I was, when I was 10, which was exactly this, yet didn't know any of that. You know what I'm saying? So please know that myself and the trainers are legitimately like, oh my God, look at them. They're living their lives. They're getting it. They're going to get it. They're going to get it. They're going to get it. Because we want you to have what we have. I don't like, I have no interest in being some elite level dog trainer that knows, that knows things. Like, I, that's not appealing to me. It, it's cool. I'm not knocking, but I'm just saying that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is let this friend is teaching people what we know. So then you will be like, that was your life. You were walking into your life and all the other dogs that you have after this. You can't unknow that you need to hand feed your dog and make and have them look at you and get eye contact, which is what we're going to work on today. But first, I would like to take just a second. 
if I could. To give a shout out to the wonderful men in the group, fucking thank you for being here. Thank you for, you guys don't understand how big of a deal that is. Like, you would be surprised how difficult it is for men to learn things from women. So I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your effort. Um, and also that I am weird and you're gonna have to put up with that. So that's a thing you'll be going through. Any scoots. Um, but I do appreciate you guys being here and working really hard and, and representing that this is for everyone. It's not just for chicks that wanna learn from chicks who have dogs. Like what, that's bizarre to me. Okay. Um, I think that most everything, just a couple other things, you guys, because it, it, everybody just take a second to thank Chelsea <laughs> because there's just so much that goes on in the background and I'm looking at that list and like every logistical thing was just handled. We were able to really get through stuff. Um, so that tells me that it's, it's cool to market a program. It's cool to do all of that stuff and it's fun and it looks really fancy, but then you have to actually deliver and that is difficult. So, <laughs> and I wanna make sure that at Tulsa Pack we're a place that delivers when you come here and that you immediately, instantaneously feel the value of what you purchased and feel involved and engaged and like you wanna stay and that this is something that you can do because it is. So, um, okay. I think everything is mostly handled. If there's still cleanup things, we'll all get there together. Um, what I saw, I just wanna say a couple of things that I saw that I loved was just the quiet when you guys were working. The quiet, the intention, trying to remember exactly what I said. Um, I could tell that everyone was trying to do that. I also, know how difficult it is to be on camera, especially when you're doing it in front of people you don't know. And you might are like, am I doing this right? I don't know. And like just showing up to stand in front of the camera and participate is gonna help you in ways that you can't imagine moving forward. The confidence that it'll give you just to be here, to have feedback in a place where people are not gonna make fun of you, they're not gonna make you feel stupid, they're gonna support you and champion you in your efforts. So I thought that was really, really cool. Like I, every single person, young, old, this coast, this coast, where all of you were like, I'm here, I'm gonna do this. And it's like, makes me want to scream cry. I just, okay, don't go far into it. Don't go far into it, Jerry, you're gonna cry. Moving along. I loved that mostly everyone got the idea of consent, of consent. The reason I use the word wrangle is because I want you to understand what you're doing when you do this to an animal. Do you know where that comes from, right? That comes from this. That we're not wrangling, they're not livestock. This is a tool and we're inviting them to do something with us. So if you just ask yourself in that moment, am I wrangling? Or, well, we'll let him stay there for a second. Or am I inviting my dog to consent to this? I know that that's like, oh my God, consent. I'm like, is that really not bad? Yes, yes. Do you want your hairdresser to put your head down seven times like this? Or do you just want her to ask you, could you put your head down for me? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, le it's details, details. Your relationship is in the details of what you do. Anybody can go up to a dog and do this. Anybody can do, but you're asking your dog, I wanna do this with you, but you gotta, you gotta play ball with me because I'm not gonna chase you and I'm not gonna make you. That's fucking weird. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to do that, but we gotta we gotta have a leash. So like, oh, let's get through that. So that was really mostly what I saw. I also saw a couple of you struggling because your dog wants to have eye contact and thinks that's what's gonna get them the reward. 
um, and then they do a series of things because they don't understand what you want, just remember in those moments and your trainers who are amazing, like some of them are better dog trainers than me. <laughs> That's no secret. They're amazing and they've done amazing at giving you the feedback. <laughs> That's no secret around this place. Um, that made me lose my train of thought. It doesn't matter. But some of you, sorry, some of you, I think, let me just move on. Some of you, I think, were wrangling. Some of you were allowing consent. But just remember that it's a quiet exercise. It's just about the detail of it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If I stop and write down stuff, this is going to take too long. So you just move with me past the times that I forget what I'm talking about. All right. Oh, <laughs> I know what it was. It was the eye contact. If, you're <laughs> if your dog is ju <laughs> jumping around, I have so many things I want to talk about. If your dog is jumping around and acting, you guys were like, Ugh, and I kind of don't know what to do. Like, just let it settle. It's okay. They'll get it. They'll get it. It's, again, it goes back to that, what I just wrapped that, <laughs> wrapped that up with and put a bow on an unfinished package, was it just comes back to you just settling into the moment with them, and they'll get it. you got to give dogs a minute to process that we're doing something different. Like, they can get it. What happens is they start throwing out all this stuff, and then you guys start giving in and moving around and talking to them and being not sure, and all of that, like, oh, uh, that hesitation and body language... Look what that looks like versus okay do you see what i'm saying like settle into yourself or your dog's not gonna not going to somebody's on the driveway now So he's doing the barkings. And we're just going to keep his nose down, keep him eating some food. Real life training break. He's still kind of looking over there. So I'm just going to get him back with me. And we're going to go right into our first lesson. I'm just going to put this behind me because I didn't know this was going to happen. But we're going to work with it, okay? So today we're going to work on eye contact and what some of your dogs were trying to do that I was just talking about, okay? So I want my dog to not look at my food. I want him to look at me and know he has to engage with me to get the resource. So for today, I want you to hold the slip lead. I want you to put it behind your back for this first little exercise. He's still kind of looking over there, but see how he's calming down a little. He's not like alert barking, right? <laughs> That's that unsettling. I'm unsettled. I hear something. I don't know. I'm uncomfortable. I feel a little bit like I need to. And we want to stop that. If you let them keep going, going into it okay so we got our leash behind our back here if your dog sits that's fine but the goal is I'm gonna hold my hand out here I'm gonna talk a lot today you guys so I'm gonna get this I'm gonna hold my hand out here and I want my dog to look at me a glance is fine for right now but catch it when it happens and mark it don't let your dog go like this they're not you're asking too long if you're doing that if your dog is darting you're asking too long so i'm gonna get his nose down gonna get him thinking about something else we're jumping ahead a little bit here but that's okay get him thinking about something else get him back and focused on me and the task you know what I used to do? I used to correct my dog for that. Well, you know, sometimes that's okay. 
but I don't really think that it helped him understand what he was supposed to be doing. I think it just helped me feel better about him not barking, and I don't want to do that with my dog. I'm not judging other people that have that dis make that decision, but I'm not anymore. But now we have, oh, we've got something going on here. So let's do these two things today, and let's just work with what we had. This is in the schedule to learn. Really, so we're just going to work on scattering our dog's food, and then Enzo. Yes. The reason I like to keep my hand out to the side is because it makes it obvious that my dog is looked back. Yes, pay. Okay. Yes, pay. That's how it goes. You gave me what I want. You're getting your reward. You gave me what I want. Pay. Right. Exercise. He's gonna, he's gonna get his snack keys. Wait and re-engage with me once he's probably confident he's gotten all the snackies. Oh, you missed one. Yes. yes. Very good. See, that time, he didn't even really move his head over. He and as your dog gets this, you can add time. But don't do that too soon, or you're skipping steps, cheating, and you're not doing it right. You love cheaters. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yes, good boy. Oh, I've dropped it. Yes, good boy! He didn't eat it! No! Nope. He didn't eat it! He could have, but he didn't that first time. That's not the exercise, though. You can eat him. Yes. Okay. <laughs> You're a shell off. But that's good, because what he was basically doing was... I don't know what he thought happened in the game there. I think he thought because I dropped them on accident and I wasn't purposely scattering them, he wasn't supposed to get it, which would actually be true. I don't I just see how like just over doing something repetitiously, he just automatically processed the fact that I had accidentally done that and stopped himself from getting it. So, and then the reason I covered it was because he went to get it too soon. So he did that part right, and I went to reward him. And then before I released him, he went down to get it. And that's, oops, that's an error of impulse. So I'm going to help you, and I'm going to cover it. And you're going to look at me, and I'm going to give you your snack. And then you, then you can get it, okay? Look, he's doing all kinds of things in this lesson. Okay, so let's just wrap that up. with the two things that we did, which are, okay. Gonna get that nose down, get that nose down. We're gonna add distractions later. Um, do you get what I'm saying? Thumbs up me, do you understand? When your dog gets into a state of arousal, there's a car over there, there's a car, there's a car. And you, what, what, what is you don't do something about it. You might as well just be standing there loading bullets into your revolver and slapping that bad boy closed and aiming and cocking the gun. No, 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 no. No, we want to go ahead. We want to go ahead. We want to pop that open and we want to bullets out, okay? Don't load your gun and stand there and wait for the reaction. You know, that this, this type of stuff, you guys, this is a technique. This isn't what, you could do this. There could be ducks walking by. And I could be like, ooh, don't want you to fixate on those. They're walking by with baby ducks. He's cool. But you know, what I mean? like that's a perfect time for me to be like, let's have some.
who's a delivery driver. <laughs> Come on back, baby. Good boy. So he stopped himself about maybe 10 feet from me. Yes, very good. I can promise you right now, if I hadn't been doing that the time, that dog would have been out. Bounced. I mean, this is our property. He's running on our property. And the drivers will drive right up onto the driveway and walk out. But I can promise you right now, he would have been gone. Had we not been involved in this and working he felt. That was cool, dude. Good job. I'm proud of you. So he went, here, let me show you what he did. He probably about right here. And he stopped and then he turned around. And then I said, come on back, buddy. As soon as he turned back to me, I said, come on back. And then he walked back and then I had him touch. And then we immediately went into something else. That lighting is weird. Sorry. Oh my God, look at all these things you're getting. Okay. One more time for the homies. Start our exercise. Get the snackies, get the snackies. Remember, you're going to be quiet. You're going to be standing like this. Good boy. Yes. All right. We could also look at this, look at this right here, look at this, Enzo. We could add a little movement there. Oh my God. Yes, he's getting it. He's worried. He's worried. Oh, he's not listening. I'm going to throw my snackies down. He's not. Yes. Now he's back. He hears Tony. Tony's walking right there. We were five, like four years without Tony, three years without Tony. So, you know, we can't seem to figure out that Tony lives here sometimes. <laughs> so he's worried and he's not looking at me. So I'm just going to be patient. Yes. If he wouldn't have, what would I have done? So do you see how the level is? I eat off floor more easily than I will stop what I'm doing and look at you and eat. Okay? So this is like nose down. Okay? And then the hand feeding part of it is more intense. I mean, what is it like when you take food from someone? Down. Versus somebody who's putting fucking food in your mouth. I hope you have a close relationship with that person. Otherwise, you know what I'm saying? I feel weird. You got to look at them. They're going to, this whole thing. Intimate. That's why it builds such great focus because it's intimate between the two of you. Versus, I can still help my dog. I could still help my dog get through it. And what else am I doing? What else am I doing? Smart dog psychology. Boom. Reconditioning emotional responses. Boom. Boom. Now when Tony goes by, we've had, we've had snackies. If I worked on this more, this wouldn't be a problem. But I'm busy. And now my dog is suffering because of it. And now because I've said it to you all and it happened, I have to work on it now. And he loves Tony. You guys know that. He loves Tony. Boom. Boom. Struggling with something. Your dog is struggling with something. Oh my God. The window. They want to go to the window. Let's. Let's do a treat scatter. Get your nose down. Let's help you with how you feel. Let's not just be like, be on place, bud. Don't be off. I'm going to crack you. Like, don't. Like, meh. You know, and just throw some of their food down. Help them through the moment. Get their nose down. Get them thinking about their food. Then this gets to go on around them. 
doing this and then this stuff is not so scary because it's not interacting with them. Thank you for the hearts and the thumbs up. It's not interacting with them. It's not, and they're doing something and they're moving through the moment. When they have to move on to moving through the moment, looking at you and engaging with you and beat boop bop is going on around it, you, we just raise the stakes, right? So level one, eat the food during the thing. Level two, look at me look at me. okay so you could see how if you tried to do all this stuff with a whole bunch of stuff going on a few times or the first you know even sometimes week if your dog really struggles or if you're pit if you pick the wrong places if you're doing too much if you're trying to fucking ball out when you need to still be working on a bounce pass it's going to go poorly for you and you're going to be in that place where you feel like I'm doing everything, nothing's working. Is that true? Or is it because you're skipping steps? Is it because the environment is too stimulating and your dog cannot handle that? So I just wanted to go over that with you so that you have an idea of first level, second level, that's just baseline. Then you add the outer world and the distractions as you move. We're obviously not going to have time to do that here in some, you know, realistic way, but I'm going to move you through it quickly and I'm going to have to explain this, this concept as it relates to things that you will meet in your journey down the road. So that's why I, I'm glad that that happened. It's hard for me to create scenarios in which Enzo will do something because he's a great dog. He's very chill and we practice a lot, a lot. But there are still things that he struggles with. The fact that we get deliveries constantly and there's people he doesn't know walking around on our property. He didn't know that that delivery driver that just the package didn't drive up to the, to the garage and walk inside of our house. It took him a second to understand that that was Tony. You know, so instead of being like, stop to the dog or stop, which is what we all want to do. We all want when the dog does stuff like you guys, you're yelling into the vastness of nothingness when you do that. Not helping your dog and you are winding yourself up in a problem that you could have the solution for. It's just now we know, now we know, everybody here, now you know. You can't unknow what just happened, okay? So the more you practice, the more your dog's like, we'll stand here while the world is going on because we're getting ready to mm, treat scatter. Mm, hand feed, boom. My mom and dad are awesome and we're doing all the things. Do you see what I'm saying? But people go out in the world and they put their leash on their dog. The dog has no knowledge of what's going on. They walk out in the world, no engagement, no nothing. And then they're like, my dog is pulling on the leash and I just don't understand it. Well, that same thing's gonna happen if you put a teenager in a car and go, all right, buddy, have fun. And then you just get on the on-ramp of the freeway. you could see how that would not go well. So this, again, this is our driver's ed, okay? This is where we're learning what the pedals do. We gotta break, we gotta stop, we gotta go this way, this way. And as you grow, you will learn more and more and more. I mean, good Lord, I'll be 40 in a couple months. In like six weeks, oh my God. I still see signs when I'm in other places in the country. I'm like, what is that? What does that mean? Oh my God, we don't have those. We don't have those in Kansas or Oklahoma. I don't know what that means because this is, you can't master thing that isn't masterable. You know, you just learn these things and then you learn how to apply them by doing it through experience. Okay, I'm just teaching. I can't play basketball. That's the funny part of this whole story is that I'm not good at it. 
and I don't know why I understand and know so much about it yet can't you know I don't know it just seems to work with dog training okay uh, that was so good bam 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 mm -mm -mm. I'm just so excited about this like you guys don't even know what's happening you don't even that that right there what I just taught you you start doing that with your dog over literally everything that your dog is like pop shit about catch it went before right prevention prevention for the love of God people when you see your dog okay I want you to remember that analogy when you see your dog make the notice you are standing there with your gun and it's flipped open are you gonna dump the bullets out or are you gonna <laughs> close it in Russian roulette you know like do something better yet better yet don't put yourself in situations for sure. It's not ready for a walk in the park. Stop going because you're rehearsing bad behavior and that's even worse. And you are. You're, you're just letting your dog like rehearse being terrible. And it hurts them. And it hurts you. Hey, to just do what we're doing in your yard. It's okay. It's better than not doing that and continuing to go on unsuccessful walks and then your dog becomes an MMA champion and I don't think that that is what you were going for as an owner I mean I would like for my dog to not choose violence you know but they don't know that they're dogs they're just like what can I bite what can I shake ah, I want to run fast ah, I jump off this thing I don't know what I'm doing in your trash I'm gonna tear your panties up ah! like <laughs> then people just think that they know what is happening humans human children do not know what is happening would put knives in lot like sockets and shit would climb trees at two and fall out would walk in front of cars going into the street, would put their hands on stoves, would do all these things, and they have higher cognitive development, yet we somehow don't see that a dog would not know any of these things. And we're like, hmm, I don't get it. I don't get it. So it's, it's really, it's super simple. We work on hand feeding. We make sure that we understand leash pressure. You do proper socialization exposure, which means all of the things I just said, not jumping ahead because you want to ball out and your friends all see you with your cool breed of dog. Nobody gives a shit. We want you to have a trained dog. Okay. We're not going to do any of that. We're not going to have that. We're not going to do that. Okay. We're not going to do that. <laughs> Get these foundational things. And I'm going to pack as much as I can into this really honestly, you guys, because I can't have you all here and not send you away different. I don't know that I'd be able to handle it. So it's probably too much information at times, but like, you know, whatevs, <laughs> whatevs. Just write it down. You'll get it when you get it. And the cool thing is, is you can always come back and watch this. Like as you like learn and stuff, you should be able really to come back and do some of the stuff that I'm doing with Enzo. Um, you could do really almost everything I do with him on a long lead line. He doesn't have to just, your dog doesn't have to be off leash all the time like that. So, okay, a couple things. New video. Um, I wanna talk about tools. <clears throat> this is not a place that shames tools, is like, wah, 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 tools, like, you don't know why not. That, like, I created the open-minded approach. That would be stupid for me to do that. That's not what we're doing here. However, if you have come to me I'm gonna wager you're having problems at home. <coughs> and if you're having problems at home and you have to cut, you guys, this is not, this, I love you. Like, listen to me, please. I can assume through my vast experience that you potentially are having some problems and your dog has not cultivated really good focus with you so your engagement can't possibly be great and then I see you using a tool.
it would be foolish for me to not wonder if you had learned foundational things, would you be using that tool? If you were learning what I was teaching and you had all the other foundational things checked, right? Hand feeding, cultivation of focus, proper use of crate for your dog, because every dog's different, so for your dog. A duration place stay. Your dog has the ability to settle and has impulse control. Loose lead walking so they can go on walks without participating or causing behavior that they could then accidentally reinforce and you could help them and that would be a shit show. If you don't have those things and you're using an additional tool, it tells me that there are holes in your dam. And I can't just... It is against my code that I have for myself to watch people use a tool if I am uncertain that they know exactly what's going on there. And the only way that I can be sure of that is if I see you using a lead properly. Now, for those people that do not have slip leads, it's okay for you to use a leash and a flat collar. We can still teach with that. I'm not going to tell people stop using that tool that I don't that's I don't do that everybody has free will I'm only giving you the information you choose for yourself I want to make sure that you know how to drive the minivan and driver's ed before I give you a Camaro and let you drive down the street because the consequences of you wrecking that Camaro are very high compared to you wrecking the minivan on a slow side street. Does that make sense? When you add tools, you are adding, regardless of what people say, you are adding stimulation to an already stimulating situation. And unless you know how to de-escalate that and work a dog through arousal with the least amount of force that you can use, because any additional force, that's gonna be even more stimulation. I don't, I wanna make sure everyone is using their tools properly and I can't do that if I can't assess you at a baseline level with a lead and a collar or a slip lead. I don't know if your dog is doing that out of fear of correction. I don't know if your dog is overstimulated or over aroused because of the tool or because of the moment or because of the food. I don't know a lot of things because there's no baseline when you have a tool on. The slip lead is a way for us to have a baseline. So people using tools, head harnesses, prongs, things like that, you are welcome here. I'm not telling you to change a method that you've been using, but I would challenge you with this. There would be no reason in my mind as a trainer, and I, I could be wrong, why you would be working with your dog with a tool inside the home when you're teaching something. We're inside a small kindergarten classroom right now, and we're just learning how to be excited about school. We're learning where everything is. We're learning to put everything away. We're learning to listen to the teacher. We're learning to do all of these things. We don't need heavy correctors in those moments. We don't need that. Now, again, time, place, use for tools. I'm not anti-tool. I am a balanced trainer. But I am, it, it, you ain't gonna catch this bitch being the one that misuses tools. No way. And nobody on my watch will misuse tools on their dog. Period. End of story. So if you want to continue with your tool, I want you to talk to your trainer privately and they will do that for you. Okay? I want you to feel comfortable, but I want to make sure that you have all the information and you can make the best decision for you and your dog. Okay? Um, so that's that. I'm not going to bring it up again. I'm going to trust that you're going to take the steps to have the conversation and it'll be handled. So um, I think that that was the only other thing. I think the trainers have given you t 
timelines, I'm sorry, I couldn't think of the word, uh, kind of some timelines or maybe some tentative deadlines for getting your videos in. I think that's great. Um, remember, I will put the homework in here. All we're doing today is our treat scatter and waiting for our dog to look at us, asking for that eye contact, marking the behavior we want, and paying that behavior. You can do that multiple times in a row before you reset. You can treat scatter one or two and then ask for eye contact every time. It's up to you. And um, I would also kind of go at the pace that your dog is going. One more tip, don't try this for the first time during a moment like that. Not fair. That's not fair to your dog. You're asking too much. So start like we were, right? With nothing, no distractions. Also, this reminds me, if you guys have other animals, make sure that they're not out. This is just for you and your dog. I am obsessed with other animals. So I like to see them, but like not for that, okay? Because your, your dog needs to know that nothing else in that moment matters but you and them, and there's not things walking around and stuff like that. I forgot to say that earlier. So we're gonna treat scatter, we're gonna hand feed for eye contact, and it's gonna be awesome. Abs by Sonata. Good morning. Okay, I had to wait for that, our plane friend to go over. Thumbs up me if you can hear me and I'll keep going. I'm trying to, um, oh good, okay. I'm trying to do this. Oh, I just took it off. Sorry, sweetie. Um, I'm trying to do this in the shade so I don't cook my phone. So I think I found a good spot here. Um, we'll see, hopefully I can keep my hair out of my face. Okay, so everyone's looking amazing. I am super impressed and excited because I can already see, yes, good boy. I can already see your dogs like, oh, we're doing something, okay. And then they get snackies and they like that. They like that part. So we're gonna bring the slip lead out again today, but I just wanted to make a comment about something that Danalee said. And Danalee, I can't remember what group you're in right now, but no matter. Uh, she was like, yeah, so I could see how going to the park at this point would be cheating, in fact. So be just because of all of the stimuli and what's going on. So on that point, I wanted to add this back in today and do a little bit with eye contact and movement. Um, but I also wanted to talk about, I still feel like I have to yell into the thing. I'm so sorry, you guys. I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, distance and what is really happening there and what is distance is it just this arbitrary notion is it like uh okay use distance is it where this generalizing term and it's or is it like okay is it a foot is it two feet can i get closer like this can i get close it's just can be kind of confusing um so i just wanted to maybe um uh, put it in jerry terms for you which i think we all know are very simple, um, <laughs> and hopefully that will help you understand a little bit. But to get started today, we got our new treat uh, box of uh, liver treats that I use for him. I only feed Enzo once a day. So when we do stuff like this to get him excited, I like to use something that's slightly more high value, but not something like ridiculous, you know, like chicken or something like that, because that's like way high value. Um, so we have these little freeze dried treats, but they come in like, they're like this big. I'm like, nobody's going to get, good God, you're going to make your dog have gassy gas if you do that. We don't want that. So I'm going to break these up a little bit. Seriously though, you guys, everyone looks, I can already see it. Like, do you understand what I'm saying now? You can see it. You can already see your dog is like, something's happening. We're doing something. And that's what you want. Enzo, find it. Good boy. Okay, so we're just gonna 
just get in paying attention a little bit. This is, again, layering on what we did. And you guys, one of the trainers made a good point. If you're going to do that and treat scatter, it, it is a good idea to have a command that lets you know not to just leave it. Because remember what happened yesterday when he like just left it there and was looking at me? So it's okay to say, find it. And look how much he's using. I know you can't probably really see his nose, but Enzo, find it. How much he has to root through the grass. Oh, you walked over it. Good boy. Okay, so we're gonna start out that way. We're gonna add in our slip lead. Remember, we're gonna ask for consent. Yes, good boy. My dog's used to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll slip it down like so, okay? Now, high up behind the ears. Here's the part where I'm gonna just stop and give you guys a little fun tip, okay? This is not, it's not a big deal right now, remember, but it's something I want you to consider when you use your slip lead. What side you walk your dog on, you need to pick a side and you need to be consistent, okay? If you walk your dog on your left side, Okay, this is mirrored, so don't like do, be doing what I'm doing and holding the leash up and try like listen to what I'm saying and then do that. Okay, so when I'm walking my dog, watch out, buddy. Good boy. Well, not that far. Come here. Sit. Good boy. Sometimes when we're doing a whole bunch of stuff, you guys, I will like super simplify things for him because I want to make sure that he understands what I'm asking. Like if I need him to come to a spot, I'm gonna food lure him to the spot. I'm gonna ask him to sit. <laughs> and then he's gonna stay there. I make it super simple. Cause look at all, find it. Look at all the stuff we're doing. Okay. Gonna have a little reset. Cause I want him right in front of the camera. Always make sure your dog's in front of the camera and we can see your dog, okay? That's what we wanna see. I don't want you to be out of the frame, but like, I think a lot of you were just worried about it, so you were standing kind of weird. Sweetie, you got it, oh my God, we need to move on. Okay, Enzo, hey buddy. Yes, okay, just like that. But if your dog walks on the left side, okay, you're gonna look at it and it's gonna look like a P. Put it down on your dog like that, okay? If you walk your dog on the other side, it's gonna look like a Q or a nine. Put it on your dog like that, okay? Another way to think about it is the side that you're standing on. If I'm the dog and I'm standing here, this little guy should be coming up underneath like this it should not be on the top like this. You shouldn't see it like that. You should see it coming up underneath and towards you. Another way to look at it is the long part of the leash should be coming through the loop towards you. If you have it on like this, look, this is on the top now, no, no. And look, the long part isn't coming towards me. It's getting caught and then it can't release. Okay, so that's just a little tip. I like to walk my dog on my left side because I'm right-handed. And a two-handed leash hold, when you're walking like this, this is your anchor hand while I'm right-handed. This is my strong arm. This is my strong arm! So, if ever there was a situation, boop, it's just like pool, you guys, right? Pool, this is your strong arm. This is your weaker arm, so it's your nuance arm. This is your nuance hand. This is the hand that changes. This is the hand that changes all the time, okay? This is the little, this is the little, the little hand, this is the big hand. So if you're left-handed, you probably better, probably better do that. Another reason is because you guys, this is the hand that I interact with the world with. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This is my five, six, seven, eight hand. And if I were to have some sort of reaction, I'm probably gonna do it with this hand. And I certainly don't want that to be the hand that's attached to the dog. 
do you see? So, I mean, whatever, do what you do. I'm just, this is the information you can choose. Some people really like to walk on this side. Some people really like, you know, whatever. That's the way that I choose it and the way I think about it. And many other trainers do as well. Okay, so that's just our little extra bonus leash tip. We're gonna get into it a little bit more later, but for today, we're just gonna ask our pup to come on in. That's good. High up behind the ears. I'm gonna cinch it down and I should have, I like to have all four fingers, but my dog knows what's going on. So if your dog is getting used to this, here's what I don't want. I don't want you putting a choker on your dog and leading it around and pulling it around. I also don't want your dog doing that to you. Okay, so like just easy. You guys are inside the house or for those of you that are outside, you do look like you're in your backyards and that's great. Um, you know, this is casual. This is about having a, this, this exercise together. So, um, you know, don't make it too tight and go overboard, but you also don't want it falling down here. That's, that's not the idea. It works best up here. I just don't want you choking your dog out. That's all I'm getting at. Okay. So to introduce a little bit of leash pressure, we've already got our eye contact. Our dog knows. I'm just going to put this here. I like to treat with this hand. Okay. There's no right or wrong in this particular. If you're doing it this way, that's fine. My dog knows what I want. Yes. He knows we're doing something now. Okay. So I'm going to take a little step back and ask me. Yes. Good. What might happen with your dog is your dog might just stand there. They're going to feel that little bit of pressure. And I want you to keep that coming. And the second they step towards you, I want you to release that pressure and say yes, and then pay them. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to ask him. I want to get his attention. I'm not just going to yank my dog and be like, oh, well, you weren't going where I wanted to go. And we're trying to learn pack drive. And so I'm just going to do these obnoxious turns until you like, it's not necessary. You can. It's not necessary to do that, especially when you're spending each day working on something. For me, I think it would be much better for your personal relationship with your dog if you invite them into exercises and you just, if they're getting it, yes, good boy. It's just become, sorry, I walked out of frame. It just becomes more difficult. So I'm going to put a little bit of tension on the lead if he's not coming, but I'm not going to. And see, now my dog knows we're doing something. The game is to not have tension. The game is come with me and come with, yeah, good boy. Now I know I'm not using my markers here. I'm just, oh, see there, he wasn't coming. I gave a little bit of pressure and there he comes. Here's the, the, the game is no pressure, right? But the game is also this. If I feel pressure, I should relieve that and then I will get a snacky. Do you see? Yes, good boy. When your dog faces you and starts to walk towards you, that's what you're marking, okay? Don't think like, oh, I gotta get the food in their mouth, so I gotta lunge toward my dog. Don't, that's not it. And so, yes. Super simple, super simple. Keep it simple, keep it simple. So I'm not gonna yank him. Oh, there he turned, yes, good boy. Yes, good boy. As your dog begins to get this, you wait longer to say the marker because you want him to come a further distance before you mark it. But for right now, just mark that turn and look, okay? Yes, look, come get your food. That's what we're doing. Teaching your dog. When I'm not looking and I'm going out here, there's this like pressure thing going on. And then when I look at my mom or dad, Oh my God, and they look so happy and I get a snack. Mm. I mean, who doesn't want to be a part of that? Now, it can get boring 
Yes, good boy for some dogs. That's where you get into the back pedaling. You get into going faster, 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 faster. You get into the side shuffling and all that stuff. Good. But today we're just going to do it slow. And I think you guys kind of get it. Move it around. Make it. Oh, there he goes. See, I didn't even have to do it that time. He processed what was happening and he turned around and came to me. This is just a tool to help him not forget and to help you see the lightest pressure there. I like to make boop sounds when I do leash pops because it reminds me not to be a psycho and do and pop leash pop my dog. What? The, can't believe I used to do that to my dog. What in the hell? If you used to do it, me too. And that's okay. We're learn, all learning together. Good boy. Now remember, do as I say, not as I do. Yes, pay. Yes, pay. That's what I want you doing. A couple more times. Yes, oh, yes, pay. Uh-oh, I made a mistake. Oh, a car's leaving, the car's leaving. Okay, so now we've got, look, he's not paying attention, he's not with me. Enzo, nothing. So we're gonna wait because I gotta have distance. I can either go back and give him pressure and go back, but okay, it's leaving, it's leaving, distance, 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 find it. Nothing. Enzo, find it. So instead of freaking out and manhandling my dog, Enzo, little leash pop, yes. And I even used a food lure there like, hey, stay with me, stay with me. Hey, buddy. Enzo. So I got nothing. I'm going to toss. Oops. Find it. He's finding it. Find it. I'm going to bring him back to me. Enzo. I gave a little pressure. Yes. And all I care about right now is getting him back with me. All I care about. Enzo. Yes. Work through the moment. Work through the moment. Work through the moment. So let's talk about distance because that's what that was. Enzo. I can already tell right now. If I do this, he's not coming. I can tell. So if I add stimulus to him and his oppositional reflex kicks in and pushes back against it, that is not helping. That's not helping. So here's what I'm going to do. This is a little advanced, guys, but I just want you to watch. Okay. He can hear the Jeep still. He's riled up. I have to move. Okay. I have to get out. No tension. I'm going to snake up to my dog. No tension. See, he's trying to move. That's okay. I'm going to snake up to him and I'm going to turn in front of him. And we're going to backpedal out of here. Yeah, baby. And now he's all the way back on me. I'm trying to yell again. I'm sorry, you guys. One more time. Okay. This, again, this is advanced, but it's happening. So let's just do it. He's trying to pull. He wants to go. This is very high value to him. He, he likes to run with the Jeep. Snaking up. No tension. Turning back. Pedaling. I'll show you how I did it. Again, super advanced. We're not working on this. I'm just showing you because it happened. Stay. Okay, so what happened was I snaked up on him because I didn't want to add tension. If I add tension, when my dog's about to pop off, what do you think's gonna happen? I'm gonna add stimulus to a more stimulating situation. Enzo. Okay, good. So little pop there. Generally, if he's riled up, I can still get him to sit. Um, and sometimes that helps me to do this snaking up thing because when he's standing, he has a tendency to want to do that and I can't get there fast enough. So if I can at least get him to sit or to hold still, I can come in and move him and turn and immediately backpedal and get out of there, okay? So it's tricky, 
but I have found that to be more useful. Enzo, yes, good choice. I found that to be more useful than trying to, I mean, I weigh like 110 pounds. That's not happening. Okay, so back to what we were talking about. That was good. Can you sit? Good boy. So the Jeep was there. This is back to the distance, you guys. The Jeep was there and it starts going around. Okay, this is the spot in which he gets to start. We don't, and I don't allow this anymore because it became such a problem. He would start there and he would run with the Jeep down the road. So as the Jeep accelerates and leaves, the value is now getting higher, higher, higher. I gotta move this out of the sun. He's getting more aroused, more amped, more problems. As it leaves and goes down the road and he can't hear it anymore and it's far away, it's fine. I don't know why the screen's so dark. So I think that what is, ha not I think, I know. What is happening with many people is that I think there is a gross misunderstanding of what distance is to a dog, okay? So dogs are just like pure energy balls and they're very sensitive and the, all of the things in the environment that are trigger, triggering and stimulating to them, um, and especially reactive dogs, are also little balls of energy, okay? So, behind this fence are my goats. Right here, come on baby, right here. Yeah. Now remember, my dog likes the goats, but let's pretend he doesn't. Right here, okay, there's a barrier. We're far away. Um, I don't really hear anything, and he can smell them. You could smell them if you were a dog, but I don't know. It, it, we've got some distance here, okay? I want you to picture that those two little goats are little energy balls, little yellow energy balls, okay? So now we're closer. They, their fence comes all the way here and stops about right here. They lay right back there. If you were a dog and you could smell them and you knew, and so touch, and you knew that they were closer. Yes, good boy. How do you think that that would make you feel if you were struggling with wanting to murk one of them? How do you think that would make you feel? Let's get a little closer. Come on. I mean, what's the problem? What's the problem? Let's just see what happens. Quote, unquote. Oh, well, well now we're right up here. Okay, we're right up here now. Now I can, oh. Now I can see. And I can really smell them now. We're close. This is, this is a problem. Do you see? So walking my dog right here on a walk or, and, and you guys, it, it, this was substitute goats for whatever your dog pops off over. Other dogs. Let's just say that it's other dogs. And my dog isn't engaged and doesn't have the, <whistles> sir, we are making a video. Oh my God. So, oh, you guys can hear me. Let's just say that your dog doesn't have if you can see that doesn't have the skill set hasn't built the engagement and now all of a sudden i just heard goats making sounds uh-oh i don't know what he's doing and i'm not going to recall him because i don't want him to not listen to me and then he just practiced not listening enzo yes good boy come on come on come on let's get a little energy going in this you're looking a little Good boy. Now we got goat sounds. So you could see how this might be a problem. And your dog doesn't know any of this stuff that we're learning, right? So all you have, come on. All you have is your voice and a leash. What if you're my size and your dog weighs 120 pounds? What if he weighs 50 pounds and you're my size? That's all you have and now you're here. And look, and the goats, and the smell. 
Let's get a little closer. Maybe that will be helpful. Seriously, I want you to think about this. No skills. Your dog does, has not had engagement built. And now all of a sudden, oh, let's get closer. Let's visually look at them. Let's see if our dog can handle it. Do you see? Well, now look, they're right here. Oh, oh guys, you fell over. Well, it's because I put you on a heel. Okay, there we go. Oh, babies, I'm sorry. Thank God I have my mic on and you didn't hear that. Now they're right here. You guys, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. Tra and then trainers will get dogs and they'll be like, oh, I'll teach your dog how to walk on a leash. And they'll go and they'll do this right, right here. And then just, just boom, doing all this leash stuff. Cool. Sometimes necessary. But if this is your dog that you're holding, not a rescue, not a foster, not a dog that's coming out of the shelter, not a dog Coco is saving because it's running the street, your dog, there is no reason for you to bring your dog who is not ready. They can't, they can't handle it. They need help. They need help. This is not help. This is a gross misuse of distance and you will damage your dog's progress if you play with fire in this way. Distance is a tool. It's a tool that you have that you can take out and use any fucking time you want. Up, oh, distance, up, oh, distance. And it's not about running. You're not running from the problem. You are executing. You are executing the tool that you need to help your dog. I walk away from shit all the time with Enzo. Oh, nope. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Not this girl. He's freaking out about something. Oh, it's the gate. Ooh, this is good. Okay. Hold on. Okay, he doesn't like the gate. So, I'm going to just help him a little. Come on, sweetie. Good boy. Good boy. So, he still wants to take food. That's good. That's a good assessment. Did you see how he looked a little afraid? And he's like trying to avoid it, kind of. So, what, what do I do? This is what we were just talking about. Do I just go back over there to the gate and swing it open? Tell him, deal with it? Well, he's obviously weirded out. He's hot. So instead of doing that, what's the big deal? Let's just go this way. It's not that big of a deal. I'm going to force him back through there. Would you do that to your friend? Would you do that to your best friend who's standing next to you? And they're like, I don't want to go back through that. If you had to, you would be like, I hear you, but we have to go. Like, this is the only way we have to go. But if it's not, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just walk that way? I think a lot of times we think of using distance as retreat or not dealing with the issue, when in fact it is often much more helpful it's, it's more helpful to the owner because it's less anxiety inducing. Remember, you guys are not just training a dog. Like <laughs> that would mean that you already knew all of these things and had been executing on them for years and you just got a new dog when that's not true. You're trying to learn the art or the sport of dog training as well and that takes time and it takes experience, it takes having experiences to know what to do. You know, just like anything else, it's like you can learn all the things and be read all the books and go to all the schools, but until you get out there and you have things happen to you, um, it's difficult to know how to implement stuff. So remember, distance is not about retreating. Environmental blockers are not about you're just too big of a wuss and you can't deal with it and you have to hide behind a tree. I literally used to make fun of trainers that did that because I was ignorant and I didn't know what I was talking about, <laughs> right? I just was like, that's dumb because I'm a balanced trainer. So I was like, you gotta march on through, you gotta get the job done, da 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 And what would be the purpose of that? What, what would be the purpose of that? because you need to show the owner results in that visit. 
or you don't know what you're doing. And it becomes very good when you have to do that to be really good on the leash. Like Coco and I will take any one of your dogs and 20 minutes from now you won't recognize it. But that's not really re repeatable. Like, what are, what are we gonna do? Are Coco and I gonna go, we're gonna go, mm, 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 showing up at the door, showing up at the doors. Like we're fucking Santa Claus and we can fly across the world in a night in our sled and just delve out. We're gonna pop down the chimneys of every dog in the world. That's, you can't replicate that. So I have to teach you guys this stuff, okay? And then when you know, you will literally organically sow this information into your community. And at the very least, you will sow it into every dog that you have after this. And that's something, that's how we change, right? So it's a lot of information. I'm gonna write it in here. Remember all that we're working on today is moving with our dog. And when they feel that little bit of pressure, Enzo, yes. You release that, you mark them looking at you and let them come towards you. Don't get tripped up about, well, did I do this first and then that? Your pack leader will tell you, okay? A lot of the, we do not all train the same way. A lot of them do things differently than I do. They would do it this way, I do it this way. Cool. We're all making fucking shots, if you know what I mean. We're all dunking. That wasn't a dunk. We're all. I feel like the first one was a little too piratey. Anyway, we're all making shots. We all, the dogs are trained. And all the training here, I think, is incredibly ethical, thoughtful, empowering considers both stakeholders in the relationship or more if you are in a family. That's what I think. And so I wanna give that to you guys, but I gotta explain these deep concepts while we're learning the first step of these massive, you know, huge concepts. So hopefully you will learn some skills during this, but then also I will challenge some, maybe some beliefs that you have or some perspectives that you hold and help you look at things a little differently. The goat thing, I have to say. That was pretty good, guys. Thanks, goats. I won't show you the back of my house where they ate all the siding off, and so we had to put, I will. So we had to put red primer all over it until we paint it again. And that's what happens when you know more about dogs than you do about goats. Okay, so, topics for today. Slip lead with movement, pressure on off, mark that look towards you, okay? They know now, they know. They're like, oh, we're supposed to be looking at you in your face. So be like, yes, more of that, okay? Keep it simple, keep it simple. I'm gonna give a little boop, oh, yes, good boy. Okay, we're gonna move around, we're gonna do that, and we're gonna remember not to overcomplicate it. You are not trying to win an Olympic gold medal. You are trying to learn a skill that a coach will help you refine. I don't care if you do it badly. I don't care if you airball every shot. I just want you to just put the ball in your hands and shoot it and we will help you improve. <laughs> and everyone's doing that and it's awesome. Oh, I just whacked him with a leash. And then also remember, distance is your friend. Distance is a tool, distance is a force field. Yeah, I like that. Distance is like a force field around you. Good, we're gonna stick with that. Okay, I'm dropping the homework in. Hi. Okay, so I wanna show you something. The place that I was gonna go today, I gotta move. But this is, I know that I don't have my mic on, so just, I'm sorry about that, but I'm gonna pick a different spot that's just right over there, so we're fine. But look at what happened. I pulled up here and look. Um, that, why are all of these cars here? And then I realized, Jerry, you work for yourself, uh, so you don't ever know what day it is. It's Saturday. <laughs> So they're having a sports uh, tournament there. So we're gonna go on down the road, but that's a perfect example, everyone, 
I'm not scared. I'm not, it's not that. It's, there's no reason for me to put Enzo or I through that right now. Why would I do that? I mean, unless I was like going to a soccer game to watch my kid and he was going with us, okay? So we're gonna go pick a different spot that has less people, but that's still outside where we're kind of around, but we're not people passing everywhere, soccer balls flying around or whatever they're doing over there. Um, it, it's too much, too much, too much, okay? So remember that for yourself. That is this really a good spot or am I doing this because I'm rushing? Because I'm not doing my due diligence and researching where a better spot may be? Um, am I scared? Do I need, what, what is it? What is it, right? Like don't force yourself into situations that your dog should not be in, okay? Or that maybe you shouldn't be in. So we're gonna park the car. We're gonna um, go actually around the pond today. Enzo and I like the heat. I wanna be clear and just preface that really quickly for everyone. We like the heat, we condition for the heat, we condition to be in the heat. At the same time, I normally stop around noon because the pavement does get hot. Um, but you guys, if I can walk without my shoes on, on the concrete, he can do it. Okay. So, um, I just want to say that for everyone, you may be in a place where it is way too hot to be doing this outside right now. So please use common sense and take that stuff into consideration. And remember that I'm in Kansas, you know, I'm not that I'm somewhere different than you. So if it's too hot, don't pick a spot you know, this got a bunch of cement and blacktop, okay? So give me just a few minutes. I'm gonna get out there and get set up. It's beautiful where we're gonna um, film today. We're gonna talk a little bit about, um, well, first we're gonna add to what we were doing. And then the topic of kind of discussion today, you remember yesterday it was like distance. Today I'm gonna talk about stressor signals um, because I think that sometimes dogs are doing things. That is, a, that's stress. Okay, he's hot. That's a stress pan. He wants to get out. He knows where we are. <laughs> the corners of his mouth are pulled back real far. <sighs> See, he's now, is he like overly stressed in a bad way? No, he's just aroused and excited. But your dog may not have been here 150 times to know. You know, so we're going to talk about some of those um, signals today that you can look for that you may be misidentifying in your dog or not picking up on at all. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, somebody thumbs up me. If you can hear me, okay. And I'm going to get this out. Yes, good. It is, this is straight up Kansas. This is like a regular... And if at some point, hey, if at some point you guys cannot hear me, somebody please drop like an ear, like an ear emoji or something, like let me know, okay? Okay, I'm, st I'm struggling, hold on everyone. Okay, so let me just set this up for you. That parking lot was is over there. There's a large hill, let's just, okay. Wait, nope, Jerry, don't get ahead of yourself, woo! There's a large hill right here that I'm going to show you. So that's a great environmental blocker, right? Because we've got sound going on over there. We've got a lot of people, but we don't have... Okay, God dang it. But we don't... He can't see it. Which you guys remember, we all know that with Enzo this doesn't matter. Okay, I'm, we're working on this with your dog. My dog will go walk through a loop of fire. You know what I mean? Like, well, okay, maybe not that. I wouldn't ask him to do that. I mean, unless he had, like, a glitter suit on. That would be cool. Okay. We good? We're good. I'm going to show you. There's a pond right here. All right here. So I got water. I've got a nice big sidewalk that goes all the way around the pond. I'm going to show you here in a second. I can see bouncy houses. That's what it is. It's this. Okay. I can see bouncy houses. I'm going to flip this around here. Oh, and he's, and he's just scooting his butt on the ground there. So we've got our bouncy houses. We've got our pond. You can maybe, you probably can't hear the music because I have my um, mic on. 
but there's some bumping music, a couple of booths over there. Okay, here's my environmental blocker. And then here's my street. So look how cool this is. Stay. Look at this nice little shaded, beautiful area that we have to work in. And then whenever we're done, guess who's going in the pond? And it's not me because people aren't allowed, but I will let him go in there. So see, like this could just turn into 45 minutes of excellence. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So we got our setup. This, let's, let, let, let's just talk about this. That is a panting dog. He's not stressed out. Look at his body language. He's nice and calm. His tail's not tucked. It's just hanging there. He's sniffing, but not, you know, frantically. He can still look up, look around. He will look at me in my face. If your dog does not look at your face and refuses to look at you, they're stressed out. Think about when you're nervous around a friend or you have just had a fight with your partner or it, just anything you're nervous about. It's hard to look at people in the face. Uh, 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 uh. It's hard to look at people in the face when you're like that, okay? So remember that about your dog. Is your dog engaging with you? Is your dog doing the things that we're working on right now with you? Now he's just sniffing because he's sniffing. But that brings me to my next point. If your dog is frantically, boop, come on, ah, 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 come on buddy, come on buddy, come on, leash, boops, leash, boops, leash, good boy. If your, your dog should be looking at you and engaging like that. If not, we got a problem. Sorry, I was late on my, okay. So let's flip this back around. Oh, I'm crooked. Um, here we go. That's better. If I bring a larger tripod, it just blows over in the wind. So, <laughs> okay, there we go. So you guys kind of saw what I did there. The reason I did that with Enzo is because Enzo knows he's supposed to be with me. He was kind of like, I don't really want to do that right now because you're talking to that camera thing again and I want to do what I want. So I just continued to, no, no, we're going this way, enforce, enforce, enforce. And then as he turned to come towards me and looked at me, I was like, yes, good boy. You know, I didn't get mad at him or anything. Like he's just doing what he do. You know, there's no need to get mad. He was just, he knew I wasn't paying attention. You know, they're, they have personalities. They have thoughts. They want and don't want things, you know? So it's like, sometimes they're gonna do that. It doesn't mean anything. It just means you have to be um, consistent. You know, don't let them get away with stuff like that just because you don't wanna push through the moment and deal with it. There he is, yawning. So whenever Enzo like yawns and stuff, I can tell that he might be a little bit stressed out. And I think right now he is because I'm standing so close to him and I'm talking so fast, right? He's ball of energy, ball of energy. We're touching now. We're very close now. I carry a lot of personal energy and so does he. So do you see, he's not gonna sit and look into my face. He's gonna do something with it. He's looking around, he's looking away. But if I ask, hey buddy, he's still there with me he just doesn't want to be all up in my shit and I don't okay so some of you come here good boy some of you are your love language is physical touch okay that's your love language which is fine that may not be your dog's, I know we're talking, we're, we're humanizing this here, but your dog may not want you up in their face. When they're nervous, they may not want you to touch them. The last time that you were super nervous, how would it have made you feel if somebody came up and hugged you right in the middle of you having an anxiety attack? I would be throwing bows. Get the f off of me, I'm freaking, I'm trying to freak out. You know, like, so what would be better is instead of my friend hugging me, which is only gonna add ball of energy to ball of energy, 
It would be better if my friends said to me, you want to get out of here? You want to get some fresh air? Like, let's just go outside and get some fresh air. Maybe you'll feel a little bit better and we can come back in. Or you know what? We can just motherfucking bounce and go find something else to do. Because this isn't fun and you don't look like you're having fun. And I want to have fun with you today. Like, we, we humanize our dogs in ways that don't make sense. And then not in ways that do make sense. Stop touching your dog when it's nervous, okay? If your dog is seeking out affection from you when it's nervous, ask yourself this. Is this affection come with a solution and is coupled with action? Or am I petting my dog not because it feels bad, but because I feel bad for it? Who do you really feel bad for? Do you feel bad for your dog? Or do you feel bad for you that you feel bad? I mean, it's truth telling time. You know what I'm saying? You just stop yourself in the moment. Does my dog need this affection? Or am I making myself feel more comfortable? I want to like literally dive bomb his face every day because he's so cute. He does not care for that. He doesn't like it. And to continue to push that on my dog because, oh, because I was a look at his face. Do you know that I hear that more from people than I hear any other thing that they do to their dog? I will sit and watch clients, look how cute his face is. And I'm like, um, your dog's growling at your kids. It's not about the dog being cute. They're all cute. I think that they're the cutest animals on the face of the planet, maybe except baby otters. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I get it. I love that. I love that you love dogs. I love them too. But to love them is not enough. You have to respect them because they are a being in you and you're stewarding over them. Okay. So long tangent talk. So, okay, let's look at this. Is this dog stressed out? What is he even looking at? Okay. So he's getting up now. He's like, oh, Okay, he's a little curious. He's kind of sniffing with his nose. Now, most balanced trainers would go, that dog's loading. That dog's loading. No, he's not. He's just looking at them and he's interested and he really likes the water. And only I would know that because I know my dog. Yeah, he's just, he's just looking. It's not loading, he's just looking. He likes the water. He's excited there's people over there. There's nothing fucking wrong with that, okay? The difference is when I know that my dog is looking at something my dog will pop shit over, right? If he's looking at a squirrel, I'm not going to probably allow that. I'm gonna come in front, I'm gonna move him, and we're gonna go. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? But he was just looking at a couple people in some boats. You know what I'm saying? Now, I did grab his lead. I kept slacking it just in case he got a little too excited, just in case whatever. I could engage him, draw him away from that area, and do what? Make distance in all of this beautiful space that I've given myself. Because I chose properly. Because successful people are prepared people. We don't rush into things with an apex predator and hope it goes well because that's delusional. No, we're successful because we're prepared. And if something goes wrong, we then know that that was just something that happened that I couldn't control. I moved through it the best way that I could. I had a strategy and an exit plan to get out of that and make distance and then walk my dog back down to a reasonable level of that. You know, I mean, not even that. You don't even need to go that low. But that's the strategy. It's not to just take it to the streets. No, 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 no. No. Do you just take it to the streets in basketball? Do you just take it to the streets in golf? What are you just going to? No. Like, you have rules that you follow. There's a way to play. Some of us are really good. Some of, our, some of us are just starting. Some of us are hobbyists, enthusiasts. 
Some of us are experts. Some of us are coaches. Some of it, we're all playing the same game at a different level. But that game involves strategy, preparation, practice, consistency, discipline, conditioning, thoughtfulness, reviewing what we did on video so that we can see ourselves making those mistakes and correct them, reviewing what we did on video so we can see the progress that we've made so we don't get too discouraged about what we're doing. All of this stuff is available for free. All of it for free. You can film yourself for free. You can get content from me for free. You're getting, I don't even know how much right now for free, far more than $99, we know that. Like all of it's here and I want you guys to know that you can do it, you can do it from home. Everyone here does, you know what I'm saying? This is not, it's not some mystery, it's just successful people are prepared and I am always prepared because I'm incredibly disciplined. I will do the things that I've said. That is not negotiable. It's, I'm not bargaining with myself. We're getting out here and we're doing it. And you can see that consistency gives you a dog that is much more trustworthy. I'm not concerned that my dog walks at a tight heel. I'm concerned that I can talk into the camera and that young man over there can walk by and my dog doesn't care. He's looking, that's a child. He's slowly blinking. The kid's gone. He's, I don't know what he's doing. He's just looking over there. You know, he's just chilling. He's just living his life next to his mom, real calm, because we work on this all the time. It's not because I'm just some great dog trainer. It's because I'm consistent and I'm disciplined. That's why. So that's cool because then that means that you can do it too because you don't have to be a great dog trainer. You have to be consistent and disciplined, which brings me to my next point. I got to tell you about something. There's this lady in the Southwest group and her name is Kelsey and she adopted a dog from Oklahoma, the great and wild state of Oklahoma. Do you know that she's been trying, she's had her dog for 10 months and her dog has not looked at her. They don't know what happened to the dog. They don't know what, something. And for 10 months, she has not given up. For 10 months, she has not given up on this dog. And now she's like, there's more people walking by. Now she's here. And her dog is looking at her for the first time. Like, it's just, it's, <laughs> I wasn't going to talk about it because every time I talk about it, I start crying. It's just like, that is so impressive to me. That is, that's the kind of clients I want here. That's who I want here. If you want to give me $4,000 to train your dog, block me and don't let the door hit you on the way out. I want you here to change and I want you here to fucking believe in yourself. And I want you here to watch me cry about how awesome you're doing. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop now. (laughs) Okay. So we talked about a couple stressors. We talked about the weird panting. We talked about when, um, okay, well, we will talk about this now. There's a lot of confusion about when dogs are calm. Okay. Don't confuse a calm dog with a dog who's just having his behavior suppressed. Okay. This is a calm dog. A dog that's looking around at the environment, that's using his, all of his senses. I can see his ears moving. I can see his nose moving. I can see his eyes looking at things that he is interested in. Okay. That, this is calmness. A dog that's just laying down because it's been told. I didn't ask him to lay down. He just came and laid down by me. He could be doing whatever he wants as long as he stays near me. I don't care. There's a lot of the, the, the suppressing behavior and confusing it with being calm. And I'm not going to go too far into it because you guys can um, look more into what Denise Finzi says about that. Um, she's much more learned and eloquent than I am on the matter. But I do understand it in here. Um, I've done that to my dog. 
I think there are still things that my dog does that are the suppression of behavior that I have failed to work on as an owner because of my own ignorance, uh, probably immaturity, too many tasks, uh, pride, uh, laziness, all the things. I do it. I do it too. I'm not different than you. Um, but I know that now. I know. And so I'm trying to discover that. And I'm just on the journey of accepting the fact that there are many things that I was very confused about. And I probably led a lot of people astray doing that. And there's not really a whole lot I can do about that except explain that that's the journey of any athlete that does something professionally. Sometimes you suck. Sometimes you play for a shitty team. Sometimes you're the shitty one on the team. Sometimes you go to another team and you ball out and you win championships. Like, I'm just here. I'm just out here like everyone else trying to figure it out, trying to do this with my own dog and show you guys how. Coco is the exact same way. Like, we're just from the streets. Like, we don't... I didn't go to some fancy school. I didn't... I've just worked with dogs my whole life, and I know them really intimately. But a lot of the things that I knew in my heart, I let trainers confuse me and make me believe something different that I knew was not true. You know, just to be included and be involved and, like, be whatever and have people say I was a good dog trainer and it's like so gross to me now you know it's so gross to me now so I'm glad that you guys are here now because I've grown a lot as a trainer and just as a person um trying to make this as accessible as I can to people that are like me maybe is the best way to say that tangent number two come on sweetie okay well, that's, that's a good discussion for the day. I like to share my thoughts, my thoughts and my feelings. Okay, so he's wanting to swim. He's not wanting to do what I'm doing. Now, remember, we're just doing what we're, yeah, he's in it now, yes. We're just doing what we were doing yesterday, but we just got a little stuff around us now. We got new stuff, we got sounds, we got smells. We're gonna move, let me make sure you can still, oh, boop, yes. Okay, he went away, he wasn't coming with me. Let's go. Good boy, yes. Make sure they can see, good boy. I don't like to call his name over and over and over and over during drills. I want him to know my body language means something. Yes, good boy. You guys, your pack leaders are working really well with you on markers. I want you to really listen to them about that because I'm notoriously terrible at timing for marking. <laughs> like, please know that, okay? I'm here to show you the basic things to make you excited about it, to let you know that you can do it. Let's go, sweet. Because I really honestly am mostly just a bumbling idiot half the time. And I've done this with my dog and he's amazing. Good. Yes. See, now he's like, well, I'm just going to walk next to you. Instead of this whole thing where we're apart and then you do this and then I got to come with you. Maybe I'll just walk next to you. Oh, he's going a different direction. Yes. And see how he corrected himself there with the lightest amount. I mean, I, you guys, look what, the lightest amount of leash pressure. Let's pick it up, let's pick it up, let's pick it up. Yes, good boy. It's supposed to be fun, right? It's fun. Your dog needs to know that you're a fun person or what in the hell are you gonna do when you go over to that part of the pond and all the boats are over there and you're just like blandly walking by your dog and your dog's like, boats, banana, and you're like this. Yes, that is not fun. And I don't know if anybody's told you, but it's not, find it. We're gonna reset, good boy. We're gonna reset and we're gonna pick up the 
pace, which means I gotta take this off. I do like that. It's a little big to me. And it reminds me of when I worked at Hooters. We had these like little like things, these little like, you know, that you put the checks in and stuff. And we would always go like this and it was really funny. So that is my story about the time I worked at Hooters. It was actually one of my favorite jobs I ever had. Fun facts about Jerry. I mean, you don't really do anything. You just ride around on a scooter, serve wings, and wear short shorts, and you know that I like that. Come on, let's go, let's go. Okay, let's make it fun, let's make it fun. Now, remember, you don't want to be wearing any slides. Let's just side shuffle. Good boy. Yes. So now, if you're getting to this point and your dog's like, okay, I like this, yes. You're gonna start rewarding anytime they look up at you. Cause that is, it's a check-in. That's called a check-in. Okay. Come on, sweetie. Good boy. Yes. So he looked at my face. I rewarded that check-in. Here we go. Yes. And we're just kind of going around. Oh, I don't want to pull him. I'm going to invite him. Come on. Good boy. Always invite first, okay? Don't just be yanking on him. Oh, he's pulling on me because he wants to go do something. Oh, okay. I thought he had to poop. Come on. We're not done. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good boy. Yes. Come on, sir. Maybe we can try walking together a little bit. Yes. Okay, nothing nothing big. Keep it casual, keep it fun. Remember, you're not out here in a park with all this stuff. You're just in your backyard. Yes, good boy. Keeping it light. Good boy, yes. And always, I like to always reward at that heel position, especially if they come and stop and look at you. Yes. Oh, you cheated. You looked at the snack eating not my face. Okay, so that's what we're doing for today. I'm going to stop this and start another one where I talk about some things that I saw in your guys' uh, videos that I just want to make sure that you remember or avoid. Okay. Number one. Sweetie, come here. Let's avoid the purse arms, okay? What are purse arms? The old... Okay, these are purse arms. We're, what is this? We're not doing a 90 degree, okay? Because look what happens. Here's what happens when you start doing purse arms. Or some of the guys will do this. Because you guys are big, okay? Well, so are we. But you guys... Your tendency, there's an off-leash dog over there running around and jumping all over the place. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but your guys' tendency is to strong arm stuff to make it happen. Where we typically would not do that, um, you know, especially with a large dog. So what happens, but women do it too. So know that. What happens is this. You guys start doing this and look, look where the directional pressure is going. How can a dog give in to pressure coming from above? It cannot. You have to release that pressure. Now we're not playing the same game because we're teaching our dog that pressure means I can turn it off. I have choice. I am capable of turning the pressure off by doing this thing and engaging with my owner. If a dog is up like this, how can it turn the pressure off? It can't and you're not playing fair anymore. Okay, so watch your hands. Watch your hands. Your hands should never go above unless you have a small dog. Okay, that's different. You, my hands should not be above where my dog's head is. Why would that be? Why would that be? Unless maybe I'm doing this, but I'm giving additional slack in my lead to accommodate that, right? If I'm just There's no, there, they, just watch that, okay? No purse arms, no purse arms. 
We want to have a nice two-handed hold that you can drop to give your snackies because look what happens. Now we can drop and back pedal. Remember, we talked about this yesterday. Now we can cinch up and turn in. Now we can drop an outside turn. Now we can drop and go back here. You got a lot of stuff you can do, but if you're holding a leash like this, you're only using one hand to dribble and you don't want that. Can't do those fancy Euro steps. Okay, second thing, watch the small spaces. People that are in limited space, I want you to be very careful. This is something that Coco is a master of talking about. And so, sit. Good boy. You guys, when you're working with a dog in a small space, something very particular happens with your body. And it is this. Do you feel how uncertain that is? You don't have enough room to move around. That was him wiping his butt. You don't have enough room to move around, so you start doing these things. And you're... <sighs> Thank you, Train. We can hear you. You start doing these awkward movements, and it is hella weird to your dog. Your dog doesn't understand if they're supposed to move back out of your way, if they're supposed to engage with you, if they're supposed to so. If you're in a small space and you're struggling, because some dogs will be okay like that, and you're struggling, I want you to pick a larger space outside with limited distractions. So that would be an enclosed yard, something like that, okay? Um, give yourself room. The other thing. You guys, don't lean over your dog. Think about how you interact with human beings, okay? If you're wanting your dog to do something, don't lean over it and look at it like this, okay? That's, that, that's weird, right? It, that's awkward. You don't want somebody leaning over you, especially when you're a dog, right? Because that's odd. That does, that's not, that is a very particular move to make. And a lot of dogs, even my dog, who's comfortable with me, he's like, just let me go in the pool, please. Even my dog that's, or the pond, my dog that's comfortable with me will get weirded out when I do certain things. The other thing, as we move forward, just make sure also that, it, that you're not making the camera intrusive to your dog, okay? Enzo doesn't like it when I hold the camera up to his face. He does, it's just some dogs, feel that because you're also looking right at them when you're doing that and it's just like oh to a lot of dogs not just some a lot of dogs okay so instead oh he was trying to lay down I'm sorry sweetie so instead of towering over your dog get down with your dog engage on their level at their line of sight invite them to come to you on a level that they are instead of doing everything like this it's off-putting. Who else do we do that to? Who else do we do that to? Children. My son is upset and he's crying. I'm gonna get down on his level. Are you okay? I'm not gonna stand over him and go, what's wrong, are you okay? And stare at him. I'm gonna get down and listen to him and, and engage with him and invite him to tell me what's going on instead of lording over him, okay? So just be careful about those things. Keep it fun, keep it light. Some people had questions about tools. Um, the reason that I use a slip lead over the flat collar is attached to a leash is because it's a lot of action. It's a lot of action to go person, leash, collar, dog, collar, leash, person. That's a lot of actions. And when you're trying to get feedback that happens in milliseconds and you start adding on additional tools, you're adding on additional time to your feedback. You're also adding a different type of pressure. It's not cinching pressure, it's impeding pressure in one area here at the base of the trachea. Now, if your dog is pulling when you use a flat collar and a lead, then, or any other tool for that matter, your dog doesn't understand leash pressure. Hey, hey buddy, 
your dog, good boy, your dog doesn't understand leash pressure. So probably putting a flat collar on it is not great because you're going to have upper airway problems with repeated use of that. So the slip lead is a cinching pressure that is equal all the way around the neck. So when your dog pulls, it doesn't just pull here, okay, against the neck. It cinches around the neck like this. Some people like martingales better because they don't cinch all the way closed, but I mean, your dog has a neck. If you're being responsible with your tool use, you should not be putting your dog in situations where it would be pulling like that. You're doing too much. You're doing, you're, you just got on the freeway. You just took your little 15 year old permit driver and put him on the freeway. Oh my God, look at your face. You're so cute. See, I can't help it. I know what you, I know what you're feeling when you want to pet him. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I mean, you guys are doing really well. Um, I'm super proud of everyone and I'm really, really, really proud of all of your pack leaders. The trainers that are involved are like you guys, they genuinely care. They genuinely like get teary eyed and love you and want are invested in this journey with you. Like we have all cried about this. It's, it's serious. It's serious to us because it's such a revolutionary thing, you know, to teach, to teach dog owners instead of us just showing up and training your dog is not really done, you know? So, oh, okay. that, yeah, that was a lot of spit. <laughs> All right, everybody. I love you guys. You're doing great. Um, tomorrow we have a break day, okay, because Sunday is my family day, so I won't be here tomorrow, but we will still have seven full days because we'll be here like Wednesday, so we'll have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so we still have our seven full days. I'm super excited about it, and today I'm going to work really hard on getting some of this footage out and sharing it with everybody on Instagram, but I wanted to make sure we were really focused um, the beginning of the boot camp to deliver all of this to you and not just continue worrying about social media and marketing. So I hope that you felt that um, and felt how organized it is. And if you have anything um, that you want to add that you think could be helpful um, for the next boot camp or some feedback that you'd like to give that's constructive, please, please, we would love to have that. So you can email that um, to the Get Help Now. You can email Chelsea that or you can just go on the, um, if you have the app, you can do it there too. But we always want to make this better for you guys. So, okay, I'm so excited to see what you do. Full transparency. This is my, this is my um, sheet that I wrote down the reel that I just made because it was like 30 different things. Cause I, I, I made a reel about you guys and the progress that you've made. And it took me two hours to pull all of the footage and piece it together and match it with the music and the song. And I just have to tell you, like, it makes me, f I'm going to get super emotional. It makes me feel sad that other dog trainers don't get to experience this because it's like, I haven't been able to make um, reels for, co I haven't been able to do social media for a couple days because I put so much energy into this. I didn't have anything left and I was finally ready to do it. And just to sit down and look at everybody's like footage, like I know dog trainers that have struggled for years to get clients to listen to them. They cannot get results and they cannot figure out why. And I don't, it just seems so obvious to me when I retired and just started doing this full time. I just, it just seemed obvious to me. And the bigger it gets and the more clients I see it help. And then the trainers, the more I include them and then I see them coming back to me and they have the same feeling that I have. And they're like, what is going on? Like, I just feel so overwhelmed watching these people do this. And I'm just like, this all came from a vision of, I don't know, not like a, but like a literal vision, but like, a vision that I had in a grocery store parking lot in Tulsa, Oklahoma on my lunch break.
everything that's happening now is literally almost exactly the way that I envisioned it, and it's overwhelming to me. So if you ever wonder what it's really like in, in here behind the screen, it's, re it's much more emotional than what I'm even showing you guys. Like I just spent like 30 minutes crying to my team about how emotional this is to me. So. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> uh oh. Good morning. I am just catching up. I just left the gym. I was catching up with everybody and I watched a really cool thing that um, Coco is in, Coco Garcia is in the um, Southwest and International group. And I have asked her to please, yes, participate, but offer any words of wisdom that you have, anything that you want to share with the group. Like we would be so honored to hear what you have to say. So she was talking about something really cool last night. Sorry, you guys. She was talking about something really cool last night. I just wanted to give you guys context because I'm going to forward the video and put it in here if I can. If I can't, sorry. I don't know if you can forward into ShareCast, but I want to do at least try. So if not, I'll just delete this message and the few people that were here will know that I deleted a message. Um, but just to give you some context, she's talking about um, her dog Kuma, um, which is basically like her Enzo kind of, um, uh, one of her working dogs and demo dogs and um, something that she has discovered uh, about her and um, learned in the process of learning more about your dog and its body language. So hopefully I'll be able to do it, fingers crossed. Hi guys, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough good lighting, but I thought this was kind of a perfect opportunity to, I, thought, I can't tell, I'm sorry, a cat, I've been trying to get these feral cats big and neutered and I'm putting collar. Are you my cat? Are you the, I can't tell if this one's, sorry, 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 get to the point, get to the point. Okay, um, so I'm just out here in my front yard and you can tell it's dark out. <clears throat> this is my dog, Kuma. She's uh, my Akita, obviously. So she's one of my, I'm sorry, she's one of my most well-trained dogs. Like she's my demo dog when I do appointments. She's my, like she's my everything. She's one of my really, like one of my best dogs. And she's incredibly smart. She's got a heavy track record, Kumino. Um, but I'm saying all that to say that in this whole process of doing what we're doing right now and learning my dogs, um, I, because she's so well-trained and she's such a confident dog, I didn't know this for a long time and I tried to like, I tried to help her and I tried to fix it and I just realized she can't stand, she can't stand the area I live. I live in a really shitty part of Phoenix and there's fucking drug dealers going like back and forth all the time. There's always people on drugs around here. Um, she's very sensitive to energy and she doesn't like, there's gunshots a lot and there's like popping noises and when it's dark out, she doesn't like to be out here. It doesn't matter if we're in our front yard, if we're like, she does not like this and it's it's almost like um not necessarily because she's afraid of it she she just purely doesn't like it she's kind of an emotional dog in that way um but because she's so alpha and because that she has a heavy bite history of not like fear aggression bite but just get the fuck out of my way bites i did not know that about her i didn't believe it and i didn't really want to believe it because i'm like not her is she scared like she's not scared what's going on she really is sensitive to, I've, I've had, I had a homeless man approach me not too long ago and I've seen her do this multiple times and I can always tell when they're high, or, you know, methed out or whatever. And she, before they even get to us, she already, she doesn't back down. She lets them know, don't fucking come any closer. It bothers her and she will like, she'll let everybody know. And she's my demo dog. Like she, this is not, that's just it's just part of her personality. She does not appreciate people that have energy that is unpredictable. And <clears throat> because of that, 
I quit trying to fix her and make her do things that I thought she needed to do, like go on an evening walk in this shitty part of town where I carry pepper spray and I'm constantly doing this, making sure we're not being charged by off-leash dogs, even though I'm like mostly fine with it because like it's not a big deal to handle it. She doesn't like it. So we don't go for walks at night anymore. I brought her out here just because I wanted to show you her body language. Like this dog's tail doesn't ever go down. She does not, this is a totally uncomfortable for her. And I thought, cause it was, wasn't, it just got dark right now. So I was thinking we'd do a little bit of back and forth stuff and you know, I'd be able to show you what happens like as it starts to get darker, but we didn't make it. And she just is, so she's just hanging out here like this. She's fine and she'll stay next to me and she'll be fine. But I know that this is not ideal and it doesn't, it's not fun. <laughs> this is not, it's not fun for her and it's not fun for me. And I just want to tell you this really quickly because this happened to both Jerry and I and um, if she watches this, she'll understand or not understand, but she was there. And so of course she'll understand. So um, several months ago, back at the beginning of the year, I surprised Jerry in Vegas at her meet and greet. I had never met her in person. We'd only like been besties through this. And so I met her at the, and I took Kuma with me and <clears throat> this is in Vegas. And so after the, the meet and greet was over, it started to get nighttime and we, I was starving. And so I went with Jerry and her boyfriend, um, or partner, husband, I don't know, her Ken Barbie doll. Um, we went to go get something to eat and we were kind of on the outskirts of town and we were trying to decide where to go. And I started to think about it and I was like, well, Kuma's fine. I take, I literally take this dog everywhere. So I just, we, I didn't really care as the night it started, like it started to get dark. Anyway, land the plane. We drive into Vegas, like down on the strip and we go into one of the casinos to, um, to go to this place to have dinner. And I don't rem remember the name of it, but as we were parking and we're doing this, I was like, Oh shit. She does not like unpredictable energy. She does not like people that are intoxicated. And I am taking her in to the lion's den. I'm not going to make a fuss about it. Let's just go for it and see what happens. And so we walk through the, um, the wherever to get to the restaurant where we were just like down, you know, maneuvering through people and stuff. And she did fine. You know, she could tell she wasn't like thrilled about it, but she did fine. We were inside getting ready to go to the place that we were going to go eat again. I can't remember where it was, but you know, it's Vegas and there were lights and cigarette smoke was really heavy and all of these different things that were happening and, um, people and, and all these things and Kuma's holding her own. She's just doing this. Not a big deal. I know this is not ideal for her. I can tell by her body language and the way she's moving that she just wants to get the fuck out of there. And I could not relax. It made me uncomfortable to think I put my well-trained, you know, very predictable dog that I've worked a shit ton of hours with and put a ton in. It really pissed me off that I did this to her. And I felt like that was a really stupid move on my part. And Jerry said something that triggered me and I, I split, I left town. <laughs> she, we were standing there we were waiting to go into where we were going to eat. We we're waiting on our table. And she said something about all the lights and all the commotion and stuff. And we were just people watching and, you know, just talking about stuff. And she said, um, cause we talked about how we're both sober and how we both neither one appreciate Vegas in that way anymore. Like this is pretty lame. Like if you're not, if you're sober, there's really like, what did we love about this? And she goes, isn't that crazy? This is probably how our dogs feel when we take them into situations where, you know, they're not drunk enough to be there kind of thing. And I instantly was like, oh my God, she fucking like, this is making, I, I just knew it was making Kuma uncomfortable. And so I had, um, and I was getting a bad headache from the cigarette smoke, but I never told Jerry that was why I left. Um, I, I got really uncomfortable and I got really like, I could not relax and I really couldn't even explain it at the moment. I just told her that, you know, my, I couldn't do the, do the cigarette smoke anymore, which was, was true. And they didn't want to be there either. And so we all left and I left, I, I just left town. I went to go see somebody that I value at such a high level that I could not wait to meet in person. And I left because of my dog, because for me doing things like this, and I'm, I'm surrounded by people that understand, you know, that was Jerry's feedback was like, yeah, who cares? 
And obviously, who cares? Like, she's got the super hot guy that she's with. So it wasn't like I was making the trip or anything for them. Like, that wasn't, I wasn't there to, you know, it was just, I was there. And who cared if I left? I was there. It was cool. Like, it wasn't a big deal. So I knew it wasn't going to be a big, a big thing. But my point for all of that is, <laughs> like, now she's a little bit more comfortable because we have, I haven't been asking her to do anything. Just hang out here. Just hang out here. And when I'm talking like this, like, it puts me, it, it puts me at ease where I'm not, you know, constantly trying to get her attention. I just don't care. But anyway, um, I've learned through this process and this will just be the rest of my demo because there's not really much I can do with her right now. I've just learned through this process that uh, these things that I thought were necessary for my dog to be able to pull off or that I needed them to do was really making our relationship much, much worse. And there was just, there's no need for it. There's, there's no need for it. I don't, I don't need her to be, I don't want to be out here at night. Why the fuck would she want to be out here at night? I just do it because I want to make sure she gets enough exercise and I really like the walk of the bond. And, uh, we do, we do way more things. We do, I figured out different things to do with her that build her up that, that she does appreciate doing, like she really likes to work. And then I don't, I have a dog that I don't bring out here in shitty Phoenix at night because I know she doesn't like it. I don't take her to Vegas because I know she doesn't like it. Like there's, there's just no need to, to push through that. And, um, and because I'm aware of that and because I set us up to do things that will be challenging, you know, I'm not just going to sugarcoat the whole, our whole existence, but we work up to them, you know, like we work up to all, like this. It's been a long time since I've had her in the dark outside. This is a big deal for her to just be out here. And, you know, she's not freaking out. She's not trying to get back in the house. She's just hanging out. So we just work up to them. Anyway, okay. That's the end of, that's the end of what we got. And you can see her, like, her body language still is not, it's not on, it's not great. She, oh, we probably can't even see that because she's so dark. All right, you ready? And off we go. Okay, so I need to end the story for you, or I need to tell you the, a little piece of it from my perspective. You guys, this is just like silly bonus content. Please do not, I'm in my truck. This is not, this is literally just bonus stuff for you guys. Um, so please excuse the background. Oh, okay. It's country. Bye. Uh, so Coco's explaining up into the point where I looked at her and said, dude, are you okay? And she's like, and I said, then you need to go. Whether it was about her or it was about Kuma, I, I did in the moment, I really probably assumed it was her. Cause I knew at the very least Kuma would, was doing Kuma's thing, which is what Enzo would have done. He would have tolerated it and stood there. But isn't that crazy that that's that her that that is what it was in her head was what I said was this is probably how our dogs feel like they're not effed up enough to be in the moment so it's just freaking terrible and I believe that and I believe that when I left Vegas you know I guy got it <laughs> you know I mean if you're not drugged or inebriated in some way it's actually incredibly overstimulating you know so but to circle it all back and close it I could see something was not right with her like I know her I know and she's nervous and when she's and I was like mm, do you want to go and she's like and so I was like okay let's go and we walked her back out and she left and it was fine and your friends that want to hang out with you when you're doing stuff with your dog choose wisely because you need the friends that you have to be like I know we just got here but I don't think that this is right and my dog is uncomfortable and we need to go and if that bothers them then don't take them with you when you do stuff with your dog okay because you wouldn't ignore Megan, who was having a meltdown, to make Rachel feel better, would you? No. You would tend to Megan. You would be like, Rachel, she's having a meltdown. We're leaving. We're leaving. 
okay? You wouldn't just be like, ooh, Megan, <laughs> deal with it. Deal with it because we're here and we are here to... You would be like actually a terrible friend if you did that. Or just don't be friends with Megan then. You know what I'm saying? Like we talk about our dogs being like these people and stuff like that. And then we don't actually treat them even like... I mean, we treat them like third class citizens half the time. I don't know. I'm analyzing a lot about myself as a dog owner with you guys, to tell you the truth. And I know that Coco's doing it too. So that was a very private thing that happened. And I'm really glad that she shared it. No, I did not know that me saying that was what made her nervous. I just knew that the cigarette smoke and the building that something was just building inside of her because she's my friend and I have spent time getting to know her. So I know what she likes and what she doesn't. And when she tells me what she doesn't like, I listen to her, you know? So it's like, can you think about your dog in that way? There's that hot little Ken doll walking up. <laughs> okay, Mike, check, Mike, check me. Mike, check me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my god! I said my check and he came over here! I love you! <laughs> yeah? Good. Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Who's the first one? Put your thumb down. I can't tell by your pictures. <sighs> you know what? I will be able to though. I'm going to put all of your little faces and your dog's names into my mind palace. Okay. Jerry, get it together. I'm really excited. Like, I'm so excited, you guys. I you throw, Just throw the schedule to the wind. I don't care. I don't care anymore. I'm going to cram as much information as I can into you because you're here. You're here, and I want to help you. Like, if you're here, I'm just going to talk about whatever I think is the most serious stuff, and, that, and that's what we're going to do, and that's what we're going to do. It's going to be great. Hi, Alexis. Oh, well, maybe they didn't see you. No, I went to go water his plant in his thing. That's one of our six children. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what she's doing? This is related, I promise. Uh, they all have, a, like, there's a chore board, and we have a structure here because there's a lot going on, and I want our family to be successful. I want everybody to feel empowered. I want people to feel confident. I want them to know that they can do these things. I want them to learn, like we, I was just telling her, go out there and look at the wildflowers that are around the well. That's lavender, rub your fingers on it and smell it. And then while you're out there, kiddo, give them a water. Thanks, because that's your job, petty officer. Petty officer of the plants. Guess who's the officer? That's me. Anyway, I like discipline stuff because it just helps everybody be really successful. If you want beautiful plants around your yard, you have to water them. And so if we all work together to make that happen, we can all enjoy beautiful plants together. Okay, get into it, Jerry. We're gonna talk about, I put that in there so it helps me remember what I wanna talk about when I tell you guys um, the topics. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to break this up a little bit because I wanna go out on that road that you guys always see me out on um, when Enzo and I are biking and stuff like that. And we're gonna do some leash drills out there today. But before we go, so you have to be patient with me because I'll have to stop the video because I have to walk like three acres over there. To, anyway, not the point. Um, so he's just hanging out. He's just looking right now. We spend a lot of time not going on our walk before we go on our walk. We spend a lot of time no, not going on our bike ride before we go on our bike ride. If you allow your dog to get into a state of arousal during the process of trying to do things with them, training, spending time together. A lot of stuff is happening there, okay? So the first thing is, if you wanted to experience something with a friend, 
It's okay to be excited, but it's not okay to run around acting insane in the environment. Oh, <laughs> I thought he was looking way further away. I'm doing a live video, honey. It's okay. <laughs> She's like, look at these plants. <laughs> yes, yes. She just got here for the summer. <laughs> so she's learning about when I talk to the camera and when it's okay to talk to me. So thank you for letting her interrupt. Um, okay, so it's okay to be excited, but it's not okay to run around acting insane, right? That would be weird. And so with domesticated dogs, because we're domesticating them to our society, we want them to be able to experience these things with us without all of the hysterical behavior, okay? But I want to make a very clear distinction between being calm. What? Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Were you just sniffing? Good boy. Yes. Good boy. So he's hanging out. But like if I let him wander and I don't pay attention to him, you know how when you're in Walmart with your hubby and you're not paying attention and he wanders off and before you know it, he's over in some section that doesn't make any sense about what... Does it mean that he doesn't love you? No. Does it mean that he he is just... No. It just means that you need to know that about... I'm sorry, men. <laughs> <laughs> you need to know it's probably an unfair example but you know what I'm saying like it doesn't mean it means that you need to just maybe be a little bit more attentive because you know that he has the capability of wandering off so that's an engagement issue right like if you ignore someone and you don't ask them to con to converse with you to communicate to to talk to enjoy this together what do you think they're gonna do they're going to do what they want because they're a sentient being with thoughts and the ability to choose and senses, you know, that take in the environment. So what you're seeing is because we do this all the time, it's repetition, it's discipline. Yes, Enzo knows that we will eventually leave or we won't. But at the very least, he gets the snackies. And he's okay with that. And we will always play after this. So as soon as I grabbed the tripod, he started wagging his tail and came immediately, got off of his place bed and came with me because he knows we're about to work. And he knows what that means. It doesn't mean that he gets so excited about the task that he starts doing all of these things. And I'm pretty sure he likes this. I mean, he's a chill dog because we've worked on that. But so that's the first thing, right? So the, the arousal comes and then you've got this dog that's jumping all over the place. So if you're going into your walks like that, you just shot yourself in the foot and now you're going outside. Remember, you are got a gun with, let's be clear, you are taking an apex predator out on a walk. You're putting a tiger on the end of a leash and going outside. He's small. He's feisty. He's not a full-size tiger. But a tiger nonetheless. And you're putting him on a leash and going outside with him. I really hope that he's feeling pretty chill. Because they, they want to hold stuff in their mouth and shake it. And that is normal. They're not bad for wanting to do that. That's who they are. That's who they are. They're not squishy face couch potatoes. They're not, they're like lean, mean, fatten machines, you know? So I want him to be in the best mindset I can get and him to be really dialed into me and to understand that we're doing an exercise together and that he's going to get to do all these things that he really likes if he continues to play the game with me. Yes. Did you see how he's looking at the food? Because he didn't think I was paying attention to him. He just thought I was talking to you guys. And then he was so dialed into the food and not me that he didn't even know I was looking at him.
So I moved my hand out to the side and he immediately was like, wait, I know this game. Boom. He looks right at me. Okay. He's five. We do this all the time. He's not a robot. It doesn't work forever. It's like working out. You go to the gym consistently for the results that it gives you as a disciplined action that you're taking. It gives you these huge results over time. If you stop going, you don't get to keep talking about how great your quads look because they probably look like shit now. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't work that way. Dog training is not do the thing, then dog is good. That's like, never think that again if you're thinking that. Never think it again. I forbid you. So my doggy is nice and calm now. I'm just rewarding him because he's sitting like a sweet, sweet angel. <laughs> okay, my dog's nice and calm. First thing, if you are struggling, I want you to place your dog. Put your dog in a place for 10 minutes before you walk, okay? Around Tulsa Pack, we call it the place sandwich, okay? Some people even like to call it the WAP, the walk and place. They do the place after, but we... <laughs> Some holes in the sauce. Sorry, I'm sorry. But we like to do the place sandwich because I know that if you have come to me, you're probably not doing that. You're probably not doing place. You probably, some of you don't even know what I'm talking about and that's okay. That's okay because now you heard it. Now you're gonna go look and it's gonna be great. I'm gonna be so proud of you. So, place my dog. Go on my walk. Place my dog, right? Because it's all about the state of being, but it's not about making your dog be calm. That we're not, we're, we're helping our dog learn that this will feel better for you. And I'm going to help you get there. Being frantic does not feel better for you. So I have to help you get there with disciplined consistent action oh my god look at him everybody just look at him this is such a sweet boy so he's ready he's ready he's ready to go but he's also like she's talking so i guess i'll just be here and that's great and he can do that too i don't care he doesn't need to be doing every single thing that I say every second. You guys, I used to do that to my dogs and it just fucking breaks my heart. And they were good dogs. You know, they're, they're like this. And I, ugh, I used to do that to him. Okay, that's another topic for another day. We'll get into that later. So we got our walk, we got our place sandwich, the first part of our place sandwich. I don't know. It's probably not even that loud and I'm making a big deal out of it. Sorry. Okay. We got our place sandwich. Our dog is not frantic. Okay. Now remember my doggy has been doing this a long time. Don't compare your dog to my dog. Don't compare your dog to my dog. That's dumb. Don't do that. I don't like that. I want you to think, okay, that's an example that I have. That's an example I have to look at. One that makes mistakes, one that has setbacks, one that does better, one that, uh, a real example, okay? That's it, that's all that is. The second thing is, do I have the right stuff on me? I swear to God, if I hear another person ask me, I don't know why it triggers me so bad. What do I do about these dogs that keep charging us off leash? I'm 40 years old. I'm 40 years old. I've lived in numerous places in the world and in the country. And I can tell you on one hand how many times I've been charged by off-leash dogs. Like, I've seen a bunch of off-leash dogs, but they do not charge me. Okay. And thank you. Watch this. This is my secondary leash that I carry at all times because I am with 
that. And that attracts things that I do not attract, right? Or maybe things I do, like another dog. And I know, because I have lots of life experience and I live in reality, that this happens. Good boy. That this happens and that this occurs. Even out in the country where I live, you know, there's, it's going to happen everywhere. We know that. We all know it now. This is a leash for me to A, wrangle, or C, B. <laughs> My brain is so fast, y'all. Or B, protect me. And then this is the leash for my dog. If, I'm glad he laid down because I don't want this to scare him. If anything in life comes near me and my dog, <laughs> I really, really hope that the end of this carabiner does not hit you. I will hit, I will hit you with it. I don't care what you are. It's not going to kill you, but it will not allow you to assault me or attack my dog. And it will not allow my dog to defend itself and kill your dog. It costs like just a couple of dollars and I leave it on the end of this leash and I will swing it and I'm really good like really good. I will just pop something right on the head with it. Or you can swing it this way. You can make sounds with it. You can definitely put your dog behind you right here so you don't hit your dog. And get to work. And the animals don't come close to that. That's disturbing. Like Stop going to places where dogs are charging you all the time off leash. Stop. And if you can't help it and you live in a place where that happens, would you tell your child, would you keep taking your child out on walks? Would you keep doing that with your child? No. You would put your kid in the car, you would drive to a park that's safe, and you would walk them or uh, in the stroller or let them play there. You would not ignore the danger just because you live there. That, that doesn't make any sense to me. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of it, again, what do I always say? Successful people are prepared people. I'm going to be successful every single time, no matter what happens, because I am prepared. If I forget my items, and I choose to go out into the world with my apex predator who draws attention and is potentially dangerous at all times because of what he is, and I'm not prepared, I need to be reflecting upon that as a human being. Okay? It's akin to picking up that revolver and being the person that dumps out the bullets or the person that loads it. And then the person that has the audacity to take it out and start flipping it around on their finger. <laughs> Look what I can do! That's playing a dangerous game. A one that I wouldn't one that I wouldn't play. One that I wouldn't play. Okay. So we have calm dog, we have proper equipment. Okay. I got a poop bag. I've got an extra leash. I've got a defense weapon. Defense tool, if you don't like the term weapon, that's fine. I got my sweet little baby. And look, he's super chill now. Super chill. But he's ready. Okay, sweetie. Yeah, and see, he gets up, he's ready, he's happy. He looks excited to be with me. Just because he's not jumping around everywhere doesn't mean he's not excited. I can see the light in his eyes. I can see that sparkle in his eyes. Yes. Good boy. Okay. So I'm going to walk 
down out on our road. So I'm going to stop for just a second and we're going to go back out there. I hope it doesn't give us too much trouble that we're not in Wi-Fi anymore, but it seemed like it was okay at the park the other day. So we'll keep going. Okay. So before we walk out, we were just walking. I picked up the um, tripod and we started walking and he acted like he wanted to stop and sniff here. So here we are. Why? Well, uh, this is beautiful. It's lavender, it's wildflowers, there's bees. He looked interested in it. I also like that. So we stopped, we looked at it, he's ready to move on. So we're gonna walk out across the yard and if at any point he wants to stop and go to the bathroom, that would be great because then I know, okay, he's relieved himself, we can just continue on in the walk. I know that for a lot of you, there's kind of this guessing game of when is it okay, when is it not. Enzo generally, yes, Enzo generally is a like, okay. He likes to get that done in the beginning, but not always. So I just like to give him an opportunity for that. Okay, so we got a little bit going on here. We're at the very beginning. My house is over that way. So we just walked straight across and we came out onto the yard. So what I'm gonna do, this is a hot spot for him. There is a CAT <laughs> that is, uh, is always like right here. It's starting to rain, this is hilarious. That is always right here. Um, and then right past this first bush, there is the crossway of ah, that to that, which is this is a hay field here. And then this is hunting ground. So game comes across there constantly, okay? It's not enough for me to just know about my dog. I also need to kind of know about the things that are in the environment that my dog would care about. Otherwise, I'm just staring at my dog having sets of behaviors and not understanding why that's happening. And that is difficult to learn about someone when you're not really learning about them. It's kind of like parents that don't get to know their children's interests. You know your child, I guess, because you're raising them and you're, but if you don't really know what they like and what they care about, it's hard to connect. It's hard because you don't know what to give them that feeds them and everyone is different. Some dogs really need quality time with you. Some dogs really need uh, that good structured walk every day. That work really helps them. Some dogs really need enrichment in nature coupled with decent exercise, you know, to really be fulfilled. And you can't know those things unless you learn about your dog's breed and really I think what drives dogs in general, right? Oh my God, I feel like he's like, Jerry's doing a boot camp, let's ruin it with applying. Okay, so here, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't put it where, <laughs> okay. So here he's looking at something. This, good boy, this is also a hot ticket item because he knows there's rodents about or whatever you want to call twirly mice. So I'm not going to let a lot happen here. Let's see if we can take it. Enzo, come on, buddy. So you see how I just asked him. If you can ask, ask. Do you want to be asked, hey, Jerry, let's go? Or do you just want somebody to walk up and yank your arm? Sometimes, if I know he, right now, not acceptable. Enzo. Because he knows he was purposely pulling against the leash to get what he wanted. But my dog knows. So it's okay for me to go, come on now. You know? He was taking advantage of the fact that I'm talking to the camera and not paying attention. And I would too. That's why I like him, because he's real. Okay, let's go on this side of the road, because I just think this is real pretty over here. And let's just look at this. Okay. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. 
nobody was ever helped by being perfect all the time, or nobody ever helped anybody by being perfect all the time. That's just nonsense. Okay, so we're out here, and I would like, well, look at you. I would like to um, start my walk with my dog, and we've gotten past the part of like, okay, he's going to do a little sniffing, he's going to do whatever. A great way to reset or to start an exercise is exactly what we've learned. So if your dog's really looking around, try to get that dialed in with a couple of little scatters. Because pretty soon your dog's gonna be like, oh, well there's, oh, that one fell on his head. <laughs> there's, there's snacks involved all of a sudden, okay. And now, yes. So now he's paying attention to me. Starting a walk, going out the door like this. <laughs> Starting a walk with your dog jumping all over you and biting on the leash. <laughs> Don't do it to yourself. Don't, okay? It's better for you to do all the things, all the whole routine, and just get through each tiny section with calmness than to just keep marching out on walks every day because you're letting your dog practice really bad behaviors. And you let a dog do that long enough and that in itself becomes reinforcing and the dog's like, this is the shit. Okay, so don't start like that. I want you to remember what I said. You're, you're just pulling it right out and you're just popping your big toe right off, okay? So now that I got my dog dialed in, we've talked a little bit about our leash hold and my anchor hand. My dog's gonna be on my left, which it's mirrored, so whatever. I was not gonna teach you guys any of this, but we're doing it. We're doing it because I believe in you. My dog is so into it. I'm gonna just turn and I'm gonna start walking, you know, and I, we're gonna go slow because we're just learning, you know? We're just learning, look at that. Look, that looks good, that's not that hard. Good boy, oh my God. Yes, super simple, keep it simple, keep it simple. Okay, we're gonna do a little back pedal. Come on, come on, come on. Your walk does not have to look like some sort of, what? Has every walk you've ever been on with your friend, you guys just literally walking next to each other like this? You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of like Palm Squad when you had to change formations and you have to like move in formation and you gotta look to the left and the right to make sure that girl's in line because the formation's gonna be off, bitch, get up. You're too far ahead. I shouldn't be able to see you. That's what that reminds me of. And sometimes that shit's cool, right? Sometimes it's cool. Sometimes when I'm at a festival or I'm at a, I don't know, outdoor art gallery, I'm gonna put that leash up and we're gonna walk through like this and it's gonna be amazing because I don't want people touching my fucking dog. But if we're on a walk together and we're enjoying life together, what in the fuck is that? Do you know how many years I did that? I had did that with this dog. With this dog, I did that. Oh my God, it just, Oh, I just want to go into a closet and close it and stand in the dark. Oh, and apologize to every person I ever taught that to. But, you know, sometimes I just be doing things. I don't know. I'm just out here. Like, that's what I, that is the line of training that I can't, I, that's where I came from. I don't know. I'm just trying to be open-minded and listen. And as I did that, I could see, oop, there's a truck coming. I could see my dog was liking me more. And he, wa oh, I feel just like you guys. That's why I get so emotional. Okay, there's a truck coming. He seems pretty into me. He seems like, oh my God, he could even take food from me. Look, he's looking. Oh, he's looking at the truck. Let's give him a chance to look back. Good boy. That was a little sus. The guy was going a little slow and he doesn't like that. And I know he doesn't like that. So what would I have done if I thought he was like going to do something? I know, look at his drool. <laughs> I would have started putting treats down and tell him find it. 
find it, find it. And then that would have got his nose down. That would have got him out of that moment of, what are you doing, dude? Because he would have immediately been like, oh, snackies. Engaging a different sense, doing something different. Okay. Yeah, we had a little bit of drool there, sweetie. Yes, good boy. Look how, look. Keep it simple. There's, th look, this is nice. There's, there, there's not a ton of distractions. Some, some. Okay, so we can work with that. What could I have done? What could I have done if I was you and I was trying that? Look at this. Boom, cack. Look at that. Look at this. There he was. There I am. Boom. Escape. Not escape in a, I'm some kind of wiener and I don't want to deal with stuff. That ain't true. That is a, oh, let's go. Yes. Good boy. Let's make some distance. And let's do all of that from right here. Yes. He doesn't like when people do that. They're just slowing down. He doesn't know. What if they're, are they going to get out? What are they going to do? I don't know. And I don't necessarily want him to like it. But I still have to have him listen to me. Yes. So you see there, I just used my surroundings to make Enzo. To make a good decision. It's about making good decisions. It's not about making your dog do something in the moment unless you have to. What would have happened, Enzo? I'm gonna give a little bit there because he seems like he's looking at something. And if I weigh a small leash pop, I guess that's not really, it's a little bit of pressure. I wouldn't really even cut. See, he's doing it, kind of doing it again, but we're just, okay, he wants to stand there. I don't want him taken off over there. And that CAT could be there, that whatever. So for me, it was worth it in that moment. He knows he's not supposed to do that. It's an appropriate use of that. But for me to just, oh, I didn't like that, and do this, and he doesn't know, your dog doesn't know, and he, he, just be careful about that. Because my friend goes doing that to me a whole bunch of times, and you're not going to be my friend anymore. See what I'm saying? You're not going to be my friend anymore. And a lot of people, you know, some of your guys' dogs ain't no bitch. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? You think that people are the only ones that have those types of personalities? You think that people are the only ones? Come on, sweetie. You think that people are the only ones that can be meek or shy? Do you think people are the only ones that have trauma and then act insane because of it? Okay, now see, now he's taking advantage of me. I don't like that. But I'm not going to be hateful to him about it. It's not that big of a deal, but I don't want to allow it. So I'm going to let go of that because that's a problem. With my dog, because he's confident, we have a great relationship, it's appropriate for me to go up and turn into my dog to get him out of here because I'm not going to pull him with me and we're going to backpedal because there's a truck coming. We're backpedaling, we're backpedaling. I don't want him looking at the truck. I'm going to wave to my neighbor to be nice, but not look at him because I'm paying attention to my dog. Now I'm backpedaling him back. Sorry, you can't see him, but I got to work him through it. Woo! Oh, sorry. Good boy. Come on, sweetie. I didn't have anywhere to go. Where did I have to go? So I had to make a different decision. Sorry, I was going to teach you guys some stuff and then this is all happening. And this is way better. Okay. So he was sniffing in there. As I turned into him, a truck comes around the corner right at us. What do I do? Okay. I can't. So I've turned in. Now I got a problem. Okay. I can go this way. I can't go that way. The truck's going to drive right there. I can go this way. So I just, because I was turning into him, I kept my turn going. Come on. And then I just backpedaled him as the truck passed us this way. Okay. You guys, I'm not really, you know, I say it all the time. I'm really not the best dog trainer. I'm just really good at decision making and being prepared. 
I won't be beat in that area. Come on. The rest of it, eh, I'm all right. You know, no big deal. Okay. So let's go back to where we were. That was sweet. That was fun. That was a sweet little lesson. Okay, on how you can use some of the things we've talked about already, right? How you can use the environment. You can make distance. Okay. So we're going to just get going here again. We're going to get going. We're not going to worry about too much. I'm going to put my leash in my anchor hand because I'm going to start practicing for my two-handed hold here. I might even just practice it a couple times. We're going to turn. Very good. Yes. Don't worry. I'm going to go over that. That was good. That was good. Not a big deal. Nothing hard. Nothing difficult. Look how easy that is. Boom. Okay. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Come on, Enzo. Good boy. Okay. I got my my hold go in there when my dog looks at me. Yes, he was looking at the food, but whatever. Oh, somebody asked about that. They were like, my dog's not really looking at me. They're, they're like, when I do the back pedal, come on, buddy. I think that they're still looking at the food. It doesn't matter. Keep doing it. They'll get it. It doesn't matter. Do it over and over and over and over and they will get it. I promise you. I promise you. Don't worry about that. You guys worry so much about being perfect. Get out there. Do a shitty job. You know? Oh my God, get out there and just suck at it. And and just have fun. Have fun. Because guess what? It's not that hard and you're gonna get it. And then it's and you're gonna and then you're gonna be like, oh my God, there's like levels to this and like nuance, and I can get into this more. Yes. But when you're starting, stop it. Like, just get out there. It's fine. It's fine. This is the type of stuff. It's fine. Going through downtown Toronto and trying to help somebody do that in a lesson, that's not the type of stuff you tell people to get out there and do. And to say it even out loud <laughs> sounds kind of dumb. So one more time. Let's do this one more time. And then we're going to add something because this is easy, right? This is, and, and if you suck at it, guess what? It's still easy. You don't, you, you just suck because you're new. You don't suck. It's because you're new. Like, calm down. I was terrible. I'm terrible at so many things. It's like amazing. You should see me bowl. I have to bowl with bumpers. <laughs> and I just keep doing it, you know, because it's fun and I don't care. I don't care. And that's nice. Okay, let's add something. Come on, Enzo. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do, I've already been doing it. I'm gonna do it closer to the camera. We're just going to do, and so you're going to have to go faster. Okay, come this way so they can see. Come on, quick, 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 quick. Bump, 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 bump. And there, look, he picked up speed. And now we're just going to do, come on, we're going to do a little outside turn. Yeah, that's kind of like a little engagement like we learned, right? Like we learned with the leash pressure. Come towards me. So as you go to turn, come on. Come on, sweetie. Oh, my God. As you go to turn, come on. Now, why is this working? Because you're not in the middle of a park. Why is this working? Why does the kid learn how to park the vehicle in driver's ed? Because he learns in an empty parking lot, for God's sake. He does not learn at Arrowhead Stadium in the middle of a Chiefs game. That would be insane. Okay, this is nice. Look. We're in nature. It's, it's sm there's air. It's fresh. We're getting sun. We're together. And there's not all this stuff going on. And we can just work on this together. He doesn't really want to, you know, because he wants to, like, run and stuff. But he's a good sport about it. Come on, honey. And he gets snacks. And he gets to help all the dogs. And that's worth it. Good boy. Look at that nice high tail. Come on. This is how your dog should look. Nice. Oh, we're making a little mistake, but that's okay. It's okay to do a bad job sometimes. We're just going to correct ourselves. We caught it. We caught it. That's okay. Good boy. Okay, so that was just a little outside turn. When we're going a regular speed, do you know what I like to do? I like to, watch this, prepare my dog for the outside turn. And I like to give a little 
right? It's just like when you speed up on a bicycle and you're turning this way. Your dog has to pick up speed to make that wide of a turn. Let them know. Let them know. Hey, hey. What do I not like? I do not like this. I'm just going to tell you right now, if we're friends and we're walking together and you turn and you grab me and do that shit, I'm going to pop you in the face, okay? And everybody knows it. Find it. Honey, uh, yeah, okay, and that's okay. I didn't want to hold those anymore. What, look at this, what, what, watch. What would you like? Would you like, yes, good job. Or would you like, oh, <laughs> did you think the leash was on? That was so sweet, honey. Okay, come stand over here because I'm doing a demonstration and you're in the way. Okay, good job. Or would you like this? Right, pow, right in the kiss if you do that to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't like that. Unless we're like in the gym or something and you're like trying to help me build muscle. But like, ew. Come on. What are we gonna do next? We're gonna do a little inside turn. Boom, boom, did you see that? We're just gonna, we're gonna make a little scoopy, a little scoop. We're gonna scoop in front of our dog. Why would we do that? Why would we do that? We would do that if we saw that there was potentially something up ahead that our dog's gonna pop shit over. And we're like, oh, whoop, no, Becky. You know, we all have that one friend. Oh, mm, moms, we all have that one. Oh, the toy section. <laughs> That's all it is. That's all it is. It's Becky, don't, don't let Becky see him. Don't let Becky see the guy with the neck tats because Becky can't deal. And we all know how that story is going to end, okay? That's what we're doing. We're not letting Becky get to that guy with the neck tats. We're just going to boom right in front of her, okay? There's a car. But that was good. You know, he just looked at it just like, you know, a regular looking at a thing. You know, nothing big. He's sniffing a little. That's good. A lot of people would be like, he's fixating. He's fixating. Pop it. Pop the prong. Pop the prong. Do it. I think he was just looking at it. Okay. But sometimes he's Becky. Okay. So I have to learn. What is my dog? What is my dog Becky over? Okay. Have I just started something? I think I have. What does my dog act like Becky over? And what does my dog really not care about? And I just don't know the difference. Okay. That's the inside turns are for helping with the Becky. Okay. The backpedaling. <laughs> I swear to God, you guys are never going to forget this and it's going to be amazing. The backpedaling is to help you re-engage or get past or get past neck tat guy. Yeah, when he's too close and you can't turn, you can't guide her away. You know, oh my God, we've got to get past him. We've got to get past him. I've got a distractor. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. There he is. Okay. Yeah, Becky. Oh, good. Yes. Look at that. Oh my God. Look over there. Yeah, good. That's what, do you see my point there? Yeah. Okay. Don't use the wrong thing for the wrong thing. Hey, sweetie, come on. Yeah, okay. I know. It is, it's a weird walk today. It's a weird walk today. Okay, don't use the wrong thing. Don't turn in when you should be backpedaling. A lot of people... I'm sorry, that was mean. A lot of, pe <laughs> a lot of people will just get confused and think that they can't make it through backpedaling. Come on. So they'll do this. They'll see the thing coming. They'll see the thing coming towards them. Instead of turning and looking at their dog and re-engaging and being fun, they do this. Literally just staring at that other dog. Staring at the owner. 
thinking about every single bad thing that could happen. Think about, I'm thinking about riding by on a unicorn of excellence every time I pass. I'm thinking about like, I literally know every single, like every application of every single technique that I could get past this owner with this dog, with my dog, because I know my dog so well and I know exactly, and I'm, I just tell you every single technique that I do. Those are it. I only have three. Sw hand to God. Hand to God, Chelsea. It's true. Tell him. Tell him it's true. I turn in. I back pedal. Oh, a sad shuffle. I haven't taught you guys that, but we're going to do it later. It's going to be great. There's no tricks here. It's, I just practice a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like I'm out here right now. Okay, so what are we gonna do today? That was a lot of information. It was awesome. Save it, take notes, watch it again. That was a great amount of distractions for us to learn. It wasn't 70 cars, it was like two or three. And I had space. And the sounds that he hears are the familiar sounds of our goats bleating for no reason at all. You know, well, they can hear me. So all of this is familiar space. We do this all the time. Okay, so find places that you can go to all the time that aren't super far away, that you're not doing all this stuff, gas is expensive, yada, 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 all the things, and commit, commit to this. Not, oh, I took a boot camp from Jerry and she taught us how to get, because I just told you that I just taught you literally, I've, I've, sh I've shown you guys every technique that I use. The only other cool one I have is this. I'm just really good at it. That's like four things. It's engagement, 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 engagement. You can get by with so much with having engagement, consistency, and discipline. Discipline, 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 never miss, never miss, okay? I mean, like, sometimes miss, like Sundays or family days, but <laughs> those are the bomb days because we go to the lake and he has a bomb life. Anyway, okay, so what are we doing? We're going to do the same place that you were at, okay? The same place that you have picked. Why? Because we're adding something. Don't add a new skill and a new place all in the same time. Well, that's not fair, that's not fair. Don't do that. We're not going to do that to your dog. We're going to build in this familiar place and add these extra little things. I'm going to demonstrate for you one more time. Come on, Enzo. We're going to go a little faster. Beep, boop, bop. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. You got to pick it up. Bump, bump, bump the leash. Bump the leash. Bump, bump, bump until he picks up speed. Bump, bump, bump. There he goes. My and Oh, I got a little pressure there because he's. He's going slow, so I'm gonna pick it up, pick it up, backpedaling and pick it up. It's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be fun, good boy. That's it, okay? Keep the energy, keep the pace. Don't be boring, don't be boring. You gotta ask yourself, could I be providing more energy into this? Am I too regimented, am I too like, nobody wants to hang out with a friend like that on a walk. you got to give it a little sauce. You know, be fun. You don't need to necessarily maybe do that, but... Okay, come on, one more time. Good boy. Just seeing what we've learned. Pedal. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bump, bump, bump. Good boy. Going to do a little outside turn. Oh, that was good. And we're going to reward any time our dog looks up at us. I don't care if your dog looks at the treat bag right now don't care <laughs> like i want you to just try this sorry i forgot to give you your biscuit love you see we're bad we're terrible <laughs> and look at us go oh my god jerry you're not doing this right jerry you're not doing this right i'm on a street lined with wildflowers and I am having fun with my dog and he likes it. And that's all I care about, okay? I don't care. 
I don't care. And you shouldn't either. Not until you guys get it. When you're like, oh, okay, okay, oh, okay, so, okay, inside tournament, inside tournament. Oh, okay, this is the time I would backpedal. This is, when you get there and you get comfortable with this stuff, I promise you, I promise you, you can come in on the details, okay? You can get with me and ask me about, is this leash hold right? Am I executing this correctly? Do I need to do this better or this? But for right now, just get excited about it. Just understand that it's a lifestyle choice that you are living with your dog to include them as you promised that you would. Nobody that ever comes to me wants a dog as a house ornament or a lawn ornament. I can't, I don't, uh, they don't do well if that's what they want. I don't know why it's doing that. So I know that you guys want to include your dog and you want to have this lifestyle. And my life is very simple. I don't, you know, I, I, my dog is not a support animal. Um, he's just a pet and he's a working dog. He's a demo dog. Um, that's it. We have a very simple life. So I have a simple set of requirements, I guess, for him. Um, and it's up to you to decide what that's like for you and your dog. But at the very minimum, come on at least get this stuff down and make sure you're doing it every day, okay? And then you can decide the stuff you want to go deeper on as you grow. There goes my truck. I wonder what's going on with that. Okay, it's super dark. I hope it's still okay. We're gonna watch. I can't move it now. Bye. Yes, good boy. He looked right at my face on that one. Good boy. We've been we practice so much on that, you guys, because we do this twice a day, and we practice just him looking back at me every time he sees a vehicle go by. He's supposed to look back at me, and so that's always a win for me. That's a huge win for me, and I have to still practice this. If I stop, he will do what he wants because he's the bomb diggity and I want him to be a dog. I just want to help him through things so he doesn't get hurt. I don't want him running out. Okay, he's hot and he's leaving. I don't want him running out to a vehicle. I don't want that. Look, he's like, so like I can tell he doesn't want to do this anymore. He's hot, he's ready to go. So we're going to go now. Okay, when we get back, what are we gonna do when we get back? There's some hoes. Kidding, kidding, I'm sorry. Walk in place. We're gonna do our play, the other half of our place sandwich. Okay, I felt like he was hot and he was getting hot on the pavement. So I just took his leash off and now he's doing whatever that is. Maybe he has to poop or something. I don't know. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna put the homework in. Don't freak out, people! You guys don't freak out, you're so good. You're just like, what is it you want us to do, Jerry? Look at this, here it is. And I'm like, yes! And then I cry and I cry and I cry and I cry because it's so wonderful. But I'm gonna put the homework in, but just remember, just remember, okay? Keep it simple. It's okay to mess up. It's okay to be like, I don't know if this is right because your trainer's gonna tell you and then it's gonna be fine. And I was right, he did have to pee, okay. I love you guys so much. Okay, good uh, Good morning. Is it working? Is it working? Okay. Um, I need to show you this part, so you'll have to hang in there with me um, because it's too far for me to walk back here to try to explain it to you. So... Let me just, I'm going to actually get out because I want to show you guys, this is like all this stuff's like super important. Thank you for the thumbs ups. This, all this stuff. I used to wonder why Denise Finzi would do this in her lives. I was like, oh, this is so boring. Uh. And then I realized that it's critical. And we're just going to watch, like Enzo knows where we are and he loves this place. He's super excited. Yeah. Please don't come in here. I'm just, I'm making a video, sir. Okay, so I'm gonna get out just a second, but I'm gonna unplug this and then I'm gonna show you how I choose like where we go. Okay, I'm not gonna put my mic in yet. So sorry about that. 
for my one Wichita person, I'm at Chisholm Creek um, off of 96 and Oliver. There is a parking lot over there and there's a parking lot here. This parking lot is a bit sketch to me because I've noticed that people like, I don't know, it's just a little odd to me and somebody just did it. Somebody like acting strange went in there. So we're gonna go over here, but see notice, this is way like Wichita's out there. And this is like a, this nice nature area. Um, it is uh, policed. I hope that this is gonna reconnect guys. The um, police patrol this area a lot. So the rules are really generally followed here. And that's why I like this area because I know that I'm not going to get rushed by an off leash dog or, um, I mean, it hasn't ever happened. Um, and there's tons of space for me to move if I need to. So let me restart the app and hope I can fix this reconnection problem. And then the next time you see me, I'll have my mic on and stuff. So just give me a couple minutes. Okay. Mic check, mic check, mic check. I'm just going to set this here because I'm going to finish getting ready and I'm just going to show you what we do. This is, this, is this is super realistic. Let me put it in the shade there. Okay, good. Thank you for the thumbs up. So I'm getting all of my stuff and we're chilling, laying in the cut though. Okay. We're not going to be running around. We're not going to, that's, I don't, I don't care for that. I need to think about what I'm doing and what I have. And Enzo's job is to just stand here with me. And periodically, I'm just going to reward him for just this. Look, look at this. Like, we're in a, like a little nature preserve. There's a lot going on in, t in just terms of like just the wind and the sounds. And there's not a lot of people here. There's a car right there with a person in it about 15 feet away from us. But we do this so repetitiously that he knows we're going to go eventually. So it's like, just chill, wait here for her. I get the snackies. Find it. I get the snackies uh, periodically. Sometimes, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes I'm not thinking about it. And I'm now I wouldn't do that with your dog. I would be really reinforcing this behavior. But my dog is used to it. So notice how I can, I can phase out. <laughs> I can, Oh, I love you. I can phase out my food a little bit because he's like, he knows the drill. We're going to hang out. She's going to get ready. We're going to get our stuff. Okay. Oh my gosh. My tummy is rumbling. Hope you guys can't hear that. Oh, look, another plane. <laughs> It's because I live in Wichita, you guys. It's literally the air capital. All the planes get built here. Not that plane, but... Okay. Now, now you can't see me very well, but we're just gonna... Hi, I love you. So, see, he's excited. Look, he saw me pull out my leash, and look what happened. He's happy. That's what you want from your dog. Okay. Sweetie, come here, and let's get this on now. Oh, good boy. And see, I'm not using food right here because my dog's used to this and he's excited about the leash. Come on, we're gonna go this way. Okay, so I got my extra lead. Now we're at a place where there could be other dogs, where there could be, so I've got my extra lead with my clip. And so it doesn't dangle down and bother me. I'm just gonna put it Okay, so all I have to do is unhook it. This, this right here, all this stuff that I'm doing makes a huge difference in how you, what your experience is like with your dog. Like it takes a minimum of 10 minutes, sometimes 15 for us to ever start doing anything because I'm so particular about this process taking forever. Okay, now the important thing here is I got to find what I did with my truck key. And that's going to be pretty tricky. Oh, there it is. So I got all my bits and pieces. Got my poop bags. Got my doggo. I 
and he's just waiting nice and patient. Good boy. Look, he's engaged with me. That was perfect. I mean, have you ever seen such a sweet little dog? Okay, so now I'm going to just show you a couple things. about this spot okay so hang out with me i know this is a little bit annoying to do it like this but this is what we're doing we're going to get this done together okay there's a couple of, of uh, things to note here that sign says no pets no bicycles no skateboards that's the actual nature preserve so it would be not only inappropriate it would be rude for me to take my dog in there so i'm not going to do that because it says not to do that <laughs> so we're gonna walk across the parking lot over to the other set of trails where bicycles and oh I just dropped my leash accidentally truly I just accidentally dropped my leash what do you think what oh 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 sir come on sweetie oh my god good boy what do you think would happen if your dog's pulling on the leash and then you accidentally dropped it he'd be gone so oh so it's important to I'm just keeping my slack and my lead here and remember this is all way ahead of where you are but I'm showing you how I do this with my dog who has practiced the same exact skills and literally only those skills that I just taught you Okay, we just do it a lot. Okay, you are dribbling a basketball and I am dribbling a basketball. I have more practice. I am playing at a higher level, okay? But we're both doing the same thing. Okay, so he's just making his potties and I'm letting him do what he wants, okay? Because I need him to go to the bathroom so we can move on. Oh, oh, wardrobe malfunction. Now, when am I gonna stop this? Okay, let's talk about all these little tiny details today, okay? See, now he's tasting the scent, and I don't like that. He got so far into something that he was not, look, look, I do not care for that. That's, I don't care for that. That would be, let me give you an analogy of what that's like. I just took you out on a date and in the middle of us having a conversation and doing something, you got up, you went and sat down at somebody else's table and you started eating their food and being on a date with them. You're so immersed that you don't even remember that I'm there. I don't like that. And that was my fault because I knew he was sniffing that particular spot down in the grass, like down to the dirt. Oh, he's seen something. Oh, no, we're not going to do that. Beep, boop. Yeah, give away. Just got to move past that spot. You see that? We're going to get past that. We're just going to keep going. Oh, look. Now he's back with me. He's got a nice pant. Look at that nice high tail. Anyway, so it, it, it's like he can't even get, he, he can't even pull himself away. That's not, I don't want to have an experience like that with him. I wouldn't do that to him. I wouldn't just drop the leash and run off into the bushes and forget he was here and just start talking to, or, or just drop the leash and just start talking to somebody the whole rest of the time and forget he was here. Like that, a lot of this stuff is common sense. Okay, there's some cyclists coming, so we're gonna use our skill. We're gonna use our skill, we're gonna backpedal, right? So I can give my dog some direction, 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 direction. That's great, that's great. See how that was, see how that was? What would have happened if I would have been doing this and they would have been passing? Like this way, what if I was this way? Oh my God, I'm just gonna turn, I'm just gonna, right? I'm not gonna strong arm. Like if they're passing this way with me, I'm gonna pull my dog that way. If they're passing this way past me, I'm gonna pull my dog. So it's always about whatever direction you're already going in, turn your body and engage your dog to continue on in that way. Okay? 
somebody's coming at you, turn your back to them and pull your dog, right? Somebody's coming towards you. Turn your back to them, pull your dog. Somebody's passing you on this side. Turn your back to where you are now facing that person and pull your dog, okay? Because you, th this whole thing, you can't use a turn in all the time. How would that have worked? Okay, so what, if my dog was fixating on that bicycle and he's like this and the bike is over here and I try to turn into my dog, I just smashed my dog right into the bike. That's not helpful. And my dog's already like super stimulated and then I'm just gonna add a whole You know, you can't, that, don't do that. You know, I like to use that kind of snake up thing and turn in when he's frozen looking at something because I don't want to use leash tension to remedy that and I don't want to grab him to remedy that so I have to do something so in that instance that's okay but to turn a moving dog into something why would you do that just backpedal him through it people are like well I don't feel like that's gonna be enough control it's a lot more control than this I mean, you better be one bad bee like Shanique in the Pacific North, Northwest group. That was me, Shanique, by the way, who commented on your fantastic legs. I swear to God, this woman looks like she could crush a human being with her legs. And it's about the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, I want to see her backpedal. Okay, <laughs> Jerry, now don't do that. Okay. Now let's just, that was good. So see, we had a, just a real life scenario there. I immediately knew what to do. And guess what else I could have done? I'll run off into the bushes, I don't care. Watch me, watch me do it. Watch me do it. Now, some people will wanna come off the trail and sit their dog, okay? Now, you can, you can do that. Let's, let's turn it around and let's just, where's the sun? Let's just do that, okay? So if your dog is a stressed down dog and movement makes it worse, if your dog is a dog that wants to shrink, that wants to, I would not recommend pulling that dog through situations because I don't know that it may like it. You know what I mean? There's a difference between moving past something so that it can help you and being in situations that really are never going to be helpful to you because that's not the way that you are. You know, Enzo is a stress up dog. Movement helps him disperse any sort of extra energy. It just helps him. But we have done engagement so much that I could step off of this. Sorry, the sun's in his eyes. Yes, I could step off. I could step off and just do a little bit of hand feeding and check in. I could step off and just do a little, hey buddy, do a little bit of find it, get that nose down. If your dog's really struggling with bikes, because, because you're, they're probably too close, okay? They're, so they're, what, what would they engage with you for? Like a torpedo is coming by to them and they wanna, you know, choose violence. Like that, so get their nose down. Some dogs can't handle looking at you. Maybe their relationship isn't built strong enough with you yet where they trust you in that way. And that's okay. Like it doesn't mean that you, oh my God, I'm a bad owner and my dog doesn't love me. That's not what that means. You just need more practice. So I could do this, but that may not be, come on, that may not be what your dog needs. So do you see how there's all these different techniques that can help you don't overload yourself on them, okay? So you learn them, and then you see how other trainers and other owners use those techniques. And you find the ways that you think are, are ethical to you, and then you just do that consistently with discipline. Okay, look how beautiful this is. Just look at this. We're just gonna go on a little, like a field trip together today. I love this place because there's so many places to get off the trail. 
there's some blind corners so you got to watch out for that but I like it because I can walk on the sidewalk and if it's real hot Enzo can come and walk in the grass there's plenty of places for me to break and let him sniff and be in nature with lots of different plants that we don't have at home we don't have a plant like this at home I don't even know what the hell that is it looks like some kind of weird milkweed and these are all nice little native Kansas plants so see and there's gonna be smells and sounds in there of rabbits and squirrels and all kinds of things that would be really enriching for him to smell and because I am particular about the times of day that I go it's pretty empty today because people are either at work or I don't know whatever it is that people do I don't really know got all this beautiful stuff and I'm just I'm just doing a little bit of this I'm gonna go back into the shade to do our work you guys so just hang out with me until then I'm not gonna worry too much about heel because look at this nice loose lead here's a guy coming on a bike so remember I'm gonna let this man know that I know what I'm doing I'm gonna start he see he's not even paying attention oh he has to poop he has to poop okay let's move away <laughs> good, morning. good morning so basically here I'll turn it around basically all I was gonna do was I was just gonna instead of waiting until the guy got near me what the no you let owners know that you know what you're doing I'm gonna turn and very into oh 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 no we're getting nope I don't like that now come on come on he wasn't pooping he was just doing whatever he wanted come on and we're gonna get out of this we're just gonna do a little bit of this and I'm gonna backpedal him out of that okay just like that like he's like me he gets off on tangents he doesn't know he has to be reminded it's not because he isn't trained it's because he's being himself and he lacks to sniff you know he doesn't know I like to talk I don't know sometimes people have to be like stop we need to move on now you're not creating a robot okay okay so we're going we're going he's had some sniffins we've set some clear boundaries he knows he is not to be doing that we're working we got our nice loose lead look how nice this is it's we're friends free we're friends we're supposed to be having fun together but like I don't want to go to jail you know what I'm saying like like let's have fun but like I don't want one of us to go to jail oh here's a cyclist coming here so we're just gonna pedal right through that do you see that you see that there do you see how much more comforting that is to a dog than you guys both facing the same direction and you put and you putting <laughs> all your anxiety in the lead okay he really is pooping this time you guys backpedaling will change your effing life you don't even understand you don't even know like I really don't I don't leash pop my dog in that way anymore I don't remember because I use a slip lead <laughs> you know what I'm saying like leash popping I'll show you watch this I'm gonna get in some shade okay Think about this real quick for a second is it more effective just use your common sense this is what I was lacking before sweetie come over here we're doing yeah good boy is it more effective when you see something that's triggering to your dog and your dog starts loading for you to turn and guide your dog through that looking at them giving them guidance and leadership with confidence we're going to get through this we're going to get through this oh my god we're through it boom snacky or oh here's a dog coming here's a dog there's a dog coming 
Okay, so let's turn this. I'm gonna stop talking because there's a... And I'm actually gonna flip this. Okay. Okay, here he comes. Okay, and we're gonna go past, we're gonna backpedal, okay? We're gonna backpedal right past that dog. We're not gonna think about it. We're gonna be confident. He sees our doggy. We're gonna go. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Here we go. Here, here we go. Our camera <laughs> okay so Enzo's going a little bit fast here so I'm just gonna oh hey buddy Boop. and here we go good job okay we're just gonna work this down okay cuz look he got a little excited we're gonna outside turn here hey he's a little excited he's trying to sniff slowing my pace Getting him back down. We're going to move all of that fun energy out. And he's just going to process sniffing and looking at that dog. Not like a frantic person. Hey, buddy. Oh, my God. Oh, look at you. Look at, look at him going. Good boy. He likes other dogs a lot, you guys. Enzo loves other dogs. I don't want him to not like other dogs. I don't want him to be like, bitch, don't look at those dogs. I don't, why? He's never hurt another dog. He's never even, none of that. You know, like even if he maybe had, like to make him, to leash pop him to not look at that dog. <sighs> you see what I'm saying? Hope you guys can see me. When I can just engage him past, I can always, I could have shortened my lead up, right? Maybe you need to, maybe you need to have your dog closer to you and you backpedal so that you can have that extra engagement. Maybe you don't need that long lead because your dog's gonna get confused and start going towards that other dog, okay? So maybe you need to just, and look what we can do. Look how we can do that with our anchor hold. Okay, so I'm going to drop it, and as I backpedal, without putting tension in the lead, I can choke up on my leash. And now my dog is closer to me when I backpedal. So there's no chance of your dog going over there to the setter, right? Sweetie. <laughs> I just love him. He's my best friend. Oh, oh, here's a bike. Here's a bike. Let's do it just one more time here. Here's a bike coming. Okay, come on, sweetie, let's go. Oh, that's a good boy. I'm going to choke up on my lead. I'm going to have him close. I got him close to me. Maybe even a little side shuffle here. Oh, I'm falling off. I'm falling off. <laughs> yes. Good, it helped. He checked in after I fell. Come on, sweetie. We have to go get the thing. And we're going to pick up that pace and bump that leash and shuffle back in, shuffle back in. This is fun and this is fun. And we are doing cardio. See? There's no leash popping. There's no leash popping. I don't leash pop anymore. Uh, I mean, I don't really think it works. I think that it tells your dog no, but like if your dog's already doing the thing, is, a, is it any form of no really gonna, do you see what I'm saying? Okay, look at this beautiful spot I picked for our drills today. Nice and shaded, yeah. We're outside, look at all this. We got the sound of the cars going by, but it's blocked. Okay, we're just going to let him sniff around a little bit, get familiar with our area because Enzo is a stress up dog. So it helps him to move around through an area and smell it a little bit, get a little familiar with it. There's a cyclist coming, passing now. Hello. He just looked and went back to what he was doing. 
because he's with his mom and we're doing something. We're having fun together. Oh, yeah, just a little bit of pressure. But we're still playing our, good boy, but we're still playing our game, right? We're still playing our game, loose lead with me. It can't, <coughs> excuse me, it can't always be about what you want. That's an effed up relationship. That is an effed up dictatorship. It cannot always be, oh, oh, now we're doing a little bit too much there. We're going to get that. Okay. It can't always be about what you want. And it can't always be about what your dog wants. Both of those things are out of balance. Your dog is a toddler. It has a toddler brain. It does not know about adulting, which is what is happening out here in this world. Okay. Let's just do a little bitty, little bit of cleanup here. Nope. We're in a little sniff there. Okay, so also maybe what we're doing a little, oh, this might be too loud, you guys. Is that too loud? Can you hear me okay, or is this just loud to me? I'm gonna dance until somebody answers me. Oh my God, now there's a plane. <laughs> okay, come on. Yes. This is very difficult for him, okay? Like he is not, I don't wanna say difficult, it's just this is interesting to him. Like look at this place. He wants to sniff everything, but there has to be some sort of boundary like, we can be here together. I want to take you to the Atlanta Aquarium, friend, but I'm not gonna be able to let you jump inside the tank, so let's calm it down a little. Okay, it's like that. I wanna do this thing with you, friend, but there are boundaries. We can't just do whatever we want. I can't, you can't, okay? Come on, sweetie. Okay, so we're just going to just walk back and forth just a little bit here. Get his attention back on me. Give him a couple little snacks so he knows what's going on. Look, he's getting, he's getting a little. Find it. Terrible at this game. So instead of like, yes, instead of calling his name and being like, Enzo, 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 ah, I just do something I know he will respond to. Find it. And now he's going to look back up at me, most likely in anticipation of more food. What is in your, oh my God. That's so gross, dude. What is that? Ugh. We'll just see how long it takes here. He can't pull on the lead, remember? He's got to stay with me. Okay, so this makes me feel like my dog is stressed out. He won't look at me. He's randomly sniffing some odd part of a bench. His tail's okay, but it's not up real high. And notice as he moves, his tail starts to go up higher. But when he stands there, it sags down and he looks kind of funny. And now he's getting into some smell again. He's not responding to my leash tension. So I'm gonna go in and move him out and I'm gonna try to re-engage him. He's still really struggling. He won't look at me. So what does that mean? That means that this is not a place where my dog can learn. I didn't know that. I, we've been here a billion times. I don't know if there's too many cars right now and it's too loud, but he won't even really look at me. That is a major red flag, you guys. If your dog is over sniffing the, a bench randomly like this,
or sniffing a wall or doing some weird, your dog is stressed out and is trying to tell you that they're not comfortable in that situation, okay? So let's move. Immediately my dog's tail goes up and he starts moving, he feels better. I'm gonna take you to the area where we have free time, okay? So our walks and our time together is composed of all of the components. There are times where I will put Enzo in a structured walk. If there is a lot of people out here, I may do that. There, if it's, you know, if there's a lot zooming past, I'll do that. There's leash drills out here. I backpedal past certain things like you just saw several times there. It was a singular trigger. So I'm going to use the least amount that I can in the most, the least amount of force and the most engagement, right? Okay, so this is our free spot. My dog has a release word, okay? So when I take his leash off and I say free, this is way advanced, you guys, but I'm out here with him. I'm not gonna not let him do stuff because we're talking, that's not fair to him. Okay, so what am I looking for? Let's pretend that he has his long lead line, okay? So that would be for you. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a dog who wants to observe but isn't frantic. If you have a pointer, if you have a spaniel, any type of gun dog, any type of upland gun dog, that's going to be different for you. He was pulling against my lead, so I came and turned into him. Come on. That's going to be different for you. Your dog's always going to look frantic. <laughs> that's just the way that they look. Okay, so here we go. We're going to bring him in here. I'm gonna, I don't like to mess with him a lot when I take his lead on and off. Enzo. Yes. Now he can't bolt until I tell him. Free. And now he knows. Remember, your dog has its long lead line on if you're ready for this. If you're not ready for this, you're not ready for this. And don't pretend to be. You know in your heart that you're not. You know what I'm saying? This is for, this is a, a broad topic and this is something you can go back and watch when you are ready for it. So why do I choose this spot? Well, look at this. There's only one way in and that little road up there, it goes back to the same spot. So I can see who's coming. Hey, that's too far. I don't, that's muddy and I'm not gonna, I don't let him go places I won't go in and get him. And it's kind of muddy over there. So I'll let him mess around a little bit. And then that way, if there's people on the trail, they don't really have access to us. Like, how would they, that's the only spot right there and then that road, but you know, he has to go over there to get there. And if he goes over there, that's fine. I'll just walk back up around and go and get him because there's no one here. I couldn't do that if there was a bunch of people here. So what I would have done is not said free right there and put my arm that way. I would have said free and told him he could go out here. Cause look, there's a tree line. That's the only open spot. Enzo don't really give a shit about people and their dogs. Like, he's like, that's old hat. We're looking for adventure. Come on, sweetie, we gotta go. He's like, F you. Oh, don't drink that water. Ooh, no. Uh. I'm gonna let him do it. Can't stop him. Enzo, quit. That's gross. No. Don't make me come in there. Stop drinking that water. That's disgusting. Oh, God. Dogs are so gross, you guys. Like, ew. Come on. Okay, so I've shown him now. I'm like, okay, we need to come out of there because we're leaving. Oh, my God. Please don't. Hey, come on. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He is the slowest dog, doesn't he? I've noticed a lot of you have slow dogs like mine. <laughs> okay, so he's not really listening. We're just gonna stop. Okay, he's got a little fly on him. We're gonna take a second. 
good boy. He looks nice and happy. He's got a nice tail. We got a nice situation going on, okay? We're gonna put our lead back on. Okay, and now we're gonna go. And I'm just gonna keep, keep a, I can't do my two-handed hold you guys. That's why that other part of that lead's dragging because I'm holding the tripod. But, oh, oh, no, we're not gonna do that. I'm not gonna pull, I'm not gonna pull, I'm not gonna pull. I don't like that. I'm gonna back, turn in, back pedal out. Okay, and now we're back. See how easy that is? I'm not gonna pull him. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, let's go back this way because that other way I think is just a little bit too loud. And see, nobody could have gotten to us. So that's a good choice. What is not a good choice? An open field with seven other people in it. You guys, my dog's the bomb. I didn't even do that. Okay, so we got somebody coming here. We're just gonna, just gonna do a nice little yeah, see that? Look at that. That's nice. And I can let my dog, I can let my dog get that close to people because I know my dog. My dog is not going to mess with that lady. That lady could have been biking full speed and gone right by my dog's face and he would have done nothing because we're from Oklahoma and people are outside a lot and the river trails was where we trained every day and you better be on your shit because it's serious it's serious it's a lot of people it's fast um and that's where he grew up so i get oh there's a little bird there's a little bird and oh we're having a little problem with that so we're just gonna beep boop 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 we're just gonna get out of here we're just gonna get out of here we're gonna calm him down okay we're not gonna pull we're not gonna sit and stare at the problem we're gonna make distance okay Slow our pace. Okay, he's, he's looking, it's okay, he's not pulling, so I'm gonna let it go. If I were worried, what would I do? Make myself more exciting, okay? And slow our pace. You guys should be expecting your dog to stop and check in with you. My dog and I do it slightly differently, okay? So don't, we're, we don't all have to be the same. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, now I'm gonna keep a short lead because we got kids and we're just gonna go right past this. We're gonna go beep, boop, boop. We're gonna stay in between the kids and my doggie. <laughs> and we're going to stop here. I'm going to turn in. And we're just going to go back, 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 because they're kind of stopped. Okay. And oh my gosh, we're working in this spot and we're stuck. What do we do? Come on. Oh, there's a little thing up there. We're going to get off and we're going to backpedal past. Using our distance, using our distance. We don't need to stay on the path and make a crappy situation for everyone, okay? Oh, we're gonna go back the other way. Come on, good boy. Yes, good boy. We're just gonna, what? Yeah, oh my gosh, he needs a snack, everybody. That was such a good job. Remember to mark your check-ins. Your dog looks at you every single time, okay? Every single time your dog looks up, that is a yes pay, yes pay, sorry. Yes pay, yes pay, okay? Now Enzo and I, again, I'm not gonna just constantly reward my five-year-old dog who knows what he's doing, okay? So it's gonna look a little different than what yours will look like, right? And we're not gonna compare. Okay, I don't, he's not coming, he's not coming with me. Here we go, and right into our back pedal. Boom, yes. It's my favorite skill, the turn into the back pedal. Okay, sorry, that was a little bit crooked. So, actually, let me turn it this way. And we'll, one more time, we'll go over our 
leash holds, okay? Why am I doing that? I gotta be able to see you guys. What in the hell? Jerry, God. Okay, hi babies. Hello babies. Okay, first mate, come on. Come on. Oh, no, take your time, it's fine. There we go. Drop my leash again. Hey, buddy. Yes. Okay. So remember, we got our leash hold. Anchor hand, steering hand. I don't like that. Anchor hand, working hand. Boom. Okay. You could, you maybe you are on the other side with your dog, and that's okay. I got my back pedal, boom, boom, boom. I got my turn in. Right? Yeah? And you're not, this isn't, when you turn into your dog, you guys, I people used to talk so much shit on the way I did that. They're like, oh, you didn't turn into him that hard. I'm like, okay, well, what would you suggest? Do you want to yank him around on his neck on the leash? Or do you want to get down and whisper in his ear? Do you want to do that? Sometimes it's better to move your dog out of something effectively with skill. For me to go like this to Enzo and use my quad to get him out of places is literally like an actual thing that he understands. All animals on four legs get that. Like, that's how they communicate stuff to each other. They don't talk, you know what I mean? So spatial pressure is not the end of the world. It's just when you're doing it inappropriately or at the wrong times, it can be additionally stimulating to your dog. I'm not going to overstimulate my dog by turning into him to get him out of some place because I know that by turning into him, I'm going to create distance, thereby lowering his arousal. So that little moment of the added stimulation of me turning in is worth it in that moment, right? Yes. So see, some people would have been like, he's fixating leash, pop him. I think he was just looking. Okay, here's a person coming, so we're going to take this opportunity to practice our eye contact. And so, we're going to food lure just a little bit here to get him out of the way, into the spot I want. Can you see me? Can I see myself? Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I'm tiny. And I'm just going to, yes, practice a little bit as this person passes here. I may even find it. I may even do that. Yes, and we're just gonna practice our engagement skill. Yes. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> yes, good. Yes. And see that, see how nice that was? Because my dog was ready for that. My dog is not really overstimulated by people, so people coupled with nature is a good way for me to practice. If my dog was overstimulated by people, I would not pick nature and people. Do you see what I'm saying? You, you're, that's, you're stacking too many things up on top of each other. This is the great wild world out here, okay? And then you go and put, <laughs> oh, I just snotted out my nose. Yes, that's gonna be a good one for the blooper reel. <laughs> I was laughing about my Becky comments yesterday. You, you know, like it, whatever it helps you to do, to think about it in a different way and like a real world kind of analogy, I think that would be helpful to you. Okay, so my dog, if he were gonna react over things, it's definitely gonna be the twirly mice. Okay, so I've got nature, I've got my dog's, what he thinks is up there. 
So this, yes. So this is good because we've had a lot of practice, but look how we still have to keep this up. It's just like going to the gym. I don't care that you sent your dog to a board and train when you got it. That is literally the same as me being like, well, I was a cheerleader in high school and I was hot then. And I don't even remotely look anything like I even go to the gym. It is consistency. Like if I just quit doing this with him, what do you think he's gonna do with squirrels? It's not gonna go well, you know? So it's not about getting to this place where your dog suddenly isn't itself anymore. Like, oh, you trained me so well, I just no longer have a prey drive. Then why do you have a dog? If you want an animal that doesn't have a prey drive, doesn't get excited, doesn't run fast, doesn't get what, don't get a dog, don't have a dog. Because that you're asking too much. You know what I'm saying? You're asking too much. So it's, oh, you found a cookie. So it's about consistency all the time. That's why I said it doesn't matter if you do a bad job half the time. Because some of the days are gonna be bad. Some, like, I mean, I don't really look at it like that. I think they're all just days. And some days you're just on and popping. But I mean, you're, but you're a badass every day if you're trying. That's how I feel about it. When I see people out training their dog, I'm like, you are in the upper 10%, friend. Yes. And look at what we're also doing here. Look at all of this calm behavior I'm rewarding. And so what that's reinforcing is my dog, this is how my dog behaves around me because this is what's most heavily reinforced around me. How many times have you seen me pet my dog during this entire thing? I occasionally do. But I can tell you that, come on, honey. The closer and closer and closer that I get to my friends, the less I need to hug them and give them affection because we are one. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love my friends. I hug them. But, like, I don't need to hug Chelsea to communicate something to her because I know that bitch and she knows me. You know, like, it's almost like the closer I get to Enzo, the less I use affection as a way of communicating with him because I've learned more elaborate more functional ways of communication than just petting my dog like it's almost insulting you know what I mean like it would be like if someone wanted to be your friend and all they ever wanted to do was hug you and talk about how cute you were like, that's, that shit's insulting. You know, he has a brain in there. He likes things. He has fun. He won't stop at the lake. He will swim for hours and out. He, he is a thing that has a brain. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you looking at? Like, this is interesting to him. And if I just never let him do it, that would be weird. It's okay right now, because look, he's got soft body. He's not all stiff. He's standing like a statue. But he's not stiff. Yeah, if he were stiff, when I just touched him like that, he would have gone, he would have jumped because he's full of energy. And then I take my little finger and I touch him and he would have gone, you would have visibly seen him do it, but he's just looking. So when I touch him, his energy's down. And so when I add extra energy, which is mine, which is a powerful energy, He's okay. That's why I keep my hands off my dog because I'm aware of the energy that I carry and it's a lot and it's not fair to him for me to be constantly placing that on him like that. It's not fair. Okay. So you got to know your dog. You got to know your dog, people. Some dogs, 
like affection and they benefit from affection because that's in their personality. It's kind of like how people have different love languages. Dogs have different, I think, um, love languages too. Enzo's love language is quality time. He just likes to spend time with me. He just likes to be out doing what I'm doing. There are dogs whose love language is to work and they really like to have a, a structured bond and you know, those high drive dogs. Um, there's dogs who really do like to sit on the couch with you. You know, there's dogs that wanna be with the family and that's their love language. They thrive in a family setting. Um, my dog is a quality time dog. Lucky me, lucky me. He's also a drooling dog. Okay, so here's what I want you guys, oh here, let me make a new video. Okay, so here's what I want. I'm not gonna be able to use any of this video because my face is cut off by your sweet little bubbles. <laughs> okay, so I want you guys to tighten up. Just keep tightening up what we've learned. Hi. <laughs> she said, get a girl. <laughs> and I said I wasn't gonna get anything on video and then she perfectly timed that and came by. She was jamming too. So I want you to tighten up everything that you've been doing, okay? I'm trying to cram all of this information into you guys because you're here. Like, I was like, oh, we're just gonna do this hand feeding thing and we're just gonna, and it's like, I just feel like people are in such desperate need of this information that is so simple that you're my captive audience and I'm just gonna give it to you. <laughs> um, but again, remember the whole point Every single thing that I do, I literally just taught you. You just saw everything. I mean, besides the advanced stuff, like my like I was gonna teach the touch command in this class, uh, you know, hello? I was gonna teach the touch command um, and I thought, well, is it better served for me to really, is it better served for me to really do that or is it like let's do triage and let's help people get like the real help that they need seems more effective to me so I really appreciate that and you guys kind of letting it go off task um because I think that you guys can get this I think that you can get it I know that you can get it um it's every single thing I just taught you and now we learn how to apply that why did Jerry choose that why did she get off the road that time instead of stay on the road? Why did she choose to scatter feed over backpedal? Why did she turn in? Why, why, why? Start asking, start watching and asking, okay? And that's how you, you begin to figure it out for yourself. I've gotten messages from so many of you privately already um, about how much this has changed everything for you. And I really have to say, you guys, it's really shocking to me um, that so many of you have been through training and that this, you were like, I've never heard of this. Like, I'm sorry that that happened to you. I'm sorry that that happened to you. And I'm glad that you're here now and that's what matters now, okay? So, we got a little bike coming. Hi! <laughs> She's jamming too. He's used to people doing that. Like people will try to call him over and be like, hey, like as they go past, he just. Okay, if you're, oh, if your dog was a stressed down dog, everything that we've just done, like, like that, for example, that would have been, let's create, oh, I see a bike coming. Let's create a bunch of distance and let's just scatter and hand feed from a distance while we sit. Does that make sense? Okay, if your dog is a stressed down dog, if your dog is a dog that freezes, right, or a person that's like, you tell them exciting news and they're like, what? Wait, what? That's a stress down. I'm a stress up. You tell me some exciting news. Fucking little bomb. Bum, 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 Okay? So there's a difference, right? So your dog is stressed down. I did a lot of, he's a stress up, so I did all this stress up stuff. If your dog's stressed down, let's make distance. 
okay? Lots of distance. Use an environmental blocker if you have to. That's okay. That's okay. There's no shame in that. You're helping your dog. You're helping your dog, okay? There's that you're helping your dog, okay? I'll punch someone in the face if they say that there's shame in that. Send them right to my inbox, okay? You're helping your dog, creating your distance, using your blockers if you need to, and you're letting your dog process. What does this sound like? What does this look like? What does this smell like as it passes? And every time you create that successful experience with your dog, you're teaching your dog that that thing is not dangerous to you. It's not dangerous. It exists in the world. It goes by. We do this thing over here, and you can focus on me. I've got it. And then slowly over time, as your dog processes that and can handle it, you inch a little closer over time, right? Until you're sitting off the side of the path and you're scattering. And then over time, your dog is able to maybe move a little bit past that trigger. But it takes time for the love of God. If somebody makes your dog do that in an in-person visit, they're suppressing your dog's behavior. They're suppressing your dog's behavior and making your dog do that. How is that helping you when you go home? Is that going to help you when you go home? We need to ask ourselves these questions. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help you to do that. It's not going to help you to take your dog to some strange place, have some strange trainer that it doesn't know, do a whole bunch of techniques to it. That's weird. Would you do that to your kid? Would you, would you do that? Would you do that or would you parent your child yourself and figure it out? That's what we're doing here and I'm so proud of you because look at you, you're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. I love you, babies. Okay, work on your back pedaling. Work on your leash holds. Remember, you go back to that spot where I was doing those leash holds and you watch that over and over and over and over and over. And you watch that anchor hand, working hand, boom, 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 boom. Oh, I just hit my dog. Good job. And a bike went by really fast. Boom, boom. And you were such a good boy. You know, all the things. Drop it, back pedal. Choke up on it, okay? You're going to practice those things. You're going to practice them in a familiar area, not a lot of stimuli, just like I did here today, okay? Keeping it simple. We're having a good time. If you do a bad job, that's okay. I do a bad job all the time. I did a bad job today on this video. <laughs> I marked him properly. I, you know, all the things. It doesn't matter. I told you how to do it right. And even if I did it perfectly, guess what, bitches? You're still going to mess up. And that's okay. We're out here just doing a bad job together because you know what? Bad jobs get you good jobs. You do bad jobs cons consistently enough and you will learn. How do you think that the rest of us learned this? Did you think I just came out of the womb like this? Like I was just like, boom, with my leash skills. I don't know if you've seen Coco's arms, but that's how she learned. <laughs> so it's okay. You guys are doing great. I, oh, they're coming back. Okay, let's do a little for the stress down dogs. Let's do a little bit for the stress down dogs. Come here, sweetie. Come on. Okay, we're going to just engage. We're going to, oh, we got snacks. We're going to find it. We're going to find it. I'm going to just choke up on the lead here because the mom looks just a little bit nervous of Enzo. So we're just going to have some respect for her. Hi. Good morning. Going to keep that nose down. Keep that nose down. Good, how are you? Good. Okay, I've just got Enzo's nose down. And they're passed. So as soon as he's done, we're going to come back out here. Hey, buddy. Yes. Successful, okay? A lot of things are happening for you guys because you, A, didn't know any of this shit. <laughs> so there's that. But... It's because you're taking too long to decide. Oh my God, there's a person. Oh my God, my dog doesn't like people. Oh my God, there's a bike. My dog, it, no, stop, stop. There's a bike. I'm gonna fucking backpedal past this shit and it's gonna be glorious and glitter bombs are gonna go off. Or for the men, I don't know. Maybe a Hellcat's gonna pull up and I don't know. Something, something cool, something manly. You know, I don't know. But like, no. I'm going to turn and I'm going to backpedal and we're going to get past this. 
and that's going to be the end of it. Oh, my dog won't get out of that smell. Oh, my dog is staring at it. No, I know exactly what to do. I'm going to snake up on that, that not, not tight lead. I'm going to snake up on that loose lead. Boom, turning my dog back pedal out of here. Get on out. Get on out. I'm telling you all the secrets. And how many techniques have I told you? What was that, two? Two? There's some people coming. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? My dog can walk like this. Maybe your dog can't. Maybe your dog, maybe your dog needs a little bit of this. Maybe your dog needs a little side shuffle. Okay? Okay? Just like that. Boom. We're on our way. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And if it was, if it was, I could have got off the path. Or you know what I also could have done? I could have said to them, could you guys hold up just a second and stay right there? I'm going to actually go the other way with my dog. I'm struggling a little bit right now. If you just give me two seconds, they're going to do it. What asshole's going to keep walking? I mean, I, what, where are you, Brooklyn? Don't do it there. You know, t t stand up for yourself. Stand up for your dog. See, you would stand up for your kids, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Stand up for your dog. Don't, if you need a second, then say that you need a second. There is nothing wrong with that. I need it. Hey, can you, like that lady right there. If I didn't have my dog, I would have stopped her dead in her tracks. Grab your kids, please. I need to move. Thank you so much. I just want to keep everybody safe. I appreciate you. You guys have a great day. Your kids are so cute. Thank you. And you move along. Okay? You don't need to cuss anybody out. You don't need to be rude. You don't need to feel bad about it. You are carrying a leash with a bull on the end of it. And that bull has teeth. Oh, look at this. Oh, we're just going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Boom. Look at that. He made space for himself. I liked that. Inside. Good boy. I don't like him to be clotheslined. Oh, what do we got going on here? He's got to make a potty. Okay, back up on here. I don't want him abusing it, okay? If you guys weren't here, I would not be talking. We would just be, yeah, it would just be silent. Except for, you know, the what I'm doing in terms of training. See how he's self-correcting? He gets a little ahead of me and I don't even have to say anything. He just wants to walk faster. I don't need to be like, no, keep the same gait as me at the same speed. No, ha, ha, ha. Like, <laughs> so Oh, I laughed so hard at that reel I made yesterday where I was like, I can't believe like anybody that I ever, so sorry. Boom, backpedaling. Did you just see that? Did you just see that execution? You can do it too. I bet you're going to be awesome at it. Or, or, boom, side shuffling immediately just got past that bike that went past us that my dog doesn't want to not choose violence against okay but also as I side shuffle I must consider oh no we're not doing that now come on come on now oh oh I don't like this behavior we're gonna just boop right out of that and we're just gonna backpedal out of that yeah okay I don't know what I was going to say. I forgot. <laughs> okay. And see, that's a nice walk. My dog's sniffing. My dog's got to have some free time. Long lead. Long lead line for you guys. Okay. My dog has done some, tr some scatter feeding. My dog has done some hand feeding. My dog has done some leash drills. I just did some <clears throat> cardio. May have filmed some content. I don't know. I did. I did. You know, we got some sun. I can go back and I can go and work from home now knowing that my dog is totally satisfied until this evening. And when he plays stays, it's most likely out of choice because he's tired, okay? Not because I'm trying to manage a dog whose needs I have not met. My dog has a lot of needs. I selected a breed that has a lot of needs, 
So I'm going to meet those needs and that's the way that it's going to be. That's not negotiable. It's really nice. It's like 76, I think. Just anybody that was worried about the pavement. Okay, so we got our little family here, okay? And if we needed to go past our little family and we were having a hard time, oh, oh, we're gonna, yeah, we're just gonna get out of that. I'm gonna get right out of that just gently, okay? And here's our little family. And if they were out, what would we do? I, I'm gonna say side shuffle, okay? Because I'm blocking with my body. Look at that happy dog. Yes, like those check-ins. Good boy, he likes the side shuffle. So we're gonna keep doing it. He likes it, nice high tail. He knows where we're going, back to the truck. That's good. Good boy. And we're just gonna slow it down. Make sure that before we get back in our truck that I've got a nice worn out dog who looks happy. And notice when he pants, it's different than the stress pant, right? This is just really drooly. His, the corners of his mouth aren't pulled back real far in a weird way. He doesn't look anxious. He's got, see how his skin jumped when I touched him? So he's got a little extra energy on him right now. Yeah, his tail's a little fast. Okay, so all this stuff says, I don't know, he seems a little bit excited. Maybe we should wait just a second so I can set myself up for success. Okay, like that. So I'm gonna leave my dog, but your dog's gonna be on the long lead line or their leash still, okay? And then I'm gonna get all my stuff ready, blah, 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 pretend that's happening, and then I'm gonna get my dog and we're gonna go. And that's it, and you've now had a complete entire field trip training experience that you can refer to. We picked out our spot. We talked about how to start. We talked about why we chose that spot. We talked about the different benefits of this spot, okay? What could we come across that we might need to take into account? What methods am I going to use that I know going into this walk, I already have them? Okay, if a person comes by, my dog does pretty good with that. It doesn't seem to be an issue. I'm going to step off. I'm going to hand feed. Okay, got it. Okay, a bike comes by. Okay, my dog, that's fast. It's moving fast. Okay you know what, I think that I am gonna go ahead and actually side shuffle when I see the bike getting closer. Okay, I'm just gonna do that, side shuffling. Okay, okay, there's another dog coming. I need to get off the trail and I need to back pedal. I know that I need to, I have these things. What are the plays? Tell me what the plays are. Remember the plays, execute on the plays. And then you get better at the plays, right? You get better and better. Film yourself, watch yourself back see where you made those mistakes, okay? I have learned so much about the stuff I do and don't do just by watching myself. And then when you watch other people, which is so helpful in the group, you can see where some of their, you know, little learning discoveries and um, successes are. So I hope that that was helpful. I know that some of this stuff feels a little bit advanced, but remember, remember, I already taught you all this stuff. I already taught you. So now it's just applying it and how hard do you want to work to reach what your expectations are or do you need to maybe have more realistic expectations so that you can achieve goals and make some headway. Sometimes we just need to simplify our goals a little bit and make sure that we can actually achieve goals in small increments or we're not going to get to the big goal, right? So we're not going to get to the off-leash thing. We're not going to get to the dog that's like this unless we manage our expectations and we're consistent with our training, okay? I'll drop your homework. Way. Just showing you, you know, the exact same stuff that I taught you guys how to do in a different situation. So we never go past the end of our road and then we just practice 
the cars going past and him just re-engaging with me. And then he always sniffs over here and stuff. So yet another practical application. Again, I do not recommend that you do this with your dog right now. That would be delusional and insane. Um, <laughs> Good boy. Did you guys see his ears? I know I, I'm not going to talk about it in this boot camp, but good boys. Anyway, um, but as you get like to higher levels of stuff, yes, good boy. You can see how I'm just using the same exact thing. I, you could do this with a long lead line. Yes, good boy. You could do this with a long lead line with your dog and just maybe not go so close to the end of the, to the end of the road. Like if you were practicing this scenario, but you got to remember, like, this is my road. We've been doing this every single day, sometimes multiple times a day for an entire year. And Enzo already had four year, three and a half years of training So this is like an example of if you were to do this a lot, you could expect similar results if you put this much practice into what you were doing. Yes, good boy. Okay, let's go. Oh, he's not done. So if, if I, oh no, he's coming now. I was about to say, if I see him struggling, I'm just gonna get my leash. You know what I'm saying? Or if he like goes somewhere, I don't want him to go or something like that. But see how he like, hey, how he doesn't really care about this stuff. He's like interested and he wants to go in there and see if there's rabbits, you know, which is really cool and fun for him. This is just a little bonus content for you. So look, look what he's doing. So another fun thing to know, that was a little grasshopper and that was adorable. Another fun thing to know is if there was an animal, it is most likely not going to run out into the road. It's most likely going to go deeper into brush. So I'm not necessarily concerned that, oh, there's a hole there. I'm not necessarily, come here, come on, come out of there. I'm not necessarily concerned he's going to, like, run out into the road. Hi! <laughs> but I saw my neighbor coming, so. Okay, come on out here, sweetie. Okay, you should be able to grab your dog gently by its collar. That should be a thing you could do. You should do be able to do with your dog, right? That's why they have it on there. If your dog freaks out and stuff like that, you got to work on that, okay? I don't do it a lot, but I will do it. That's a good boy. Okay, say goodnight, everybody. It's our last... <laughs> Wait, is it our last day tomorrow? I'm not going to pay attention and you guys are going to have me like four extra days. That'll be fun. Just kidding. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't end that for you. <laughs> I didn't end that for you. So whenever I do that, I just come back. We get ourselves back together. I've got my little snacky, snacky baggy. All my stuff. I'm prepared. Look at me. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I got my little my little fun thing too and that's it and then we're just gonna uh, I'm not gonna try to do this all at the same time but we're just gonna go and then I just always ride on one side and teach him to ride not in the middle of the road there's my neighbors hi neighbors oh yes good boy and see how Enzo's learned that car goes by thing goes by I look at mom, I get snack, and it just becomes this automatic thing. So we practice these things until they become automatic. And this is like super level of how you do this repetitiously and consistently, and you can expect different results that 
are um, more like this. What happens is people will expect this result when they don't do any of the things that I'm doing here. I'm not doing anything hard. I taught it to you guys. I'm just doing it really disciplined. Oh, we're not going to be doing that. Yep, we're not going to do that. Thank you. Okay, good job. I'm not going to go back in the field. All right, I'll see you in the morning time, and I'm going to go to a busier area that I like to go with Enzo. And remember, this is me showing you things that are possible through the techniques that I've taught you and how you can how you can add like add create like raise the criteria how you can all those kinds of things that trainers are like that takes time and you gotta we know that okay we're not we're not doing this stuff on day five that no because we have common sense here we're not doing that I'm trying to paint you a picture okay I'm giving you the skills I'm painting you the picture and then you're gonna decide if you like that picture and you want to reach for that picture, okay? Or if you want to stop somewhere along the way. Maybe you want to get off the elevator on the fourth floor. Maybe you don't want to ride it up to the penthouse. Where the bad bitches be, you know? Okay, anyway. Highway to the danger zone. I just noticed this. Okay, one more thing. Um... Because I'm going to do it, so I might as well. I, I mean, I'm going to naturally do it in my life. He already knows. <laughs> After we go on our bike ride, we always do um, structured play because here's a fun fact. Even though, Can you guys hear me? Even though um, we just did this, like, bike ride or whatever, and he exercised, he got all this enrichment. Guess what he didn't get? He didn't get any structured play, Okay. He didn't get to play with me. This is like part of, it would be like if I didn't get to five, six, seven, and eight and a drop that funky beat. You know, it's like such a big part of who I am is to dance and sing and do things. And a big part of who an American bully is, is to play tug. So we have kind of like a system in the beginning. He really has a lot of bite. <laughs> And he wants to hold on and he doesn't want to let go. Sometimes he doesn't want to bring it back to me and he wants to play keep away. I really don't care as long as there's some structure to it and he'll listen to me. So I'm going to give him a command to let go and I'm going to give him a command to, to bite it again. But when I give the command to let go, and this is bonus content, you guys, I don't, okay, this is just bonus content. I have to stop pulling because I'm engaging with him. So I can't say the word and then keep pulling, right? So I'm going to say out. Yes. And look. Now look what I got. Come up here a little bit closer. Yes. I have a dog. That's so hard to throw. I have a dog who will look at me. He will engage with me and give me eye contact with his toy. How cool is that? Same thing that we're, that we're learning, right? And he brings it back to me. That's real good. We've been practicing a lot lately. He's not a retriever, you know. <laughs> and sometimes I pull really hard and then sometimes I let him win. can see me come a little closer out uh -uh. yes so sometimes I'll hold it and give him the word sometimes I'll throw it and make him wait and give him the word but if I try to like do that right now and I haven't worked him through some of this like arousal he won't complete the commands and they'll just be errors of impulse everywhere. Okay, and that would, that's, that's my fault. So he's looking pretty calm, really. Oh, sir, my God. So I'm gonna look for eye contact and then I'm gonna give him the command to get it. Strike, yes. Ha, you missed it. <laughs> I used to say bite. 
But then I was watching this one video and Denise Finzi, like her dog, I swear to God, was a football field away. And she like said strike at but a whisper. And her freaking dog, it was the coolest thing ever. Like, I don't even know how to explain what, what it was. I was like, I got to have a dog that does that. And now I do because we practiced. It doesn't look as good as when she does it, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I got it from him. A lot of you guys that have bullies and pit bulls and things like that, your dog needs to see this in you. They need to see you get down and play with them and engage with them in their way, not your way. Not, I just got home from work and I'm tired and I just want to Netflix and chill. You should have got a cat. What were you thinking? That's okay, you can change. Okay, so he's pretty excited, so I don't know if he's gonna... So I'm gonna try to toss it a little bit away, but if I just launch it and throw it, he's not gonna be able to hold that. Leave it. Strike. Go boy! So I tossed it and I waited for that eye contact and I made him hold it. And then he gets to get it. And he loves games like that. And so do I. <laughs> That's why I like these dogs so much because they fit my personality so well. And I think I fit theirs. I mean, he seems pretty happy, you know. So think what my, my life with him, think of how different it would be if I couldn't do this with him. Think of how different it would be if I wasn't strong enough to handle this. Most women, and let's just be, be real, you guys, most women aren't, that's why the men always play with the dogs in the relationships because they'll, whoa, I did it again. I'm so strong. Because they'll get down and play with the dogs and wrestle and do things. And, you know, this is stereotypes come from somewhere, right? So for me, as a really petite woman, it's important for me to somehow be able to, like, offset that physical strength with my own physical, th with my own physical strength, but also an understanding of leverage and all those kinds of things. So he was like, <laughs> waiting for the ball, and I wasn't paying attention to him. And he went, good boy, because he knows I'm going to give you shit when you act like that. That's crazy. And now he's just an excited, happy dog. But before, he looked panicked. I'm not going to throw it when you're panicked, because I'm teaching you you can act panicked and then get the ball. That's not fun, and I don't like that game. It's supposed to be fun. Super cash. I'll not have that. Good boy. Hmm. Can't see him. Hmm. Good boy. And the more I do this with him, the more I notice that he like readily brings it back to me instead of trying to run and play keep away. I don't think that's a better view. Okay, one more time. And this is, remember, this is after. This is after we've exercised and he still has all this in the tank. Out. Yes. Oh, bad bitches to the left. Yes.
Okay. It's another windy day. Mike, check me. No, that's not right. Yep. There he is. There he is. Okay, so I just set all my stuff up. And the reason I'm showing you what I'm doing now is because I'm letting Enzo sniff and mark every single tree here. Why am I doing that? Well, because once a dog marks a spot, it's like, boo, been here. Okay. There's like, um, I think, 11, a, like a, a level of comfort, potentially, that comes with that. A place that I have staked my flag and previously explored. It's a little less scary to me. I think that that is a simple way of explaining it. That's the way that I understand it. Yeah, let's keep it simple like that. Okay, so I have my places and I come back here repeatedly. It's not, uh, no, and we're not going to play yet because we're not going to do that right now. So he's super comfortable here. So you see how you just picked up a stick and he's starting to want to play. That's awesome. Like Enzo will play in the middle of downtown. Like he's just like, let's do it. I mean, what are we doing? We're trying to party. We're trying to party. Um, but because he's always pretty comfortable, if he won't play, um, I got a problem. And I don't mean like necessarily a problem. It's just, I can tell what his level of comfort is. So, okay. Sweetie, come, come in here and get a snack. Oh, that was where he pooped. <laughs> I didn't clean it up very good. Touch. Good boy. I don't have my stuff on yet, but good boy. Okay, so he's real confident in this area. There's lots of smells because it's, you know, again, Kansas wind. So there's kind of a lot going on. I'm going to get this treat bag, you guys. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. It's going to be fine. I'm not going to give up. And then I'm going to show you around here just a second. So just hang with me for just a second, guys. I'm sorry. I wanted to just show you why I let him sniff, what he was doing. And now that time is over and he needs to come back. Uh-oh. We're gonna have, we're gonna, we're gonna, our leash isn't gonna match. I don't like that. I like when my leash matches. <laughs> That's okay though. So I have a new order of these coming in. Um, I did it on purpose. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the um, sidekick, which is the Canine Lifeline Transitional Slip Lead. So this is, notice it's just the slip lead. It's just like the red one I have, right? But it's got this like extra thing on it. What is that? Well, that is so you can turn it into a transitional head harness and you don't have to use like a gentle leader. And these are way better. Okay, so we're gonna pretend just for a second that this black thing isn't on here. Okay, this is just a totally separate thing. So you do this and your dog's nose goes through here and then their head goes through here. So it's like this, yeah. And then where it fastens is on the back. Yeah? Like a horse more. Instead of down here. Like, what is that? What is that? I Like, a, their gentle leaders are okay. And if people have success with them, like, that's cool. But if I were to pick, I would much rather, and I know Coco uses these too. Okay? Because now you have everything that you need in one tool. And if you get into a situation, if you get into a situation... He's not even looking at that kid that just rode by. Oh, there's a dog up there. Good boy. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, you little sweetie. Look, look. It's a little mini Aussie. Look at that. Look at what that engagement was. Did you see that? Did you see that? That's repetition. He's like, mm, I see a dog snack. Good boy. Because we've done that 5,000 times. Isn't that nice? Okay, so our little head, our little nose goes through here, our head goes through here. This is just for people that would care that have one. 
and then this guy is what you attach to their flat collar. It's just a safety, a safety thing, okay? So if they back out or something like that, they paw this off, this is still physically attached to the dog. If you do not want to use that, you can just clip it right up there just like that. Yeah, and then it just dangles down, no big deal, okay? Now, are you just, from what we've learned, are you just gonna put this on your dog? Were you just gonna slap this on your dog's face? You gonna slap this on your dog's face and see what happens? Is that, no, we're not gonna do that. Because that's not gonna make your dog like it very much when you bring it out. So if you are at a place where you feel like this would be useful to you, like all this stuff I'm teaching, guys, if you live in a city where you're literally going out your front door and there's all this stimuli, this is an excellent tool for that but it doesn't mean that you get to ignore the other stuff. The other stuff is actually even more important for you, okay? It's more important that your dog engages with you if you are in a high stimulus kind of living situation, okay? So this tool gives you kind of all that stuff in one tool. And for me personally, I would much rather see people using this because it's much more natural. I don't wanna say natural because I guess tools aren't natural, but it's a much more um, sensible use of pressure than the um, more intense stimulation of a prong collar. A prong collar is incredibly stimulating. That is my not only personal opinion, that is many of my colleagues' belief and our anecdotal evidence as we grow as trainers. It doesn't mean that there's not uses for that tool in some situations or they don't work for some dogs. I prefer to use this tool. That's why I use it. So come as you are, you know, I just wanna make sure we're using our tools properly and that we understand even why we're doing that. And am I using a tool because I'm not doing the other thing and I'm relying on this tool instead of I mean, if you're doing that, then you're going to be on training wheels forever while everyone passes you on 10 speeds. And you're going to be wondering, well, gee, I just, well, not my dog. So your dog, your dog is the only dog on the face of the planet that cannot be trained with this method. Is that what you're telling me? Have you done all of these things that I've been doing? Then you can't say that. Then you can't say that. There are people that will come to me. This is a side note, you guys. There are people that will come to me and their dogs are on prongs and e-collars and listen to this some of you might be here and this is not to shame you it's to just talk about this stuff and, and be real about it their dogs are on prongs and e-collars and they have no fucking clue what i'm talking about when i say engagement and hand feeding they don't even know what i'm talking about and they've been to a trainer they're like well the trainer's the one that put them on it and i'm like do you know what i'm talking about when i say to hand feed your dog and to cultivate focus no does your dog have a place to stay no does your dog walk well on a loose lead and is properly crate trained? No. Then why are you using those tools? Your dog's just not trained. It doesn't need tools. It's not trained. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, the, it's the misuse and overuse that I want to just make sure that we're not doing because we're not going to do it on my watch. You, somewhere else, okay. But here, no. Because it's not about the greater, it, it, it's about each individual person and their relationship with their dog. And I'm not going to go tell you to use a tool instead of learning the fundamentals. That's dumb. Why would I do that? That's not going to hurt you. That's not going to help you. Like, oh, let's just skip this malarkey about engagement and start popping shit. Like, what? Oh, my God. I used to do that. I used to do that. I used to do that. That's why I'm talking about it. Because people don't talk about it. I've literally seen, like, one trainer ever talk about it not sad it's just people are afraid of like what people are going to say if they admit they made mistakes as a trainer and I'm like <laughs> oh god I love talking about my mistakes it's so fun okay well I live in Kansas so I'm just going to leave my bag there nobody's going to steal it it's a scooby-doo bag and Enzo we're not ready to do that yet he's excited he loves going up to the little trail okay so I'm going to turn this off and then I'm going to walk over there and show you a couple things or actually, let's not, let's not. If I'm afraid that he's not gonna come to me, 
instead of just continuing to yell his name, like he's starting to get close to the trail now. Hey, buddy. I'm gonna engage. Now he's looking. Touch! Yes, good boy! All right! Good boy! Okay, now come back here just a little bit. There's no point in standing and yelling at your dog. If you're doing that, I want you to stop yourself right in the moment and say, I am being lazy. I'm being lazy and I'm basically yelling Portuguese at somebody that speaks French and expecting them to come to me when they have no idea because I haven't put the reps in. I haven't put the reps in. My dog shouldn't even be off leash. Shouldn't even be off leash. And if your dog is on a long lead line, as it should be, and you see that situation and you think that your dog is not engaged with you and will not come back, don't waste your time because now you've just practiced something unsuccessful. That, don't do that to yourself. Don't. Step in a little bit closer and take your shot. You can't make it from there. You need to practice closer. So I walk closer to my dog. I make sure I have a successful rep and I engage him. I know I'm now, my percentages of success are rising, right? He's not sniffing the base of a tree, he's looking at me. And then I'm like, hey man, you wanna have a snack? You know? And then as he's like, I do wanna have a snack. And then he comes towards me, I'm like, yeah, you wanna have a snack? Oh, you're awesome. And then, oh, see? And, and he, I was like, you're awesome. And he just looked at me because he just assumed I was talking about him because he is. You know, so it's, a, it's not always just about the, say the recall, mark the word and do the thing and be, well, your timing was off. Da, 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 da. Like, just, like be in the moment with your dog. You don't need to do it perfectly. You don't need to do it perfectly. Like what, are you, are you an Amandior ring? You, what are you competing, competing in French ring? Do you need to have a perfect execution every single time? Is somebody judging you? Are there judges over there? No, no. It doesn't need to be a 10.0 off the vault every time. Stop. <laughs> like, it needs to be, look, look what I just did. I didn't have to be like, okay, guys, I'm going to call him. He's going to do perfect recall. That's dumb. You know, that we're not doing that. Now, if I had some kind of sport dog and we were looking for that, that would be what we were doing, but we're not. We're just looking to make sure that our dog knows. You need to be with me. You need to pay attention to me. Let's be chill, let's be calm, let's vibe out. Let's catch a vibe. This is the vibe of the day. You know, sometimes it's my vibe, sometimes it's yours. Okay, okay. It's not about being perfect. Stop doing that shit. I hate it when dog trainers do that. Nobody gives a shit. Okay, look at this, look at this excellence. You know what this is? Boom, it's in your town. It's a soccer field and it's empty, okay? So look at all this, look at this, look at this. I brought the long lead line today. Bonus content, bonus content today. Yeah, I brought it. So you can practice long lead line work out here before you even do like any type of structured walk or anything. You could do both. You don't have to be like, oh, how many walks should I do structured? And how many should I do decompression? And how many should, are you analyzing your relationship with your friends that way? Are you analyzing how many times you and Rebecca go to Barnes and Noble versus the amount of times that you bump it at the club? Are you analyzing the amount of times that she talked more in the conversation than you did? Are you over analyzing if you guys go to Dillard's more than you go to Target? That's weird. Like, no, you're just being together. And when you're together, you are building your relationship. Meaning sometimes Rebecca is having a fucking meltdown and she needs you and you need to be more attentive, more affectionate. There's people walking up there now and he's just hanging out. You need to be, maybe uh, have, have, do something different. Take her out, whatever, whatever, whatever. Sometimes she's like, I just started a new job. Boom, everything's great, I love it. And you guys are like, let's go to the lake and float. Let's just vibe, let's just vibe. But never in all that time do you neglect her because she's different needs at different times. And that is how dogs are. They're not lawn and house ornaments. They're not sidekicks to be, they have their own kind of thing going on. And so as a friend, you gotta make sure that your friend is, do, you know, you don't always get to choose the radio station when you're with your friend, unless she has terrible taste in music. And then you do until you can help her learn new and fresh songs. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, nope, we're not going to listen to Polka again because it seems like you keep doing that and oh, I don't really like it. And then you would introduce her to new songs and then you would show her new stuff. It's like it's exactly like having a friend. 
I don't understand why it's so complicated to people. Find it. Oh, look. Now we're doing enrichment stuff. Now we're doing nose work all in the same training session. It's not a big deal. It's just super casual. Keep it casual. Keep it simple. It's fun. It's fun. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun. When you treat Scatter, you should be like, oh, I'm such an excellent dog handler. Look at me doing all of the things of excellence. Do you see other people treat scattering? Well, do you, are you walking down the street? you see other people doing what you're doing? No. No, you do not. Because you're excellent. Look at him. Oh, he's so happy. Now, is this boring for me? Mm, yeah, sometimes. But it's not boring for him, and it's not always about me. It's not always about me. Sometimes my dog needs to put his nose down in the dirt and sniff around for snacks. Sometimes he needs to pee on the base of trees. Sometimes he needs to run really fast and feel the wind. And he really likes to run through tall grass and like have it br He just needs that stuff. And some days he needs to swim. So, you know, you, it's about knowing your dog, not making your dog do what you want it to do all the time. Oh my God, you're so sweet. Love you. You're my best friend. Yes. See, that's a little harder. When the closer they get to your face, it's harder for them to really look at you because that energy is so, right? Ball of energy, ball of energy. He's trying. He's looking like right here. And also the sun's right there. So that could be something that you could do with your dog that could build your relationship. You could work on hand feeding closer, having them be a little more comfortable with you being closer. What? Sir, we're not doing that right now. He just picked it. He wants to play. Okay, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to go walk over to the other part. <laughs> this is dog training. Did everyone know? If you're doing this with your dog, this is dog training. You're a dog trainer. You're training your dog. Okay? I don't, I'm so, I, I don't want to come and train your dog. I'm sorry. I don't have an interest in that. I want you to train your dog. I want to help you do it. I don't know your dog. I don't live with him. I don't know. He might, I might not even really like him. He might not like me. You know, I don't live with him. That's not my dog. That is, you know, like you're doing it. If this is what you're doing and you're out here doing it like me, how are you different from me? How are you, how is your dog different from Enzo? We're just at different places, remember? But we all love basketball. And oh, um, so you don't play like Michael Jordan. You shouldn't play basketball. You, you don't understand the rules as much as an NBA ref. You shouldn't play. Is that what we're going to do? Is that because it, is it, we're not as good as a professional, so we just shouldn't do it? We just shouldn't be. We, we shouldn't even like basketball. Oh, like, oh, God. You know, I, I want to drive. I want to drive, but I'm not Richard Petty, so I guess I just won't drive. Does it matter that I have places to go? I don't know. I can't do it perfectly, so I probably shouldn't. Stop doing that. It's supposed to be fun. If you're training your dog, you're a dog trainer, and you're doing a great job, and I love you. Okay. <laughs> Remember the other day, we were right there. When I came, and they were having, like, that thing here, and there was the pond. We were right under those trees there. We could go back there if we, if we needed to. And now, there's, like, not really anybody here. So I can tell that probably around this time that there's not people here and that I know I have shade and access to water and then I have this entire beautiful path. This is a town of maybe 8,000 people in a small town in Kansas. So please do not tell me that things like this don't exist where you are. I got my, I put my dog in the car and I drove five minutes to this place. It is better for me to make that investment in my relationship with my dog than to continuously just keep taking him on the same place on my road because it's not fulfilling to him. This is a dog that's had this massively fulfilling kind of adventure life. And if I don't provide that for him, then I'm really kind of doing a disservice to his growth. So I have to make sure that we come to these places that I know that he likes and that he's used to 
especially if they have water. That's a, that's a big deal to him. So here we got another place. Look at all this space that's off the path. Christina said something in the New England group. She was like, most of dog training, you guys, is really just no, oops, sorry, really just knowing your dog and, and good handler decisions. And it is, that's why I always tell you guys, I'm really not that great of a dog trainer. I just am an incredible decision maker. You know, I just know my dog and I know always, I always know the answer. I've never not known the answer, ever, not one time. I, I can't think of a time where I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. You know, I may have picked the thing I didn't necessarily want to do, <coughs> but I've never had an altercation and I'm around, I mean, it doesn't matter. You guys know how much I'm around dogs. It's always just because I'm paying, A, I don't go places where I know weird shit's going to happen. And some of you I know can't help that sometimes. But it's also just because I know what my dog will and won't do. And so that helps me eliminate things that might happen. And it helps me choose the right decision. For example, my dog is not going to be the dog that runs over to a person. If you don't know him and you call him to you, he will not come to you. So if I'm in a situation where I have to choose one thing over the other and I know my dog is not going to run to the person, I'll drop the leash and go grab my kid, you know, or I'll, whatever this, this scenario is, I'll just drop the leash because I know for a fact, I know 100% of the time my dog has never once done that because he doesn't give a shit about other people. I mean, he's cool. He's a friendly dog, but like he's rolling with the best. You know what I'm saying? Like he didn't give a fuck about you. Like, what do you have? You know, oh, you're going to pet him like that. He doesn't care because we're whatever we're about to go do. He already knows he's going to get to do it with me and it's probably going to be cool. You know, so it's like for to him, it doesn't, he doesn't care about that stuff. But if there's another dog running off leash, now we got a problem because that's high value. He loves other dogs. He wants to play with them. He wants to run free in the fields and he wants to chase them. He wants to run, you know, defensive plays as they try to catch balls and stuff. He likes other dogs. So I know that about my dog and I will not test it. I will not. If I see another dog running off lead and it is in a scenario that is not uh, controllable or uh, uh, that I can't maintain with distance. Okay, so if a dog's way over there, that's, it's not gonna matter. I mean, even if that was just grass, it's not gonna matter. But if there's an off-leash dog running right here and he's right here off-leash, he cannot handle that. He, I mean, you drop a disco ball and you play some Diana Ross. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think that I'm just going to, I'm just, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to five, six, seven, eight that shit. And I'm, we're, it's, it's happening. Okay. So I know that about myself. I know that about my dog. So I help him in those situations and I'm a good handler. You know, I help him in those situations and boom, the leash is on with me. Like, I will freaking wrangle shit like you've never seen in your life. And it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And then we'll just leave. We'll just leave. We'll just go over there. You know, instead of this thing where we have to, where we have to get our dog to do these things, for what? For what? <laughs> in what? What? What is it? People are like, oh, I want, I want my dog to be, to blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Because if you did, your dog would be doing that. No, you don't. Because you're not even practicing anything. Like, to get your dog to be able to do that, you're going to have to do this every day for five years. No, you don't. You know, so let's set, set proper expectation but then also know what it's gonna take to get to that expectation. For me, if I set an expectation that Enzo needs to not ever run after, you know, dogs or whatever, if he's off leash or whatever, <laughs> the amount of work that goes into that, I'm not doing that. 
I'm not doing that just so I don't have to put a leash on my dog. It's not worth it to me. It may be worth it to you, and that's okay. And if it is, I suggest you get to work, baby, because it's going to be rough. You know, like you can do it. People do it. I see it. But people want it, and they don't want to do the work, so they click an e-collar on their dog and train it. To each his own, but I don't cut corners here. Like, I'm not playing checkers. I'm playing chess. So if you want to play checkers, I'm not the one. Sweetie! Oh my god. See, look, nobody is out here. What is going to happen? What's going to happen? What's he going to run off over there? No, there's nothing over there. Is he going to... What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Is that he's going to stop and sniff something too long. And I'm going to have to go up here because I said... I said, sweetie, you get over here now. Come on. That's a good boy. Touch. Yes. That was great. Good job. Worst thing. Worst thing that's going to happen. What else could happen? He could see an animal. Where are they going to run? Into a tree. Was he going to climb a tree? <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. Oh, he went over there. Oh, my God. He's not listening. No, he's just walking around because I'm talking to a freaking tripod. And he's making himself busy. And he's just looking. You know? He's just hanging out. And that's fine. That's fine. Like, we're, we're spending time together. Now, if I wanted to go, which is what we're going to do now. Okay, come here. Oh, he saw the lead. He perked up immediately. Yes. You know, I'm really hoping that your collar seems like that because somebody readjusted it and not because you're a little bit chunky. Okay, so if you have your little lead, just if you have one of these sidekicks, I like to swoop that all the way to where it's by the little black part. Pull that collar down and attach your little safety clip. Oh, no, that was bad. Just like that. And then you can move everything down where it's supposed to be. Where's sweetie? See? And it just clips like that. Okay, so now we're back at it. Come here. Yes, good boy. We got a dog that's paying attention. We don't have any distractions or anything, so that's nice. So if we don't have any distractions, what could we do in this situation? There's nothing... I mean, for my dog, maybe for your dog, there's some geese over there, so we'll get to that. But this is a perfect time to make a decision to give your dog more freedom. So this would be great long lead line time. There's very little risk right now. There's no one here. This is the time, okay? Let me give you an example. Is the time for your partner, or uh, is the time for the person that you're dating to be vulnerable and really work on that part of the relationship in the middle of a rock concert with a bunch of people and a bunch of noise? Or maybe would it be on a quiet walk together where nobody else was? and you're really going to open up and share yourself with that person. That's the same as your dog. <laughs> if there's nothing, then there's you two. And that's what it is. You know, when you start adding stuff, just like with a human being, you start, you know, and now the intimacy level drops, right? Because now you've both got things that you've got to think about and pay attention to. But when you're out and the wind is blowing and the cottonwoods are snowing because it's almost July. That's Luke Bryan's song. And it's, you know, the birds and the smells and the, that's the time. Let go. Let go. Let your dog be a dog. Watch them. Watch what they do. Watch what they like. Don't keep calling them back to you every five seconds. Just be with them. Just be with them. With a loose lead. 
<laughs> so if you've got your long lead line on, you still want slack, but just be with them. You know, if you're going to add rules, add it like you would a friend that has been to this place before and your friend hasn't been and they don't know. You know, so I'm not going to let my friend walk down a dirt path that isn't the path. Oh, no, actually, the path is over this way. That's okay. I've been here before, sweetie. That's fine. You know, that's okay. Mama will get you. That, that's the vibe, right? It, it, let go, okay? If you are trying to control every behavior that your dog has, you will effing hate yourself. I've done it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know, it's not necessary. I don't care what dog trainers say. I don't care. It's not necessary. It, that is a way to get dogs to behave quickly, to get through clients, to make money. There you go. And I'm, it's unfortunate, and I'm sorry that I participated in that, and I'm sorry that you probably have experienced that. It's not, it's not, it's not right. Okay, see, now we've got some, I don't know, okay, yeah. Oh, oh, I stepped on his paw. I stepped on his paw. I'm sorry, come on, sweetie. Oh, he's back, oh, no, okay. He's back in it. He's back in it. We're going to do... Sorry, I got my tripod. <laughs> See, we just did a little inside turn. And I could have what? I could have what? Backpedaled right out of that. Boom. Remember your three tricks. You got three tricks. Three tricks up your sleeve. Okay, so look at this. We could break from our structured walk. I could give him a free... And we could go sniff over in that area and that would be fine and then when we're ready to get we're, we've done that oh we've sniffed and marked a new area but now i can come back and sniff again and know that i was here and feel more comfortable here and then we can re-engage with some hand feeding scatter feeding hand feeding we can go back into our nice loose, loose lead walk do you see it's not rocket science it's simple it is not how hard dog trainers are making it look. That's dumb. Let, you know how that's dumb? Let me just tell you something right now. Listen to this. Have you ever wondered why learned, educated people have untrained dogs? Have you ever considered why that would be? Have you ever... Hey, what is happening? Sweetie, oh my God. No? Oh, oh, we've got a problem. Turning in. Making distance. Re-engaging, good boy. You couldn't see that, but I gave him a snacky. So he's got a smell right here, and I just keep walking right back to it like an idiot. Handler mistake. Moving right along, moving right along. He's having a problem, he's having a problem. He can't get out of it. Turning in, helping him along. See, see how that easy that was? Because I know what to do. I'm not like, oh, Gee willikas, how am I going to get my dog? To, he's so big. I'm like, watch this. Look at this move. And then we just go right along. And then my dog isn't standing there having this series of unsuccessful experiences not listening to me. You know, I just, I just deal with it. I deal with it. But that doesn't mean that all I ever do is turn into my dog and use spatial pressure to get him to do what I want. If I can't the point of turning into him is not to get, it's to make him stop the behavior that he's doing and to re-engage him to back into his, the behavior he's supposed to be doing, which is better for him. It's not, it's not good for him to ignore me and just sniff stuff and get in so into a smell that he can't focus on the world around him. That's weird. That would be weird if a person did that. I mean, I guess like every once in a while, if you're by yourself or whatever, and you want to go on a sniffy, okay. Look, here's another spot. Oh my God, there's a, there's a dog coming and it's lunging and it's freaking out. I'm going to come down here with my dog. Oh, we're off the thing. Come on. So I'm up here on the path and I'm like, oh my God, there's a dog coming this way. There's a, what am I going to do? I'll tell you what I'm not. I'm not going to walk by him and do this to my dog and go, no, no. <clears throat> Please don't do that. Backpedal your dog off the path and ask your dog to find it. Get the nose down. Get your dog 
in the, in the experience without effing the experience up, sir. We're like, look, here, let's use this. This is all like just where all the bunnies and stuff come and he's, he's in there. So what am I going to do? What are we going to, are we going to stand here and, and do this? Look at that tail. That's arousal, arousal. What am I going to do? Stand here and mull it over? Well, I could do a couple things. I could see if he'll find it. Find it. Doesn't care. He certainly isn't going to eat out of my hand and look at me. So do I just stand here and keep letting this happen? No. <laughs> no. I'm going to backpedal my dog. Distance, distance from the stimuli. Distance, distance. Boop. Come on. Now he knows he's supposed to be coming with me, so it's fair for me to do that. That's fair. What would not be fair is to put my dog in that situation, not have a relationship built up with him where we had all these reps in where he knew, and then I'm just leash popping, leash popping, pulling, pulling, pulling. That's not fair. It's not fair. You haven't put the work in to do that. That's not fair. So your dog shouldn't be in that situation. My dog can be in that situation, so it's appropriate for me to stand there realize there's an issue and then use my lead to boop 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 them on out of there okay i'm gonna stop this for just a second because this part of this walk is long we're gonna get past this oh wait i'm sorry i forgot about the geese you see them okay so they're right here okay and they're moving. He sees them. And so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to walk past and try to strong arm this way? Hmm, unlikely that that's going to be successful. So what we're going to do is, oh, okay, we see the geese. We see them. We're going to backpedal. We're going to backpedal. Look, I could even shorten my lead. Come on. And... We could also just work right here. If our dog's paying attention and taking food, we could just work right here. You know, the geese are there. If they move, they move. If they don't, they don't. Your dog's engaged, is taking the food, is not spazzing, so that's cool. Now, if your dog can't handle it, now you know. We got a problem with geese, okay. We need to keep our distance at first. We gotta work on this. What did I do? How did I get my dog over it? Exactly like that. I went to the river where there's always geese and they stand there and they're not really very afraid. So we would do that every single time. And every single time we would get out and we would do nothing except for stand near the geese the first 20 minutes. And he would eat food and he would sniff and he would mark. And I would be like, don't you eat that goose poop, that's gross. And every time, and now he doesn't care about them. He doesn't care about ducks. Do you know why? Because dogs don't effing know what geese are. They don't know. They're like, oh my God, that looks plump and juicy. I, sometimes I feel that way. I wouldn't eat one because I love them and I wanna, you know, and not, and I would not, but, but, I'm not a dog. And if I was a dog, I would be thinking about how plump and juicy that bird looked. They don't know, you guys, they don't know. So you have to build it up, like build up the training, okay? So we went and we did this at a distance and then we got a little closer. And then I let him be after he was really, really, really good on lead, I let him be off lead. And it took weeks of that. And my dog's the bomb diggity. You know, like weeks, there was no, there's no cheating. There's no escaping. There's no, the, I don't, dog trainers aren't like, oh yeah, we did like two reps, dude. And it was like, oh, our dog like had it. No, we did it 750 times and we're obsessed with dogs. We're obsessed with talking about dogs. We're obsessed with being with our dogs. We are the obsessives. That's it. Dog trainers are the obsessives. They want to talk about it all the time. We want our partners to have to listen to it they don't want to it's you know you just have you know what i'm saying you just have a dog are you an obsessive that's cool if you are 
But if you're not, you can still get to have a dog. You still can have this experience. It just may not look exactly like mine. And even if you were doing the exact same things, it's not going to look exactly like mine because you're a different person and your dog's a different dog. Yeah. See, we're just going. And he's on a nice loose lead, but he's not really like I'm talking to someone. So he's like, mm, okay. And he's doing what he's doing because I'm doing something, but we're still together and we're still going by the rules, right? I keep, I keep my pace. It's clear that I know what's going on with him. He can feel my hand on the lead. Good boy. He has room to get off into the grass if he wants, but he doesn't seem to want to. I just kind of even pushed him that way a little bit. Oh my God, my shoulders are gonna look bomb after this boot camp from holding this tripod. Okay, so here we're coming up on a little scary thing. And I'm just gonna show you how you could work your dog through that if your dog was maybe scared of bridges. Okay, with using some of the techniques that we've already learned, right? Because there's not a lot. We just have to learn when to use them and how to use them. Okay, so Enzo previously was really scared of docks. So instead of dragging my dog and forcing my dog to do it, I went out onto the dock I went out onto the dock and I sat down. Come here. And I asked him to come out and get food. And he was like, it was like a little. That was rude. And his like little little legs were shaking. Good boy. And I was sitting like this, using my food scatter. And then I slowly started scooting back further and further and taking the food and I was telling him how great of a job he was doing, being really positive. I knew exactly what I was doing. I was very intentional with my movements, even though they're weird. And then he finally started to come to me. Once he did, I did this. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see me. Come back, sweetie, come on! I'm sorry. I did this and I waited and I gave him a couple pieces and then I slowly stood up and then I let him go first. Did you guys know that when you do this to your dogs and your dog's freaked out about something and you're up here like a giant orchestrating life? Do you know that that scares the shit out of some dogs? And if you, ew, ew, and if you would just get down with your dog and just be a little bit more intentional about looking at them down here and trying to do things with them down here, they wouldn't be so afraid of you. It is quite possible that dogs are afraid of owners. Do you think that children are never afraid of their parents? Do you think that that means their parents don't love them? I don't think that's what that means. I think it means that we do stuff and we don't know what we're doing and that we just accidentally do that. It doesn't mean anything about who you are as a person. It just means that, that it's, we all need to accept that we are doing things to our dogs that are contributing to their problems. It's just accept it, it's okay. I am doing things to my children that are contributing to problems that they may have in their life later. And I'm not doing it intentionally, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm doing the best that I can and I will let the rest of it go and I will do the same with my dog. It's hot. It is. Okay. So I know that's a lot, but again, it's just about making choices. So if you guys are still in a place where you're at home, that's okay. Okay. That's okay. I want you to still be doing your leash videos still doing your um, your treat scattering, still doing your backpedaling, all the things that we've learned. If you are have been working in your front yard and that's been going well, take it to the streets, baby. That doesn't mean that you get on a walk and you go straight down there and then you walk straight back because guess what's gonna happen? Your dog's gonna know that that's what's going on and it's gonna pull and it's not gonna want to engage with you. 
that means that you pick a small area and you work in that area. And if you have to backpedal into somebody's yard because a dog is coming, then get in the yard. If you have to backpedal in between two cars parked in a driveway, backpedal in between them because there's no shame in your game because you're learning how to be a master executor and a good dog handler. And sometimes that means you need to get the fuck off of the street because that other person over there does not know what they're doing and they're going to make a mistake and it's going to affect you and your dog. Okay, so we're not going out into the great downtown area. We're just picking a new place only if your dog is ready or preferably a place that you guys have been before at a very quiet time so that you can start thinking about the walk from the moment before you ever leave the house because we got to do a place sandwich so you got that going on you got a place sandwich and then you got to go and then you got to get all your stuff out all of your stuff you got to be thoughtful about it you got to make sure that your dog has all the time to smell you got to make sure that you have your plan and that you've scoped the area out and you know exactly what's going on because half of y'all the mistakes are coming from you just blindly barging into situations with your apex predator and let me remind you we also are apex predators so you just got two just a shotgun and a 38 just out roaming the streets we don't know we're just out here fuck it that's please don't do that because it you're giving yourself anxiety when you do that because successful people are prepared people and so when you're prepared the anxiety goes down because there what is there to be anxious about check check i checked the boxes there's nothing to be anxious about i just need to show up with my winning personality and execute and you know what today i might suck and tomorrow i'll be great again and then the day after that i might suck again but that's okay you know like the pressure that is being put on dog owners to get these results in this bizarre unreasonable amount of time is so strange to me like i've put five years into this dog and i still feel like i'm like not even i could do so much more you know so it's not him it's definitely not him Okay, do you wanna go swimming? That's probably to go swimming. So whenever we're done and if we're by the water, I'll let him go swimming or I will let him play. Now he can't just run over there, okay? Wait, hey, 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 stop. Come on, I can't let him get away with it, okay? Come on, he just wants to play. Oh! <laughs> Free! Oh, you guys can't see us. So I gave him free, so now you're gonna get to see what he wants to do. here with us so do you see how his focus how it's real intense now this is why I don't train with a toy because I don't want that vibe out of a dog some people really enjoy that I do not I do not enjoy that I like it sometimes but my personal opinion is to have my dog in that highest state of arousal all the time um, is anxiety inducing to an owner. You can't tell, do, do you guys have, oh, is that not true? You guys have, you guys have friends that are too much? Do you want to be around them 24 seven? Do you want a friend that's like, <laughs> hi, <laughs> Kid, do you want to go out? <laughs> that's like, <laughs> Sweetie, come here. It's 
Ew, that's gross. Super dirty. I, like most owners, want, um, you know, to bring the parts out of my friend that are really fun when we're having fun and when it's appropriate to be fun. Um, I don't want to bring this out like, you know, in the backyard when I'm trying to have a get together and my dog wants every single person there to throw the ball 57,000 times and then I just tell people it's because it's a mouth. Like, no, it's because you have a high drive dog that you are only engaging when it's aroused. <laughs> Actually. He swims awesome for a bully. Look, the duck, the geese are coming over here. They're like, well, he seems all right. Maybe they've got food. Yes, good boy. Woo! <laughs> Sometimes he just wants me to chase him. <laughs> and that's cool. Bring it if you want me to throw it. Bring it. Bring it. Ooh, did you notice that? He came right over when I bent down and got on his level. Hey, easy. Good boy. <laughs> <She's gonna laughs> They're like, mm, no. There he goes. Good boy. So we've been um, at the lake really practicing, like me helping him find it in the water. Because if he can't find it, he starts to panic. And then he just circles and he doesn't. So... We've been working on that and he now can find it a lot better on his own. He knows because now he knows don't give up and panic immediately. Like you have to keep looking and you can't keep circling. <laughs> it's taken a lot of practice, but he's getting it. Bring it. Yes. Uh! Good boy. Can you see him? So this is how we were gonna end, right? With our structured play, remember? Because it's not enough to just exercise. It's not enough to just do enrichment. It's not enough to just do a structured walk. That's not enough. There's all these components to your relationship. If you don't have this component, oh my God, look what you're missing. You're missing your dog knowing that you're fun and you play like this and that you're strong and that you can throw sticks far into the water. You know what I'm saying? Like you're missing your dog seeing you be excellent. What does that do to a relationship? What does it do to a relationship when you see your partner being excellent and doing and being excited about what you like? and learning about it and participating in it with you. It's, that's a relationship thing. It's not a fucking training thing. So make sure you remember that. It's not always just about the training. Boy, you better give me that stick. <laughs> On God, sir. Oh! <laughs> Get it. One time we were running on this trail and we were in o o Oklahoma and I fell in the mud and I swear like it was bad like it was like everything 
and Enzo like jumped around and barked at me and jumped in the mud and thought it was the funniest thing and did not feel sorry for me at all and was not concerned for my well-being and it was the funniest shit ever and we had to run two and a half miles out of the woods like that I was like I probably looked like some weird Sasquatch creature with like a muddy dog and a muddy and like that was one of my best memories with him you know like the stuff that has nothing to do with dog training or I don't know if you guys how long you've been watching me but there's this bridge called the dancing bridge and I would get to it in the middle of our run and then I'd be like disco down and disco down and it didn't matter who was there and then most of the time people would join in they'd be like what are we doing oh my god yes and it was like nothing to do with training but it had everything to do with training because my dog was there and he was off leash and people were like oh it's that chick and her dog that's so cool yeah like and he would just wait till we were done he would play in the creek while we danced and then he would run along with me because I wasn't like oh my god he's not here heal like what the fuck no like go dog play in the creek whilst we dance you know and then like he was cool with that so keep 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 in mind that you have a friend that you are trying to domesticate to society and have a meaningful relationship with. And if you keep doing this thing where you obsess over your dog not having bad behaviors and not doing what you want, you are doing the same thing as if you were doing that to a person. And how is that working out for you? You gonna obsess about your friend and everything that she does wrong and try to get her to change? Or are you going to lead by example and provide ways for her to grow and understand life and understand the things around her? Are you going to give her sources to heal her trauma or potentially even help yourself? Are you going to expose her to new experiences so that she can grow as a human being? Or are you just going to, what, tell her no, that she's wrong all the time and obsess over everything that she does wrong? When is that ever helped a single person animal nothing because that's not the way that life works you change yourself you change yourself and your dog is a is a it, your, your your energy right you're going to touch that dog with that energy what energy are you touching your dog with is it apathetic is it lazy is it anxious is it overstimulated is it stressed out because you have all this other stuff going on in your life that you are not managing properly what is it because it's going to come out in your dog. Are you a control freak? Have you controlled your dog because you control everything? What's my hang up with my dog? I ignore his feelings like I do with other people. It's a thing that I do. I want everybody to pay attention to my feelings, but I don't know if I always have time for yours. I mean, what? We're being honest. We're being honest. What is it? I ignore sometimes when I know that my dog is anxious because I need to get there. I ignore sometimes that I could work on that problem if I wanted to, but I have a lot of other things to do. And that's just a lower priority to me. Well, you know, okay, that's cool. Until the day that he has some negative behavior because of that anxiety and then cleverly, I blame it on my dog. Oh, I just don't understand. My God, you're trying everything. No, actually, Jerry, <laughs> it's because you've been ignoring a problem that you knew was there because you couldn't be bothered. That's actually what happened. It's, it's easy. See how I just, there, there I just did it? I didn't catch on fire. Nobody came and took my dog from me. I'm not, I didn't get struck by lightning. I just told the truth about myself. I told the truth about myself. I can ignore feelings to get a job done. I need to be aware of that. I need to be aware of that in my dog and in other people. Um, I also sometimes can be intense and forceful to get what I want. And I, if I stopped and took a second and just took a breath, I would have a more compassionate response and I would probably have a better way of dealing with it. But I don't always want to do that because I'm fiery and it makes me feel good to just spout off. Your dog's just like that. It feels good to do that because they haven't learned a better way. And who's going to teach them? Is your neighbor Nancy going to come over and teach your dog? 
is your dad going to come over and do it? Hmm? No. So when you see these behaviors, what have I not given my dog today? What is going on? Now, some behaviors are going to be because you're working through them and you're on that journey. But some of the stuff is because you're looking at the thing and focusing on the thing instead of being like, why are you doing that? Why are you even doing that at all? I don't focus on whether my dog is perfectly at my side. I focus on, is he enjoying himself? Does he look comfortable and confident? Is there something that I could do in this situation to make that better? And what are the things that I need to avoid so that we can keep this status quo, okay? An avoidance thing for me in this situation. Letting my dog wander too far, not paying close enough attention because I'm engaged in conversation with someone else, right? Those would be the things that could go wrong. There's a trail right there. Somebody could walk up. He could go a little bit too far to sniff the dog. The dog could pop off, and now we got a problem. All because, not because my dog's not trained, because I made an error in judgment, okay? So how much of it is that your dog, you know, how much is it the errors in judgment of you? And that's okay, because that's, I do that sometimes. Not often, but I do. It happens. The gate was open the other day and Enzo got out and nobody noticed for a long time. So he wandered over to the neighbors where he marked on a series of trees in past walks that I let him do and shouldn't have. And now guess where he wanders over to? The yard with the German short hair that he likes that he marked on all their trees. Fucking shocking. That's not a dog training error. That is an owner error. That is a management problem. There was, my fence wasn't secure. It doesn't matter how good my dog is. My fence was not secure. So my trained dog wandered out. Thank God he has a GPS tracker on. That's why he wears that collar at all times, at all times, because it will immediately tell me when he's off the property. And then I can immediately address the situation. Okay, that's a handler error. What, what would you suggest that I do to make my dog not do that? Hmm? Go back in time and not let him pee on a tree? Well, I can't do that because I'm a human and I make mistakes. And so now I have to move forward with what I did. And those are the consequences of the choices that I made. And I will have to deal with them now for the duration of the time that I have that dog because he's not going to not smell. He's not going to not want to go places that he's marked. That's like asking a person to not talk or to not socialize or to not hit that five, six, seven, eight when the disco ball drops. That's delusional. Okay, that's my fault. And I know that. So now I can do a lot of things. I can make sure my fence is secure. I can practice boundary reinforcement with, with my dog. What can I not do? Uh, blame it on my dog and call a trainer. Blink, blink, blink. Like, you don't need a trainer for that. You just need to have a conversation about why you can't seem to keep your fence closed. Oh my God, he's just he's living his life. I love you. Do you want to play? And say goodbye to everybody? Okay, well, that's all. I don't want it to be over. I just want to teach class every single day and just do this from now on because I think that you guys helped me. Um, well, you scratched my leg with it and I don't like that. You guys helped me figure out something that I didn't know needed to be figured out. And that's, oh, back up. <laughs> oh, you can't see him. Here. <laughs> Touch. Oh! <laughs> you guys helped me figure out something that I didn't know needed to be figured out. And that's that people need boot camps as an entry level because, okay, let me say it like this. I think that this is outpatient treatment. And I think that what I do with the packages is inpatient treatment. Okay. So do we ignore an entire population of people 
that just needs a little bit of help and some introductory ideas, no. I refuse to do what other dog trainers do, which is niche my modality of training. I have a niche in what I train, which is reactive dogs, lifestyle training. That's my area. That's it. I don't do other stuff. I want the biggest majority of people. I want the common people. Those are my clients. I will not put myself in a box when it comes to the way I deliver training. So if that means that I come here for 30 minutes to an hour every day and talk to the 100 people that are here and that's the way that I do it, that's the way it's going to happen. Like it's not negotiable to me. It's whatever gets us there. It's whatever gets us to letting people know everything that I just told you in these seven days. Because now you know and you can explore these ideas more on your own you can stay plugged in with my network and as people put out training and as people put things out you're going to go oh my god i know what that is yes we've been doing that you're going to be like okay i'm going to try this new thing oh my gosh they have this and you already are here so you know what the vibe is like we're playing we're playing chess here we're playing chess okay it doesn't mean that it's some high level training it means it's some high level shit in here and in here that's what it means okay it's about being the best decision makers the best at compromising for the highest good of your relationship for your dog okay so i hope that you liked it i certainly will continue to do more boot camps through the summer and thank you for helping me figure out that it's not just about hand feeding and engagement I think it's really about engagement overall. Um, and we just did that through hand feeding. And then you guys also saw some toy stuff that I did in there too. So hopefully that um, lights a fire for some of you to look more into structured play and how that could help your relationship with your dog. And maybe we'll have a boot camp on it in the future. Um, I would encourage you all, if you could, um, please take the time make a message send me a private message on here or send me an email something anything i can't just be the one saying how amazing this is you know what i'm saying like that's a little biased you know i want people to hear from you what your experience is and i want you to tell the truth i don't want this isn't about making jerry look excellent you, you don't it's not about that it's about how has knowing this information and being shown these things changed your perspective, your future, your, your, the, whatever path you're on, your relationship with your dog? Please share your story. Don't let it get lost. It, don't let it get lost. I, I can't tell it for you. You know what I'm saying? People need to see hope. They are alone. They are desperate they feel like nobody understands or wants to talk about it and if they do they offer advice that sucks because they're not dog trainers you know so tell the story even if it's just briefly so that people can have hope like seriously let me share that and let me let me share the work that you guys have been doing here so i made it all the way without crying not the whole boot camp but today um, so, I love you babies, my sweet little babies. I love you. I'm proud of you. I will continue to watch your stuff as it comes in. Um, I feel like there is one more thing I wanted to. I just want you to take what we've learned and run with it. And sometimes running with it means standing still and working on that level a little bit longer. Okay, don't skip steps. Don't do, do too much too soon. Help Becky avoid the neck tack guy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know. I don't know. And remember, dog training is not that. I just call it that because I don't know what else to say. That's your friend. Treat it like your friend. Don't somehow make different rules 
for that best friend than you would for your human friend. Don't. You, you're a human being having a relationship with something. So you need to act like a human being. That's a dog. That, the dog's going to do what the dog does. That's your job as the human being. But to try to relate to it like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think like a dog and then I'm going to be, or I'm going to, oh my God, he just pulled the biggest stick out of it. Or, I, you know, like, I don't understand. Stop yourself and ask yourself, would I do this to my friend? Would I make my friend go through this? Does my friend need to do this? Do we need to try this together? Have I taken into consideration that this could be potentially traumatizing to my friend? Is it likely that my friend will be successful in this situation with me here as a resource? Don't just go blindly into shit. You're not ready. You're not ready. And if you do it, you will have to suffer the consequences not only for yourself but for your dog, okay? So stop yourself and say, what would Jerry say about this situation? What questions would she want me to ask myself and answer before I walk into this gauntlet of whatever? Mm, is it worth it? Do you need to? If you do, let's go. I hope you've been practicing. <laughs> but if you don't, let's rethink it and let's make sure that we're ready, okay? So if I know that I need to lift 100 pounds, am I just going to walk up and try to lift 100 pounds knowing that I've not prepared I've not conditioned. I've not done it. No, I'm going to start with less weight. I'm going to do that for a period of time, knowing that if I continue, I will ultimately be successful in that end goal because I'm playing chess. I'm not playing checkers. I want the, I want the little bit of weight every day until I get to that. Oh my God. I can't believe like yesterday when I dropped down and did those pushups, it was astonishing to me how that felt. Because I don't really, you know what I mean? Like, I just do push-ups and I don't pay attention to it. it. It's like you something will come out of your dog and you in a moment after you've done something 500 times. And then suddenly this moment occurs and you're like, yeah, like, oh my God, we did it! Like, oh my God, who was it? Who was it? I think it was Danley. Danley was practicing. She's in the, I don't know what group, but it was Danley. And she was practicing what, we, what we've been doing. And a freaking dog and its owner walked by in the distance. And she tried to backpedal and her dog would not come. And I saw her literally, the gears in her brain. She was like, and turned into her dog. And I was like, ah! like I swear, I was screaming in my bathroom. I was like, bitch, yes! Like, uh, because now, guess what Dana Lee knows? Mm. boom and she did and it was like oh my god I just want to cry I want to cry because it's like watching someone you've been conditioning for a sport running and finally like perfectly catching the pass and running over the touchdown line and you're like oh, oh my god we've been practicing so much and you did it like, that's what it should feel like to you. Every time you have that small win, you should be like, <coughs> every time. Every time. That's what you guys are missing that piece. And so you treat it like it's common. You treat your successes like they're common and they don't mean anything. And then you obsess over the things that you do wrong. That shit's weird. Stop doing that. You should be like, bump, 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 Give it to me. <laughs> All right, babies. Thank you for being here. I love you so much. And for people that need more, <laughs> we're here for you, okay? We're here for you. If you have participated in the boot camp and you need a little extra help, I would recommend getting a leash package a two week package. You don't just have to work on the leash. I mean, you could probably do a couple other things, but if you are, where'd he go? 
He keeps looking back here at me. Like he's literally stopping. Oh, hello. <laughs> Instead of like continuing to walk with his dog and make distance and go, he keeps stopping and staring at us. And then he walks a little and then he stops and he stares. And then he walks a little, he's doing it again. And he stares. Now, his dog is on a flexi lead. And Enzo's looking at the dog. Oh my God, I love you! He doesn't care. And he's on like a, like a flexi lead and the dog's way out in front of him. Do you know why he's doing that? He's projecting what would happen with his dog onto my dog. He doesn't know what it's like to have a dog like this. Why would he know? Out. So he's projecting that my dog will not be in control, just like he <coughs> is. And he's standing. He's refusing to walk over that way, which is fine. Oh, where'd he go? There he is. Good boy! Yes! And I'm just going to keep going on with what I'm doing because as a handler, I always want to make sure that people around me understand that I'm working with my dog and he's paying attention to me because that's kind of his deal. You know what I'm saying? Good boy! <laughs> so contextually, right, any person that had eyes could see that my dog clearly does not care. He's looking now. He's looking back at me. He's just observing that there is a dog over there. He's also observing the geese. He's just being calm. He's got a nice, confident tail. He doesn't look weird. He's not fixated. Oh, and now he's back engaged with his owner in a fun game, right? So when people will kind of do that, I just like to make sure I do not focus on them at all. I don't care. That's not my concern that you are standing there trying to get me to notice that you want me to put my dog on a leash. There's no one here. Um, there's water completely and totally separating us, so I made sure of that. There is a hill here separating us visually. I have way too much space over on this side. That's, there's no path there, there's no nothing. So contextually, uh, also I've seen that guy about 50 times before and he does this to me every time. So there's that. Um, <laughs> contextually, if an owner or if another owner were to look at this situation, you could tell almost immediately that my dog does not care about you or your dog and that it's clearly <coughs> under control. <coughs> and then I just keep to myself and I keep to myself. And then I also let my dog know that that thing over there, even though those people are staring at us and being quite confrontational, that's confrontational. When you stop and hold your dog and stare at another owner and dog, that is absolutely the most confrontational thing you could do outside of walking directly towards them. You know, but that again is, that generation that that man is in is among the first to have dogs in the home. Okay, we need to remember that. Uh, there were not dogs in the home prior to that because there was not flea and tick prevention So you couldn't have dogs in the home because it was a parasite issue Don't now you're not supposed to swallow that Okay, he likes to chew on his sticks So you couldn't have dogs in the home prior to that So we need to remember something and this isn't to be hateful or crass or anything like that The first generation of people to have dogs in the home could not have possibly known what they were doing so I tend to not um, have a lot of conversation um, with people in that regard because I, about that topic with that group of people, because I have found that if they wanted a service that I provided, they would come and seek me out. Otherwise, I keep to myself. I do not push my opinions on them. I do not try to go over and help them under any circumstances unless they needed physical help for safety or something. Um, it's just not a, an area that I wanna get into. Uh, my parents are baby boomers and I'm very aware of how baby boomers are. Um, and instead of learning the proper stuff, they're gonna be doing what they're doing. And I'm probably gonna be like that when I'm that age too. So that's okay. 
Um, but if that happens to you, it would also be completely appropriate for me to have said to him, sir, could you please continue walking? You're making me uncomfortable because you're stopping and staring at my dog and I. And he, which he would have replied, well, your dog is off leash, in which I would have replied, yes, but out of the two, my dog is the trained one. And then I would have continued on with what I was doing. And if he wants to call the police and have the Rose Hill police come out here to tell me to put my dog on a lead, okay. You know, like, that. It's you, everybody's kind of worried about all this stuff that doesn't, when you could just handle it very simply with a couple of quick, concise words to somebody and then move on in confidence with what you were doing. Because I can tell you right now, not a person on the face of this planet is ever going to tell me what to do. Ever. I would never let my dog off lead where I could be putting someone in danger. I would never let my dog off lead if I thought he would run to another dog, to another thing, to another nothing ever. There would never be a time that I would do that. I wouldn't do that. So, and people don't know that. You know, they project, like I said, their experiences. <laughs> they project their experiences and their dog ownership onto you. And you just have to remember not to be hateful back to them because it just adds you know, there's a lot of balls of energy going on and it just adds kind of a negativity and energy that you don't want. Um, and so it's totally okay to advocate, say your piece, and then just move on with what you're doing. All right. I'm gonna go give him some Apoquel now cause he rolled in that. <laughs> Don't forget, get all your videos in by noon Central Standard Time tomorrow. I just wanted to show you guys one more little bit of bonus content for all the parents out there or people that like to just frequent playgrounds and play on the equipment. That's cool too. It's a great place to like build, to confidence build. Hold on, Milo. So I'm going to ask Enzo to come up here. Enzo actually really likes to slide down slides. Come on. Good boy. Oh, he doesn't want to do it. Let's see if we can get him to. Oh, I didn't turn it. <laughs> Come here, buddy. So I'm just kind of food luring him. There's puzzles? Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Come on, Enzo. And we can just go all through here Look, and I can just do little things like don't eat the mulch because remember last time how wait that's a bad idea because last time th that cost four thousand dollars so don't eat the mulch okay Mom. wait no we're not gonna do that that was a bad idea wait I got it ha ah! okay come on Look, tic-tac-toe come on Enzo puggle. that was a terrible idea I forgot that that's what they pulled out of his stomach Sweetheart, I think we've all seen the puzzles. <laughs> okay, that just gives you a little idea. Like, he'll go down slides and stuff. Um, uh, he'll cross this occasionally. But just different fun things that you can do. Yeah, go ahead. Just different stuff that you can do um, to get them. I mean, you can do this on a long lead line. It gets a little tricky just because the equipment's everywhere. But... You can still do stuff. Come on. Good boy. Like, all of this stuff's, like, important to build your relationship, you guys. Just, like, kind of this. Like, he's basically just going around the world like a toddler, saying, Mom, 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 all the time. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? They're literally just like toddlers. Literally just like toddlers <laughs> okay don't forget to get your videos in be creative when you're training be creative don't let your dog eat tire mulch god it's so expensive good boy oh he didn't like that so he basically just wanders around while we play also 
Okay, sorry about the <laughs> Sorry, let's see. Here's some other surfaces. All this stuff's cool. Oh, good boy. What else were we doing? Oh, uh, we were doing that bench earlier because it's like weird in the middle and it was hard for him to step on. Um, we did that rock a second ago. And then mostly he'll just go down here into this creek and sniff around. Which seems fun to me, I guess. If you're a dog, I mean to do a combination of... It would be like... Um, if you thought about going on like the ultimate date with a person, I don't know why I'm doing that. Sorry. It'd be like, if you thought about going like on the, I guess I should go back to my child, the ultimate date with a person, like Tony does these like ridiculous, like super cool dates that he just accidentally does. Don't think he puts a lot of planning into it. Um, but they're like, they have all these components to them, you know? And so if you think about how would you best want to spend your time with your friend, there's no don't drink that water that's disgusting <sighs> and this is why you, you get your pets vaccinated for leptospirosis because probably raccoons peed in that water anyway how would you want to spend your time with your best friend <laughs> um you know be creative like i said and think about adding all of the components and not just being like so rigid just having to be structured or having to be this or having to be that most the, oh, like 90 percent of the reason nice. why people are struggling with their dogs is just you because their relationships it. suck and the people can't figure out why you know it's like please don't fall off while i'm talking please don't fall off at all let's just that's what i meant but then also so remember to think about that how would you want to hang out with your friend are you being too rigid are you being too flexible are you come down a little bit are you maybe oh. not adding enough of the components? Oh and so it's out of balance. Oh, remember I talked about how, remember how I talked about the friend that's always all up in your shit, what? hugging you all the time, like, okay. Oh. Or that friend that like, you are only friends. Ooh, <laughs> that was a good save. You guys are only friends because you guys go to the club together. <laughs> deep, super deep friendship you got there. You know, it's like, think about it like that. It's more about a friendship than it is your dog behaving the way that the status quo is. Like, oh, oh the status quo. It's my Ramon shirt. All right, babies. Farewell. Trustful. I know it's over, but I just thought of something I should have said. Look, we're out in that... We've been out here before. I brought you guys out here. I don't know where he went. I can hear him. He's on the other... Oh, he's in there. He's, like, literally in there. And he's just having a time. You know, I'm obviously not going to do anything remotely like that. Not interested. But he's, like, living his best life right now. Okay, so what did that remind me of? Oh, my God, you guys... Are you the parent who doesn't let their kid do any extracurricular activities? This is going to be probably triggering for some people, you guys. Did you have parents that always had a reason why you couldn't play soccer? They didn't have money. They didn't do that. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't. There was always a reason why you couldn't play a sport or be on a group or take piano lessons or whatever. And maybe it was just poverty. Maybe it was just income. But still, it still hurt you. You still, what could you have been if you could have played basketball that one year? You know, what, how would that have changed your life? Or how would being able to actually take that pottery class when you wanted to when you were 10, how would that change the course of your life? So when I saw him doing that, I thought, what if I like what if he never got to stick his head inside of a tree and sniff the base of it because it had a hole in it and animals went in there? Like, what would he... He was legit depressed all day until we came out here. He was just 
it's hot and we're in the house and it's like, and I got it. I just, there's just a lot going on. It's the first and I start new classes and stuff. And so I have a lot to do. And I thought he's just been sitting inside all day, which is the life of so many of our animals, you know? And so I had, um, about an hour and I thought, I'm just going to come out here and I'm going to do whatever it was that I was going to do in my office on my phone. And we're going to walk up and down this tree line and he's just going to sniff and do whatever it is that he wants to do because maybe this is violin practice for him. Maybe this is debate club or some like, or drama or that play he really wants to be in. You know, maybe this is finally the time that you take that weird jewelry class that you, do you see what I'm saying? These are, that's why they call it enrichment. It's enriching their lives. It's enriching his natural state of being and what he is and who he is. And I'm just standing here with him. I'm not bossing him around or telling him not to smash his face further into that place. I hope he jumps up there and tries to, well, no, I don't want him to climb it. There's thorns on that. But do you see what I'm saying? Look how happy he is. Now, when would this be not a good idea? If I was skipping steps and I hadn't built this relationship with my dog for him to know that I'm just standing here with him. He can do as he pleases, but we're still together. Like you haven't built that relationship with your dog yet, but you can, but you can't skip steps. You can't just bring your dog out here and be like, well, we'll see what happens. And then he runs off over there and attacks some other dog. That is handler error. That is handler error. That is not your dog. So I do things that I know he really likes that are exciting to him, but in a kind of controlled way so that he doesn't get overly aroused, so that he doesn't spaz out. I've got my leash. I've got my stuff. I am prepared. You know, I parked the car under shade. I brought water. We did some engagement. And then I talked to Coco for like 20 minutes and he just sat there before we ever left. It's a process. I'm going to enrich his life as a, as my friend, as a member of my family. It's not about get the dog, take him out of the car, walk him, put him back in. Then we're going to get, I mean, how would you feel? How would you, how, okay, well, let me put it this way. At the horse barn, uh, the instructor, my daughter's instructor told me that um, you're the only mom out of all of my students that actually comes and helps their daughter. I'm the only mom out of all the students that comes and helps my daughter get her horse, tacks the horse up, does all the things. And I have other kids too. I have a dog sometimes too. You know, I, I have a job I need to be doing and not at the horse barn, you know. But I do that because it's important to my daughter. And if it's important to my daughter, I will learn everything there is to know about horses. Best belief. You know, even if it's really not necessarily that particularly interesting to me, English writing isn't that interesting to me, but it, you know, whatever, but it is to her. And so I'm going to go and I'm going to learn all the things so that when she talks about it, it's interesting to me because I know, and I'm going to sit there and watch her do the things because it's important to her because the rest of the time she has a mom who is on social media and doing this and working and doing this and talking to clients. Blah, 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 blah. And if I don't stop and be here with her in this moment, she will, we won't have that together. And it'll just be you walking your dog on a leash like this. Cause you're just getting stuff done. You just get out. Well, we got to get this done instead of just like for the next hour, this is what we're going to do. And however it goes is how it goes, but I will be intentional and I'll be here for you. And this is about enriching your life, giving you those extracurricular activities. That's why I'm like this, you guys. Because my parents enriched my life from the time I was three years old. I was in ballet immediately. I was in classical piano lessons immediately. I was a classical singer. I took lessons. It was fucking serious. You know, I was in cheerleading. I had a job. I was traveling the country teaching dance. I was doing all of these things and my parents facilitated that. 
Now, I got my own gripes about my mom, you know, don't we all? But my parents facilitated an environment in which I, Jerry, could thrive and learn and have exposure to a massive amount of things. They didn't just put me in a box and tell me to behave and follow the rules of the household. I mean, they tried. You know what I'm saying? But like, think, shift your perspective. Shift your thinking to how you would treat anything that you steward over and care about. No, Not lawn ornament, not house ornament. Living being with its own hopes and I don't know if hope is the right word, but its own wants and its own things that drive it and that make it excited. And if you don't provide that, you're that parent that says, that says no every time their kid wants to do an extracurricular activity. Well, but we don't have a car. Well, but we don't have a car. I don't, we don't have enough money. And we know, and I can't because I'm busy and I can't. And all that your child hears is I cannot provide that for you. When it seems like the other parents aren't having a problem. So what the fuck is your problem? That's what the kid hears. They don't know. They don't understand that there could potentially be all these complications of why you can't do that for them. They don't know that, you know? So we have to try our best to mitigate that stuff. And if it is about money, then what can we find for free? What resources can we find that are available? Is it really that we need to pay money or do we just need to dedicate more of our personal time to the endeavor? That's probably, that's probably what it is. Okay. See, and he's still in there. Like he's just having a, a time at the Grand Ole Opry, you know? And he's also trying to figure out how to get up there into that tree, which I think is fascinating. He, you can see him trying to problem solve and figure it out. He wouldn't be doing that at home. He would just be sitting there on the couch. And he can't get in any further. And so he's having to figure out like, okay, how do I... And this is all confidence building. This is all a dog who I am having no control over what he's doing. He's having to problem solve on his own and see like, do I really want this thing this bad? Do I, am I going to figure out how to do this? Those are like skills that you learn through experience of doing, not theories that your owner has in their head and fantasies about how they want you to behave. You have to get out there and actually really do this stuff with your dog, but don't skip steps. Don't get skip steps. Okay. I'm going to leave you alone now. I don't want to. Know that. I don't want to. But what you can do is I've been thinking about if you have taken the boot camp ever before and you want to take it again, I was thinking about doing um, a 20, like, well, it would be, you would get the early bird price on it. So I was thinking about doing um, $22 off for you guys. And you can just, uh, I'll have to talk to Chelsea about making a code for that if you've done the boot camp previously. Um, you can always do it again because I don't script anything. And everything I'm saying is just rattling around in there, waiting to come out. And generally, it's all original, fresh material. And so that's cool. You know, I don't know what fun analogies I might come up with next time, but... I can tell you this about Tulsa Pack. Every time I do something, we obsessively critique it and figure out how to do it better the next time. So I would encourage you to keep being involved and keep coming back. Take breaks in between. Practice. Let yourself have time. Remember, it takes time. I told someone today, adjust your expectations. Six months to a year is an appropriate expectation for recovery on a reactive dog be that has nothing to do with your dog that's <laughs> I mean it does but that's an owner showing up like think about that for a second like, like it's it's recovering and trying to live and assimilate and have a balanced life and for another person to help you get get to that and achieve that or another being to help you get you have to have some particular type of relationship for that you know, you have to really be able to connect and really help them and really be there and be consistent. And that, that loyalty and trust and that bond is built through time. And so it would be ridiculous to think that you could just do something for a couple of weeks and then it's just going to magically make this dog so beholden to you. That's delusional. 
Think of your closest friends. How long did it take you? Yes, maybe you had a connection immediately. Yes, maybe you knew you were going to be friends for life. But you know what I'm saying? It took time for you to get to know that person, for that person to tell that lie for you to their parents, you know, for that person to, to go to bat for you when somebody would say something bad about you. It takes time. Dogs are not dumb. They have hearts and souls and they're intelligent and they like who they like and they don't who they don't sometimes. You know, there's something in there and in there. Don't disrespect what they are because of some fantasy that's in your head because of something that you saw some other dog owner doing. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, just build your relationship with them. Just see what happens. See what happens. You know, do the stuff that I've taught you. Work on it. Give yourself grace. You know, think about your Becky. Think about your friend Becky. You babies are going to be fine. I love you. <laughs>